Good morning. Good morning. It's March 6th. It is the beginning of day 10 of the state versus Hannah Gutierrez. It seems that today we are going to get Thel Reed, Hannah's stepfather, who in her police interview, she described as the industry. But fine members of the chat, we will also be getting to closing arguments, which is why court is uh, almost an hour late today. They are still arguing over jury instructions, which other than picking a jury, jury instructions are one of the most important parts of a trial. We're going to talk about what uh, Dana Griffin, the reporter for NBC who's inside the courtroom, is saying about that. We're going to go over a little bit of what the instructions can entail, what needs to be proven for involuntary manslaughter, and we're going to wait for court to resume. Normally, these things are done outside the presence of the jury, but generally the court knows how long they need and they will give the jury that time. Remember, this judge made a court order that the only thing that will be streamed is when the jury is present in court. So everything that's taking place outside of the jury's presence is not streamed. So we just have to wait. I would really love to see them arguing jury instructions, but we're not going to get to. Um, and to appease the chat, yes, 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 yes. George is here today. He does he want to say hi? No, he wants to be in my lap. But um, George, can you no? We're not no. We're not saying hello. He just wants to cuddle. <laughs> so that's what we're doing this morning. But we have a rare George sighting. And court's gonna take a minute. So what we're going to do is look at the um instructions for involuntary manslaughter. If we have time, maybe we'll go to the ones for the tampering with evidence. We will um we will be looking at the reporting coming out of court and then i will be answering your questions there's no additional documents filed in court so all we have is live reporting which is why it's important to have somebody in the courtroom so i'm glad someone is is reporting i don't want to be the person sitting in the courtroom i want to sit here with the law nerds with george on my lap um so we're going to do that this morning and we're going to chat and we're going to all just wait for court to start together i suppose um with that I have some hot water this morning for the throat with lemon and honey. You guys let me know what you have. So we're ready to bring the jury. We're ready. Bring the jury. This one says bring the Emily because I knew I knew y'all were ready. I knew y'all were ready. Let's, George, 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 let's roll the intro and uh, I'll remind ourselves why streaming with cats is always an adventure. Hey there, I'm Emily D. Baker, the internet's go-to legal analyst breaking down the legal side of the pop culture and entertainment stories we can't stop talking about. I'm a big fan of the cursey words. I've been a licensed attorney for over 17 years, but this is not legal advice. This is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not <laughs> Let's get into it. All right, y'all, let's, I'm going to be holding on to your questions and I'm going to go through a, the reporting in court first and then into the statute and some of the notes about the jury instructions because, well, uh, we've got, we've got time. Court hasn't started yet and, uh, there's nothing much else for us to do. I could, excuse me. I could have waited. I thought today, like yesterday, I was like, start at 10 30. There's no way they're done with jury instructions. That was my gut. My gut was start at 1030. And then I was like, I told the lawners we're starting at 10. We'll split the difference. And uh, away we go. Because, because lawners of the chat, it's a closing argument day. And I'm excited. Aren't you excited? Are we excited? I'm excited. I'm ready to see if these attorneys can make things seem clear finally. Because uh, so far, they haven't done a great job. So uh, Dana Griffin from NBC, thread for day 11 of the Rust Manslaughter Trial of armor Hannah Gutierrez Reed. Who in all the court filings is just going by Gutierrez. I wonder if now, if Thel's gonna testify, he's in court, if Thel's gonna testify, whether or not she'll regret not having the read on her name as she's going through prosecution, maybe not. The defense will finish calling witnesses today. We knew this, closing arguments are expected to start as early as this morning, not if they don't get done with jury instructions. Uh, today is technically day 10, but there was one day of jury instruction, so, She's including the one day of jury instruction for day 11. I am considering this day 10 because we didn't see the day of jury instructions. So for my coverage, this is the 10th day I've been covering it. So that's where I'm at. But yes, technically there was one day of jury instructions before 
um, before testimony started. Judges going over instructions on intent. State will not include general intent instruction. State has concern over defense closing argument language they plan to use about the improper intubation of Helena Hutchins. Oh, oh dear. Well, that's going to be a fight. State wants to prevent jury from hearing that improper intubation could have been a cause of her death. These are all very much civil concerns because if somebody is shot and something intervenes, they were still shot. Um, that's more of a civil argument. I'm not surprised it's coming up from this defense attorney who I wonder if he works more in civil than he does in criminal. The judge is looking over transcripts of the doctor's testimony, transcript notes. Elena Hutchin had been intubated incorrectly, sending oxygen into the stomach. Doctor said she could not opine that uh, Helena Hutchins would have survived if she had been intubated correctly. Let's see. Court now replaying doctor's test. Um, let's see. Judging Judge looking over the transcripts of the doctor's testimony. Helena Hutchins had been intubated incorrectly, sending oxygen to the stomach. Doctor said she could not opine that Helena Hutchins would have survived if she had not been intubated incorrectly. Judge, you can say she was intubated but the doctor did not make the conclusion that she would have survived. Judge wants defense to include full scope of the doctor's testimony. Court now replaying the doctor's testimony. This is something you never get in a trial. You get the art, the lawyers arguing over their recollection, and sometimes the court reporter being asked to go and reread the transcript from that day, but you never get to replay the doc. You don't get to, to watch the replay, except in the very rare trial where this is streamed. Court now replaying doctor's testimony. Bowles and the judge disagree on what the doctor said. Well, the judge is going to win that fight. The judge is going to absolutely win that fight. Like 100%. Bowles and the judge disagree on what the doctor said. Judge says Bowles is only taking a portion of the doctor's testimony and leaving out the rest. Court replaying doctor's testimony for the second time. Going over jury instructions and verdict form, prosecution wants to mention that jurors have to be unan unanimous on involuntary manslaughter, but not unanimous on the alternative theories. Defense objects, they have to be unanimous on a theory. I don't think they have to be unanimous on a theory. That's, um, that's going to be a matter of case law though. Judge review and case law, yep. Judge, quote, I always have to get the facts. Jury ruling, jury instructions as they stand are sufficiently correct. We do not need um, anonymity on a theory. I think she means unanimity. And you generally don't in criminal law. If one person is like, I think it's involuntary manslaughter because she was negligent in her handling of the firearm. And somebody else says, I think she's guilty of involuntary manslaughter because she was reckless in doing her job. It doesn't matter. Like same, 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 same. So you don't need to be unanimous on a theory. And we're going to talk about that. Um, Manslaughter is one of the parts of involuntary manslaughter. And on Twitter, I don't really give people a hard time about not including the entire title of the charge because involuntary manslaughter is a lot to type out. So manslaughter is a different degree. Involuntary manslaughter has no intent. But for these purposes, we're only talking about involuntary manslaughter in this case. So as of three minutes ago, it looks like the uh, attorneys are still doing are still doing jury instructions, which they should have known they would be arguing over today and should have had the jury come back an hour later. Um, so the court is taking a break before they bring the jury in as of two minutes ago. Of course they are. Of course they are. <laughs> um, Georgia says, Emily has a great voice for radio, podcast, YouTube. I really... I think deep down in my soul, I always wanted to be a radio host. Um, since I started watching the Kevin and Bean show as a very watching, listening to Kevin and Bean on the radio as a junior high school student in Southern California, I have loved radio. I love radio. Broad. I didn't realize broadcasting was my love or that that was a job I could just like do. Uh, so I went to law school instead and now we're here. Yay us. All right. Let's go to involuntary manslaughter. Let's go through what involuntary manslaughter is and isn't while we wait for court to resume. I hope that that will be helpful. Let's just give a quick summary of where we're at, shall we? Hold on. Hold on. We, we need lip. 
We need Lippy for a summary. We're going to do Lippy. We're going to do a summary. <laughs> Cast Iron Mama said, Emily, you are my Delilah. That's probably the nicest thing anybody's ever said to me. And I'm here for it. All right. I remember Pirate Radio too. Let's do a quick summary. We are in the final day of testimony for the state versus Hannah Gutierrez. The defense has one more witness. I think it is going to be her stepfather, Thel Reed, though they have not announced that yet. And they told the jury they would get to closing arguments in the morning session of court. However, court is starting like an hour late because they're still arguing over jury instructions per the reporting coming out of court. The defense witnesses yesterday started out strong. If there's jurors that feel very empathetic towards Hannah Gutierrez and the fact that she was in an undeniably difficult work environment, they have room to argue that she was not negligent in doing her job because the production was so bad and because her supervisors were so bad that there was really nothing she could do about the situation she was in. Those OSHA witnesses give room for jurors who believe that. However, if the state in closing reminds the jury that Hannah in all of her interviews took absolute responsibility for her task and absolute responsibility for gun safety on set, it's going to negate the OSHA testimony, perhaps. And then the defense weapons expert who has a uh, Boy Scout medal from 1957 and sometimes pulls the cannon in the 1812 overture was not a great witness for the defense, didn't move the needle at all, and I think was more embarrassing and difficult for the defense than of benefit. So their, their last witness today needs to be strong. And with that, we are going to go to what the jury instructions are, what the elements of this crime are. But first, law nerds, we need to thank our sponsor because our stream does in fact have a sponsor. Why? Because I don't always monetize trials because they say all the naughty words. And in this one, they wave guts around. So thank you to our stream sponsor. Thank you to today's stream sponsor, Forio. Forio from Sweden makes the Lunafor facial cleansing brush that I absolutely love. Not only can I keep it in my shower, but it's easy to take traveling and it doesn't have those nylon bristles that are really hard to get clean and can hold on to gunk and grime. It is clinically proven to remove 99% of dirt, oil, and makeup residue. 100% of users report more refreshed and radiant-looking skin. 81% of users reported a reduced appearance of blemishes. One of the reasons I like it so much is not only can I leave it in the shower, but it holds a charge for quite a long time, but the massaging settings on the back has a bunch of different types of custom massage that I use to drain fluid from my face so I don't look as puffy, but also to maintain my skin around my neck and chest. And if you're using that massage setting, you have the option of lymphatic drainage, deep tissue, trigger point massage, shiatsu, and reflexology. And all of those you can control really easy in the app. The Luna 4 by Forio rarely goes on discount, but right now, because you are watching this live stream, you can take advantage of our great offer. Head to the link in the description to get 30% off. And if you use code LAWNERD at checkout, you get an additional 10% off. Use the link down below to get 30% off. Use code LAWNERD at check-in to get an additional 10% off for a total of 40% off the Luna 4. All right, let's get back to today's stream. You guys... A, I did not plan to be wearing the same thing I wore when I recorded the ad, and I feel like I planned really well. Um, so 40% off Forio. Yes, the link is working. If you need to copy and paste it into a different browser, do that for sure. The facial massages I love. I uh, use it all down neck and chest. So I only sponsor or only take sponsors of things that I actually use. The Forio is something I actually use and people in my life actually use. We have a million, not hyperbole, sort of hyperbole, gifted memberships. And I need to say thank you, Law Nerds, for expanding the Law Nerd love in this community. Millie, thank you. B2 is like the membership angel of the chat. B2 is like, forget soup. Who needs soup? What you guys need are memberships to EDB's YouTube channel. For everyone who was gifted memberships from B2, dropping 40 memberships in the chat, um, you guys can go watch a back catalog 
of members only videos. So if you're watching a back catalog of members only videos, the chat can um can maybe suggest some to watch. I would say the Ringo video is one not to miss. And anytime I read a book, Muppets and Manilow, thank you for the gift of memberships. Jennifer T, thank you. LMD, Jessica Henriksen, uh, Sailor Fisher, Jennifer S, Sarah Moore, Kelco35, Marjorie Brody, Frosted Dreams. You guys are incredibly generous. Lori A, thank you. Jennifer, thank you. Karina, thank you. Chuckle Squad, thank you. Red Hot Amy Kate, thank you. You guys, absolutely incredible drop in, uh, drop in memberships. V McWilliams says Reed was in courtroom yesterday per court TV. I heard he was in the hallway yesterday. He's not allowed to be in court. Um, and I heard he was in court today. So I am hearing that that Fell Reed is rolling around this courthouse. So they're not gonna call Hannah as their last witness. Hannah's testimony would take at least a time, a, a day or more. So they're not going to call her as a witness. Roxy, question, can last minute Hannah decide she wants to take the stand? If they've already done the soliloquy with her that she's not testifying, then it would be very difficult to unwind that decision. If they have not done that colloquy yet, then uh, it's possible. There's not time. I think the defense is pretty set in its decision. And... Um, I, I have not gone back to find the court filing, but I've heard, uh, Runkle and others talk about the deal she was offered, including disclosing where the bullets came from. And that was part of the deal she didn't want to take. I don't think she wants to be on the stand. There's also some uncomfortable things she would be confronted with. She would also be asked directly about any narcotic use on set. Um, and more text messages may come in if she, if she testifies, I don't think she wants to do that. I really, really think uh, they're pretty set with her staying off the stand. And I don't even think that's a question at this point. Um, so yes, she was offered a deal. I need to go find that filing. Um, magnificently magic wand. I'm late. Did I start already? Well, you started cause you're here. Did court start? No, no, they didn't. No, they did not at all. So um, let's see. Runkle said, I think the prosecution has boxed her out. Um, yeah, I think so too. I think the prosecution is absolutely boxed her out and I don't think she can testify because of what will come up if she does. Um, let's see. This is what I was trying to pull up from Ryan. What benefit will her dad, uh, be to testifying last? Um, emotional. He can also make, um, he can also kind of humanize her a little bit more if he is the industry, he can talk about her training and he can say, I've, I've been back in my day, I've been an armorer on all of these movie sets. And this production was the worst production I've ever seen, blah, 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 blah. So I think we will see him throwing production, um, deeply, deeply under a train and that would be helpful. But, um, God, that witness yesterday was bad. They also need a palate cleanser from that witness. So there's that. We're going to go to the um we're gonna go to the involuntary manslaughter instructions and then we're going to uh answer some more questions. Danielle, thank you for the gift of memberships. Angel, thank you for the gift of memberships. Uh Hither Creator78, thank you for the gift of memberships. Carrie, thank you for the gift of memberships. Uh, the mods and Nightbot put a little link in how to turn that on uh, depending on the type of account you have. Gone with Gail said, YouTube unsubscribe me, check you are still subscribed. Yeah, members tell me that all the time that they've gotten unsubscribed even though they're members. And then we will get back to answering your super chats and answering your questions. Um, I'm not gonna be able to read this yet. Cut Luthun, maybe? Uh, wait, that was a good question. I pulled it up. There it is. Can victims contest plea deals given by the state? Sometimes. Um, mm, yes, they can contest them. Does it change the outcome? Often not. Um, there are times that the plea deal is appropriate and the victims are unhappy with it, which is understandable, but the court will still go through with it and allow the victims uh, to be heard. Miguelina, do we have a pin post that court has not resumed yet? Let's 
Um, let's do that. I know with the poll, sometimes it's hard to see, and I'm going to leave the poll up. But let's let's do a pin post because I see a lot of y'all asking because um, it is so late today. Like, has court started yet? Uh, no. No, it sure hasn't. We're going to talk about involuntary manslaughter for a minute. We're going to go right to the state statute for that. And then we're going to get to some of the ins and outs of the jury instructions of this because, well, uh, we've got time. Like, here we are. Uh, where is our straight up code, not our code notes? I need our code, not our code notes. Let's get to our code first. Stick to the code. I thought I had it pulled up. I just had the annotations pulled up. I don't need the annotations yet. I need the code. Uh, manslaughter. Whomever commits voluntary manslaughter is guilty of a third degree felony resulting in the death of a human being. B, involuntary manslaughter consists of manslaughter committed in the commission of an unlawful act, not amounting to a felony, so a misdemeanor, and that the negligent use of a firearm that Dave Halls pled to is the predicate misdemeanor here, or in the commission of a lawful act which might produce death in an unlawful manner or without due caution and circumscription. Was Hannah doing her job in a in an unlawful manner or without due caution or circumscription. And I think the without due caution is a very strong argument. Yes, of course, they can argue that she negligently handled a firearm. That's the unlawful act. I personally, and Chad, I would love to know your thoughts. Please, you don't have to agree with me. I personally think the argument that she did her job without due caution, with criminal negligence, with recklessness, was the stronger and is the stronger argument than the negligent use of a firearm. But the negligent use of a firearm, not loading the firearm, not checking what you're putting in it, could be the negligent use of a firearm. The jury does not have to be unanimous on this. But I think saying, look, her job is to check it and load the gun. She's legally allowed to load the gun. She's the armor on set. But she did her job so badly that this involuntary manslaughter happened. So let's go to the annotations now. That's the code. That's what the code says. Whomever commits an involuntary manslaughter is guilty of a fourth degree felony, right? Voluntary manslaughter, third degree felony resulting in death, involuntary man, fourth degree felony, which carries with it 18 months. So um, question, how can she do her job unlawfully if there are no industry standards? It's a great question. It wouldn't be doing her job unlawfully. It would be doing an act in an unlawful manner. So it would be that negligent handling of a firearm. So job in a negligent fashion. Annotations. Let's go to the jury instruction annotations. I've covered these in a podcast. Um, these make very clear that that's voluntary manslaughter, that we don't need voluntary manslaughter, that involuntary manslaughter excludes all cases of intentional killing. So if anyone ever was like, what if this was sabotage? What if somebody meant it? then they've charged absolutely the wrong code and she can't be charged with this. This has to be a unintentional killing. Involuntary manslaughter includes only unintentional killings by acts unlawful, but not felonious. So like a death caused in the course of like an armed robbery of a, of a convenience store or whatever, that would be doing a felony act and then you kill someone that is not an involuntary manslaughter that bumps up into the other homicide statutes because you're doing, you're committing a felony that bumps into like felony murder rule, which we're not going to do today. <laughs> we don't have time. If you are uh, like driving DUI and your DUI would be a felony given the uh, either the BAC or the statutes or priors, then you can also have that commission of a felony. Uh, there's other ways to get there with DUI. We're not going to go into all the nuance of that either. But if you're doing, if you're committing a felony and somebody is killed in the course of it, that bumps you into other sections of the felony murder statute, not the involuntary manslaughter. Involuntary manslaughter is confined to cases where the killing was unintentional. No one is arguing this is an intentional killing. Everyone has said that they believe that this is an accident. There we are. Um, 
distinction between lawful and unlawful acts. And remember, the state has to summarize all of this really, really well in their closing argument so the jury understands. For those of you asking what are all the red things, those are hyperlinks to case law because all of this comes from statutes and case law. In distinguishing between unlawful and lawful acts, the statute applies the language defined by the courts to mean criminal negligence only to the lawful act portion of the statute, meaning if Hannah Gutierrez Reed is negligently handling a firearm misdemeanor. You don't have to prove criminal negligence. You only have to prove the criminal negligence as to she was loading a gun on set as the armor because that's the lawful act. Two different theories. Um, G Mommy in the chat asked, so Hall's pleas for a misdemeanor, but they're charging her with felonies. Yes. Memory fails from when we went over his plea. Yeah, he pled to a misdemeanor negligent handling of a firearm. Um, where a uh, question of Hannah is found guilty. Can Helena's husband or family give a witness impact statement at her sentencing? Yes, they could. Helena's family could. Helena's friends could. Um, other other members from the set of the movie, like Ross Adiago or um, the EMT, they could also testify. Yes, they could. They could absolutely. Criminal negligence is not an ele uh, element of involuntary manslaughter by unlawful act. That would be negligent handling of a firearm. Criminal negligence is required for involuntary manslaughter by a lawful act, doing her job, loading the gun, but not checking it. A killing by lawful act to be involuntary manslaughter depends on whether the lawful act was done in an unlawful manner without due caution or circumscription. The phrase without due caution and circumscription has been held to involve the concept of criminal negligence. So when you hear me say that she is being negligent or reckless, it's because the law is written without due caution and circumscription. And a whole bunch of people went, what the fuck does that even mean? And the state courts went, well, without due caution and circumscription means criminal negligence, which means without due caution and circumscription. What does that mean? Criminal negligence. Yeah, yeah. But what does that mean? Conduct which is reckless, wanton, or willful. Was Hannah Gutierrez in doing her job reckless, wanton, or willful? I think reckless is the easiest thing to explain, but this is how law works. We get this concept of without due caution and circumscription. From that, we get to criminal negligence. From that, we get to, well, that really means you're being fucking reckless. Um, so that's why I keep saying recklessness. Still no court, by the way. Showing of criminal negligence is required for a conviction of involuntary manslaughter based on whether based on an unlawful act or lawful act. Um, let's see. That's interesting because that conflicts. Some of the case law from up above says that criminal negligence is not an element of involuntary manslaughter by unlawful act. And some of it says it is. So they're going to argue over that and the court's going to decide. And we will hear it when we hear all the jury instructions together. Reckless disregard of others. Merely driving on the wrong side of the road could be an inadvertence, but not sufficient to convict. A lot of involuntary manslaughter case law comes from driving-related offenses. That is where this happens the most. Negligent use of a weapon. This is the predicate act she's charged with. I keep calling it a predicate act like it's a financial crime, like it's a RICO charge. Yes, yes. Negligent use of a weapon. A conviction of involuntary manslaughter by negligent use of a weapon requires negligence, which is ordinary. Just regular negligence, just plain old, you shouldn't be doing that shit. However, the state, where is it? Um, let's see. Where's the state talking about ordinary negligence? Ah, this was general intent. I wanted to make sure I was correct. I'm going to update this. The sky growling at me. Stop it. We're going to update and see if we have any updates from court. Nope. 22 minutes ago, court taking a break before the jury is brought in. Well, chat, at least it feels like jury duty for you. You get to sit around and wait. <laughs> at least we get to chat about the case together. The jurors aren't allowed to chat about the case. They have to just sit there and wait. And uh, we get to sit in more comfortable chairs. Excuse me, that was loud. Use of a firearm enhancement for negligent use. I don't even think they're going to get into that. 
Defense to involuntary manslaughter. Defendant charged with involuntary homicide can raise a theory of self-defense. Not the case here. Negligent self-defense as involuntary manslaughter. Not the case here. Accidental shooting in the process of imperfect self-defense. Not the case here. Um, resisting search. Uh, assault. When the instruction's improper. No foundation for involuntary theory. That's not the case here. Homicide by vehicle, not the case. Careless driving, not Evidence insufficient to convict. Evidence that a defendant was driving an unfamiliar car over relatively unfamiliar roads that 800 feet north of where the accident occurred, defendant drove over a hill with a 2% grade with a curve at the bottom of it and did not slow down. That defendant had consumed two beers before the accident and that unknown to the defendant, the tire that blew out was defective even when considered cumulatively, failed to disclose the state of mind required to be shown for conviction under the section. So somebody had had two beers, got in a car that they didn't know with a tire that was defective, went down a hill, the tire blew out, they got in an accident and killed someone. They're talking about whether or not that was enough to convict them. And in this case, it seems that they won't. They take a break within a break. I think they are taking a break within a break. Ordinary negligence sounds like regular WTF. Ordinary negligence is pretty, like, not so bad. So as a DUI, when someone is killed the same legally, Sally Newman, you are asking what seems to be a simple question that is not a simple question. It depends on the history of the driver, the pattern of the driving, and the statutes in the given state, just briefly. Um, the statutes in the given state can vary. Sometimes there's case law that elevates a certain type that elevates a DUI, even if it's the first time and nobody has any prior DUIs, but they drank and drove and killed someone. Sometimes that can be elevated to a murder charge, depending on case law or statute. If you have previous DUIs and it would be a felony DUI, then you can fall under these felony murder statutes. So it really just depends on all of the circumstances of the thing and the case law. It's not as easy as, as that. And Criminal law charging, I was a filing deputy for a while when I was recovering for back surgery. Criminal law charging is incredibly or can be incredibly nuanced because there are different ways to get to the same thing, but you need to make sure that you know the case law, the statutes, the history to know that what you can prove in court or what you think you can prove in court comports with what you need to show. And I've fought with judges over the distance necessary for a kidnapping to be a kidnapping, for instance, um, and things like that. So you need to know all, all of these ins and outs. And that is what she's doing here. Um, was Hannah offered a plea? I have not seen the court documents where it says she was offered a plea, but I trust uh, my friend Runkle over the Bailey who has talked about it. I need to go find them. But apparently she was offered a plea that included her needing to disclose where the live ammo came from, and she chose not to. Let's get back to um, Ratchet Gang. Look at that. Six feet for kidnapping, isn't it? Sometimes it depends on the jurisdiction and case law, but I believe for California it was six feet. I don't know if it's more. Um, has court started yet? No. The plea deal info is in a court filing from September 2023. I'll make a note of that and try to pull it while we're listening to closing arguments. So we have it. Um, we are arguing over the distance um, before kidnapping. Yes, we are. Wait, now I have questions. What would make a kidnapping not a kidnapping if they don't move someone far enough? So if someone escapes, things like that. So we're not getting into hypotheticals on kidnapping today, though. I could talk about law forever, but these are why, you know, legislatures write the laws and then courts have to interpret them. And then lawyers argue them in court. And sometimes you get these wonky results that require the appellate courts to take a look and then the appellate courts redefine what the thing is. So it's ever evolving, it's ever changing, and you have to constantly pay attention to the nuance. And that's true in both criminal law and civil law. Um, people think criminal law is simple. I think the simple thing about criminal law is there's a more finite amount of statutes. You got to know what a thing is. It's like, did someone die? Did someone not die? Are there, is there money involved? Is there not money involved? Like you, you can lump them kind of into categories more readily sometimes in civil cases. I'll be talking about civil cases again tomorrow on the podcast. For members that were in the podcast recording last night, were you blown away? 
Were you blown away by yesterday's podcast? Because we're going to be talking about the scandal of it all and how Rachel Levis, 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 Raquel is suing Ariana Maddox and Tom Sandoval. So that's tomorrow's podcast. Um, let's go back to these jury instruction notes. And yes, chat, if you were ever like, gee, I wonder what it's like plowing through the annotated section of a state statute in New Mexico. You're welcome. Here we are. Thank court that's still not back yet. You're welcome. You're welcome as we plow through the finite annotated detail of New Mexico's annotated section um, or annotated statute. Jury instructions, criminal negligence instruction. A showing of criminal negligence is required for a conviction of involuntary manslaughter, and it was fundamental error for the trial court to not have instructed the jury. Where defendant's testimony provided a factual basis for an instruction on the lesser included offense of voluntary manslaughter, this is from another case. The court committed reversible error in denying defendant's requested instruction. A trial court must instruct the jury on voluntary manslaughter if the defense requests such an instruction and the instruction is warranted under the facts. We are not dealing with a manslaughter, a voluntary vol being bumped down to an invol. That's not what we're dealing with. We're at an invol. There's nowhere to bump it. There's no bumping happening. So the criminal negligence is necessary. Provocation. Words alone. However scurrious, 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 or insulting will not furnish adequate provocation to require submission of a voluntary manslaughter instruction. If somebody pisses you off because they have said words, bad words, mean words, ugly words, awful words, all the words, it's not enough. That provocation is not enough when you're like, fuck you, dude. That's not enough to bump you down to an involuntary manslaughter. Being triggered, they used to call it provocation, is not enough in New Mexico. Involuntary manslaughter instruction, where there is sufficient evidence of both criminal negligence and accident, it's proper to grant an involuntary manslaughter instruction. We're here now. The mens rea for involuntary manslaughter is criminal negligence. The state of mind. The state of mind. Joseph, all words, any words, no matter how ugly the word, we're in New Mexico. Provocation, words alone, no matter how insulting, any word, all the, all the ugly words is not enough provocation. In New Mexico. Under this case law, you guys are asking when this was written. I don't know. 1982 <laughs> is at least when it was updated. But you can go to case law. There's a lot of case law on provocation about words alone not being enough to use lethal force. Um, those, again, those things are, those things do shift by case law, but words and slurs are not enough when to be provocation if someone is killed to bump you into the involuntary manslaughter it keeps you in the voluntary manslaughter like you've chosen to do the thing though you were provoked it doesn't bump it into an involve so hope but that's also not the situation that we have here today um let's see involuntary manslaughter instruction is needed mens rea the state of mind needed uh, Susan said, what about threats? Threats are different than provocation. Threats are threats. And that gets into a whole dissertation on things like imperfect self-defense. So it depends. Threats are different than provocation. Provocation is mean words. However insulting, however scurrious, scurrious. I can't pronounce that. Stop sticking an L in the middle of where it doesn't belong. The mens rea for involuntary manslaughter is criminal negligence. An invol jury instruction is proper only when the evidence presented at trial permits the jury to find the defendant had a mental state of criminal negligence when engaging in the act to cause the victim's death. Was Hannah negligent? Is the, the end of the day. Everything we've heard in this trial that is still yet to start today. Everything that we've heard. Everything that we've heard. Does it mean anything other than Hannah was negligent. Uh, question, what if the words, those are threat words, threat words are different. Threat words, threatening words are different than insulting words. And that gets you into the difference between 
provocation, and self-defense. Threat words are different than insulting words. Shanna said, mens rea, legally blonde taught me that. Yep. All of, all of, all of you should know mens rea. How do you have a mental state for criminal negligence? It's all that's required. It's, it's beyond the actus reus. It's, it's, uh, it's the mental state. You need to be negligent. Is negligence a mental state? Sort of. Evidence of excessive self-defense, that's different. Evidence did not support instruction on involuntary manslaughter in that case. Evidence supported instruction on invol, where defendant shot and killed an intruder that failed to identify himself while pounding on defendant's front door at 1.30 a.m. So this is more of an imperfect self-defense. An instruction on uh, invol was warranted because a reasonable jury could have determined that defendant was either criminally negligent because firing a gun at a door while somebody was on the other side of it was a willful disregard of the rights and safety of others and in, uh, endangered that unknown intruder. <laughs> okay. The defendant unintentionally killed the intruder based on defendant's theory that he fired a warning shot or the defendant committed the lawful act of self-defense and unintentionally killed the victim without due caution or circumscription. Some states have different stand your ground laws. This, this, what we just read about imperfect self-defense is not going to apply in every state. Some states outside the door is not going to count in New Mexico. Some states outside the door is like, well, they were banging on your door at 1.30, so we're not going to charge you. Uh, defendant was entitled to an involuntary manslaughter instruction on a lesser included of second degree. Let's see what else. Question of provocation, not a case, not the case here. Generally, it's for the jury to determine whether there is sufficient provocation under the appropriate instruction on voluntary manslaughter. Provocation being, did somebody literally provoke you? Uh, these are all lesser included. The, a lot of case law on lesser included. When the court has no duty to instruct on voluntary manslaughter, that's lesser included attempted voluntary manslaughter instruction. Defendant's testimony that he was scared when he believed the other party was reaching for a gun provides evidence of, of sufficient provocation to support an attempted voluntary manslaughter instruction. How, New Mexico, what? What happened that this wasn't just an assault and you went and charged it like an attempt involve? You, how do you attempt an accident? I have questions. I have questions. Let's see what else we've got in here. Um... Mm. these are all because misleading to jury a party is entitled to have the jury instructed on all correct legal theories of his case which are supported by substantial evidence but in this case the court's refusal to give the invol instruction was correct where to have given the requested instruction which included acts for which there was no evidentiary support would have introduced false issues that would have been misleading to the jury so the court was allowed to deny it mm -mm. And that's about it on Invol. All right, y'all. Oh, the questions, is the jury just chilling out somewhere? They're sitting in the jury room wondering what the fuck is going on in this court. Let's check back and see if there's any updates from the in-court reporter because uh, this is not a 20 minute break. This is, no, 36 minutes ago, court is taking a break before the jury is brought in. Literally the long, literally the longest break ever. All right, we're gonna answer questions. <laughs> we're gonna answer questions. Um, let's see if I can put the court so you guys are are not nervous. We can ensmall in the court. There we go, court. We're, court is not back. We're gonna just we're gonna leave it. We're gonna leave it there. Is a plea deal in the work? I doubt it. I they're working on jury instructions. Has something big happened? They're probably still working on jury instructions and printing out the jury. Printing out jury instructions is like the bane of everyone's existence. Sometimes the programs don't work properly, et cetera. I'm going to answer, um, I'm going to answer questions and then we can go dig through court records for the plea deal. So the court is courting. Court is court is somethinging. Court is definitely somethinging. So um anyway, let's uh let's go to questions. I got my black on black hoodie and I love it. I'm so glad I love mine too. I need to wash mine. Otherwise I'd be wearing it today. But today we've got, today we've got, I've got questions. 
I have questions. And purple. I'm going to have lots of questions for y'all today. The look on Hannah's face as the expert was waving his gun said, I can see I'm not the only one whose career is over. <laughs> it's a very fair point. That expert was not experting. He had never testified in court as an expert before. I don't think the defense prepped him well with what to expect. And, um, and that's unfortunate for the defense. Jenny said, good morning, nerd fam, drinking water from my new spiked cup. Aren't they great? I love them. Though, for those of you that don't like the spiky texture, we are working on some others. Kay said, I also have an orange cat named George on my lap. The, George is the chill one. Fred is the wild one. But we moved way too much information. We moved the we moved a cat tower to a different window in the house, and they're obsessed. So now they're in the upstairs in the in the uh, cat tower. I'm holding on to your questions as you guys ask them so we can get to it. Bobby, but did you get your luggage back? I sure did. I sure did. Yesterday I learned that the Cincinnati Symphony also does LARPing, not a bingo card, <laughs> with the 1812 Overture. I need a paw nerd bandana for my pepper. We're working on it. This trial has been so weird. Thanks for keeping me company during a migraine. I'm sorry for your migraine. Those are the worst, and we're working on it. Brittany, thank you for the gift of membership. Heather, kitty kisses to sweet George. I will boop the floof on the snoot so I don't get cat hair in my lip gloss. Fat Yoga, thank you for the gift of memberships. Um, am I watching in class? Absolutely not. Mia, don't worry. We'll ping you when uh, when court actually starts. We're going to need to send out a new Lawnard alert at the Lawnard app when court actually resumes. We all could have slept in, Your Honor. Like, could have gotten some extra Starbucks. I have that too. But we all could have slept in a little bit if you had just started court later. <laughs> You had, if you had to do jury instructions still, just don't start court now. Like, that's it. Um, Donnie Joe Mo said, much appreciation to you. You have a beautiful spirit. Well, thank you. Um, not everyone agrees. Sometimes I say the fuck words too much for some folks. They've already left though. Carla, good to see you. It must have been a feat for bowls to take over planned bullion crosses. Agreed. Agreed. And I try to give grace. And then I forget myself in the middle of being annoyed. <laughs> it may be why he didn't go in on some witnesses like we thought he would. Do you agree? Um, I I do think there's there's something to that. I don't know what witnesses Bouillon would have crossed. And yesterday, um, I didn't see it when I was screaming about the gun expert, but I saw it on rewatch that when the court panned over, Bouillon was like at the very end of a table facing the jury, like working on his laptop. So the court is still like, you're going to sit here for the rest of the trial and you're going to like it. I bet he's glad he's not uh, he's not on camera talking in court. Mary said last year I was traveling on jury watch for Murdoch. Now I'm going to be on jury watch tomorrow traveling. It looks like it's a March tradition. Depending on how long today takes, this case could go two ways. This jury could go back and slap down their first vote and ring the bell. 15 minutes. Your Honor, we've got answers. Or they could want to rewatch all of her interviews. And then they're not going to come back till tomorrow. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens later in the day. We need to see how long closing arguments take. We need to see when court actually starts. It's 10 a.m. local time for court. They told the jury to be back at 8.30. Imagine how thrilled you would be. They could have all slept in too. They could have spent the morning working on emails. They could have done something other than sitting in this fucking court. Um, but no, everybody's taking forever. Maya said, I'm a 12th grade senior, started watching two years ago, and you've helped me figure out what I would like to do after graduation. I'm now going to law school. Mia, congratulations. Hopefully you don't have much going on in class today while you're on jury duty. Ah! Things are happening in court. Um, court looks more full for, for, um, for closing arguments. Closing arguments are the best part of a case. Uh, this also, this could be, I do not know. This could be Helena's family uh, in court. They have wrongful death lawsuits against a whole bunch of folks. I've covered those on the podcast and on YouTube. I have a very thorough playlist on all of these cases. The uh, civil lawsuits and this trial are all on one playlist. If we need to break it up and put the trial on a separate playlist later, I will. I have questions. She was not in church. Gun was called clear. Why could someone not have put the live round in? 
there's no testimony of that. There's no evidence of that. Could it have happened? Yes. Is it reasonable that that happened? No, because there were like 12 people in the church. Also, her first response was to go in church. She screamed, um, she was screamed out to leave. I agree with you. Um, her job was to load the gun. Could somebody have done something to the gun in the uh, meantime? Unlikely, given her own testimony, Dave Hall's testimony, and the other testimony. I'm glad the jury's finally coming in. Uh, let's see. Question. If the powder was in a green baggie, how did the witness know it was white powder? Based on the appearance, I don't know how darkly green the baggie was. EDB, making my allergy-ridden workday better. I'm so sorry. Feel better. In other news, Lawnard merch for Pawnards. We're working on it. Morning, jurors. Thank you so much for your patience. Uh-huh. All right. Next witness. Yeah, we call PJ Pesh. That's not Thel Reed. PJ. I missed the last name. Are you an experty expert or are you a shit show expert? Let's find out together. All right, let's go you ahead and end our poll. Under penalty of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. All right, have a seat. Talking to the microphone. Thank you. Who is PJ? No idea. Sir. Good morning, sir. And you please tell the jury your full name. Uh, it's Paul Peter Pesh Jr., but uh, I've always been referred to as PJ Pesh. What up, PJ? Mr. Pesh, what do you do for a living? Uh, I direct and write movies and television. How long have you been in the business of directing and writing movies and television? Uh, 35 years. Can you give the jury a background on your uh, movies that you've directed? Sir, can you read your kind IMDb? Of a biographical sketch? Sure. Uh, I attended Columbia University uh, and studied under Martin Scorsese and did a short film that traveled around the world. I wound up getting- I've never seen this much Hollywood name dropping in a trial. I'm not saying it's inappropriate. It's just an interesting quirk of this trial. A deal at Paramount in 1990. Um, I directed a film for Roger Corman in 1991 that I wrote and directed. In 1995, I directed a Western with Sam Elliott that we actually shot at Bonanza Creek Ranch. Um, what was it? That was a also rather lower budgeted. We short love Sam schedule. Elliott. Uh, I've directed six feature films and close to 100 hours of television. Um, I've created television shows, um, written and sold movie scripts. Um, I've worked for Paramount, uh, Warner Brothers, HBO, Universal, Fox. Anything else? We have Amy Van Dyke I, that has questions, that, sir. That's we do. Um, a really good Excuse background. me, sir. I, I just want to ask you with regard uh, to the Western on Oh, Bonanza that's true. That's we did have a lot of name of, dropping. Of where Rust was found. Is that right? That's what I understand. Ems, you're right. Well, Mr. Pesh, um, More it sounds dropping. like you have experience. How do I forget the name dropping in the Depp v. Heard trial? I forget myself. Here we go. The most Hollywood name dropping I've seen in a criminal trial. <laughs> Let's do that because there was so much name dropping, even though they couldn't pronounce Zendaya's name properly. There was a lot of name dropping in Debbie Heard. That is, that is accurate. It's also accurate. Uh, movies involving firearms. Yes. Um, many of the television shows and I think four or five of the six films, two of them were Westerns. Uh, one of them was one of the sniper series with Tom Berenger. Uh, one of them was, uh, Smoke and Aces, which had a considerable amount of gunfire. In your uh, work on the movies involving uh, gunfire, have you had the occasion to work this, with armors? This and is prop probably masters? the last I have. witness. And actually, in all of the movies I you've agree. done, I'm, sure, I'm certain you've worked with prop masters. Yes. Okay, sir. And, and with regard to those movies that you've directed in television, have you worked with uh, directors, first assistant directors, and understood people's roles on the set? I have. 
please tell us more all the ways in which Mr. Dave Hall sucks and shouldn't have been given a plea deal, sir, because it's just going to make us all mad. It doesn't necessarily undo what Hannah did, but um, we're here for somebody to talk about it. Regard to armors, have you ever worked on a prior film in which an armor had split duties as an armor and a props? He has not, I have not been designated as an expert. Are we going to designate him as an expert? With regard to... Was he on set? Because he's not a precipient witness and he's not designated as an expert. So why are we here? Uh, this situation where there is a, a gun heavy set, I will represent to you. Would you think in your experience and what you've seen, it would be advisable to have a part-time armorer doing two jobs? I would say that would be highly inadvisable. Whose responsibility is it to properly staff with regard to the movie functions? Uh, the line producer or the, the unit production manager. Baldwin's going to like that testimony. He's not the line producer or when the you have production a set involving manager. upwards of 20 firearms. Would it be in your experience possible for a part time armor to manage that? I wouldn't imagine so. Um, one person can. Each one of those weapons needs to be tracked. Pretty consistently. Are we going to designate him as an expert, though? Safe, so I don't see how a single person can keep their eye on 20 firearms. I agree with you. With regard to overall set safety and your experience and background, who is in charge of that? The first AD is considered in all of the published safety advisories, uh, the chief safety officer on the set. Yep. Are you a member of various guilds? I'm a member of the Writers Guild, the Directors Guild, SAG-AFTRA, which is the Actors Guild, and I also happen to be a member of the Musicians Guild. The what? Okay, so when you talk about safety rules, uh, are some of those from those guilds? Yes, there's a, I can't remember the name of the organization, but they sort of uh, collectively represent all of the various guilds and issue. I will say the difference between the prosecution inappropriately using people as experts and the defense is that this man doesn't seem to be a percipient witness. Carrie was using people that were on set who saw what happened and then expanding their use. I didn't like it then either. It's like that person's not an expert. This person's not even a percipient witness. They've been called in only because of their expertise and yet not designated as an expert. It'll probably happen at some point. I just get annoyed. Nobody's objecting. Rules don't matter, apparently. Recommendations for safety uh, that they recommend uh, attaching to the call sheet each day. Dave Halls is, is in charge of the call sheet. Is your experience also um, something you've seen where there will be daily safety meetings on set, especially in a gun heavy set? <laughs> the judge quietly goes are we going to designate him as an expert thank you your honor yes your honor we i believe he can give lay opinions on his experience but but also we would tender him as an expert i, I think we should approach now we're approaching oh, he doesn't want to offer him as an expert why are we approaching? Oh, now we're caught up to real time. Darn it. There's no zoom zooming today. So Mr. Pitch, you were discussing some of those safety rules now. Not designated as an be, expert. In your experience, advisable for uh, production to convene daily safety meetings? Yes. In fact, it's recommended by all of the published literature uh, by the guilds. Um, and it's been my they they recommend that a safety meeting takes place anytime uh there's to be any stunts how is this not hearsay what foundation do you have for what's recommended by various guilds that you didn't how is any of this proper evidence firearms special effects but it's been my experience but in the last seven or eight years since the tragic incident with the camera assistant who was killed on the railroad bridge that every first AD I have worked with, regardless of what's happening that day on the call sheet, has a quick safety meeting just running over and reiterating <clears throat> basic safe practices. And, and you as a uh, director, uh, is that something that you advise and you practice? I don't give safety meetings. That's the job of the safety first officer, AD. the first AD. But I think it's a great idea. 
in your experience and in, in interacting with first assistant directors, if, for example, there's a situation where a set is rushing, there's safety issues occurring, does the first assistant director... How is this not calling for an expert opinion? What are you calling for then? Not a lay opinion. That's not even a thing. He's not a percipient witness. What What are we... Do you have any responsibility Why? in that respect? Most definitely. And what would that be in your experience? What would, what would you expect to see happen? Um... My experience has been that the first okay. has an announcement to everybody, slow down, this is not safe, or we're not doing this, or just takes charge. And uh, if there's a specific issue with a crew member, they'll pull them aside and discuss the issue and consult with stunts or props or uh, firearms and I think they it. probably could have qualified him it, as an Is expert. that also true, they for example, didn't. if you have a issue with an actor, uh, for example, uh, firing a blank after somebody yells cut, what would the first AD be expected to do in your experience? The also, the state might not be objecting to just use this guy to roast the armor duties and be like, yeah, we'll just use it to our advantage. But it's, I'm a, I'm surprised the court is allowing it, though maybe I shouldn't be. Speak with them and indicate. If look, this when defense cut team is called, doesn't bring an expert armor, uh, it's going to look very bad. I think. Usually the only person that can call cut is the director. But if, if it's a safety issue, anybody can call cut. I have a question. Is it better if and they yell cut motherfucker? Once cut is called, everything needs to stop. Because if there is a safety issue, obviously, that somebody has noticed, nothing else should take place. So, yes, the first AD should speak to that performer. When it comes to safety, what is your view as to everybody's responsibility and so well again it's not just my view but again in the published literature of the of the various guilds they indicate safety this is, is everyone's responsibility point. if there's a safety issue there are anonymous hotlines for anybody to call and raise these issues and are those uh, anonymous hotlines, are those published generally in your experience working on set? They are. Usually they're uh, with that safety recommendations that are attached to the call sheet. And those hotlines, uh, what do they what do they provide for people to be able to? Hey, counsel, do you have evidence that your client did any of this? Because if you if you're opening the door to the jury's thinking that there are hotlines that Hannah could have called and she didn't. Why are you introducing this? Well, you better have documentary evidence that Hannah was calling everybody up being like, these motherfuckers aren't safe or it's not gonna go well for you. Why introduce it if your client didn't do this and you're introducing that she could have just called, it's not gonna go well. You better have evidence that she called able to do if they notice a safety you, failure. You, be, you better back that uh, up. You can call the someone from your guild. Uh, each of the studios has their own separate hotline. Because Lane Looper did. Um, Ross Adiago did. Uh, and as far as I know, that will allow you to anonymously, so you don't... Look, if you... So you don't get blackballed from a very vindictive something, industry? You put your career in jeopardy. Nobody wants to do that. But um, the idea is that a representative can provide that information to somebody who will take action, such as the producer, the UPM, or the first AD. In your experience, uh, have you worked and seen the interaction between prop masters and armors? I have. And can you tell the jury in your experience generally how they interact, uh, who's in charge of the firearms and who's in charge of the ammunition and the, what the prop master role is? 
Well, the prop master more often than not hires the armorer because that's a subset of that department. But the armorer is in charge of all ammunition, all firearms, um, maintaining them, uh, keeping them safe and inventorying the ammunition. With those duties and responsibilities, would you believe it be to be important in your experience to accord the armor adequate time to do those duties? Yes. And would it be important to accord adequate resources uh, for that armor to do those duties? Yes. These are expert opinions by a non-expert. This is making my head hurt. If there is a scenario where my law school professor the, crying um, armor is dealing with a gun heavy set, not having those resources, who would you expect to assist that, that armor in getting those? An assistant armor? Props. If there is a situation where um, there is a scene, a video, something's happening, and both the armor and first assistant director witness a uh, safety violation involving a, a weapon, for example. Um, what would be your assessment whether one or both of them um, should say something about that? I would say both of them should say something about it and figure out why it happened and uh, make sure it doesn't happen again. Did anyone do that on this set? Anyone? Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. I have no further questions. Sir, how is this helpful to your case? Cross exam. This is going to be worse. This isn't going to help. Danger, danger. I just have a couple follow up questions for you. Thank you for your time today. Certainly. Um, Tell me all the ways in which this armor didn't do her job. Ready? Go. So anyone on the crew can stop filming due to safety concerns. Is that right? That's right. And that includes. What a great first question on cross. I, I think I'm going to leave her cross at, at normal speed. So anyone on the crew can stop filming for a safety concern because the other experts the defense had, OSHA, yesterday were saying she was not empowered to do her job. The defense just brought in an expert that undoes everything, well, not expert, that undoes everything OSHA fucking said yesterday. This undoes everything OSHA said yesterday. Why? Why do this? Because OSHA said she couldn't. And this witness, the director, the dude who works on films, is the one that the jury's going to believe more than OSHA. Why would you undo your witnesses from yesterday? I, <laughs> Carrie's cross-examination poster is like, get ready, sir. Here we go. Great question. Filming due to, I just have a couple follow-up questions for you. Thank you for your time today. Certainly. Um, so anyone on the crew can stop filming due to safety concerns. Is that right? That's right. And that includes Ms. Gutierrez. That's correct. Um, and why, why do this? Sir, did yeah, you Bowles is sitting there with his mouth watch? open going, ah, sir. How did you not know this is what was going to happen? The statements of Ms. Gutierrez in preparation for your testimony? I did not. That was my understanding. Um, so you don't know what she said? Are you aware that on October 21st, 2021, um, Ms. Gutierrez Here comes the was not inside the church with the gun, not because she was working on props, but because she was just doing some other armor duties? Objection, Your Honor. Objection, Your Honor. I don't like these questions. Your Honor, this is, we've made an error. We would like to stop now, Your Honor. I don't think he's going to win this one. Damn it. Now we're back to real time and we have to sit and wait through these. I'm going to, oh, good. Do I need to restate the question? Do you yes. remember? Yes, okay. please. Uh, so my question for you is, uh, we, we, if you're ever a witness in trial and they ask a question and then take a break, always say you don't remember the question because the chances are during that break, 
The jury has also forgotten the question. We saw some some uh, interviews from Ms. Gutierrez, and and she does uh, explain that she was not in the church because she was. Um, preparing her fanny pack and her blank ammunition for the next scene. You agree that that's sounds like armor work to, to, to you, not props work. Yes. Okay. Um, and are you also aware, sir, that on the morning of the 21st, when the crew was waiting for replacement, the defense teed Carrie up and is just going to let her go and undo all of their evidence from yesterday with this dude. That's why they weren't objecting. Look, I get in the moment. I get very in the moment. I'm like, object, block this guy from coming in. And you, you know what Carrie is doing? She's like, oh no, oh no, come, come on in, sir. The water's fine. Tell me all the ways this armor is supposed to do their job and is going to use it to her advantage instead, which might be the stronger play. Camera personnel to arrive. Ms. Gutierrez had approximately three hours uh, to work on her preparation for the, the scenes that day. walked off. I was not aware of that. Okay, thank you. I'll pass the witness. I think she could have done more. I just. Uh, I think that's pretty, pretty, okay. pretty helpful to the prosecution. Mr. if there was um, a scene going on inside the church at that time involving Mr. Baldwin and the firearm, if Miss Gutierrez Reed was not in the church, would you have expected someone to have called her back in? I yeah, would if the there's first a AD. firearm on set. There should be an armor on set. Have nothing further, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Your excuse. Are you going to rest? Is that is that it? Counsel approach. He might rest. All right, we're going to zoom zoom till we get caught up on real real time. Oh, the judge has our jury instructions. The defense is going to rest. Those are the jury instructions. That's it. That's the game, folks. Next witness. At this time, the defense rests. Okay, thank you. The defense All right, rests. So both sides have rested. It's now my duty to give you the instructions of law. That's how you rest your case? With a witness that undoes your witness from yesterday. I guess I guess Hannah's stepdad is in court because now that everybody's rested, he is, and the prosecution doesn't have a rebuttal case, he is allowed to come and sit and watch the closing arguments. So, y'all, that's it. Where is it? Nope, nope. And like that, the defense went out on a witness that sounded like a balloon losing air for all the help it did to their case. We're going to read jury instructions and uh, we're going to get to closing arguments. Miguelina, go ahead and let the Law Nerd app crew know. You guys, jury instructions are one of the most important parts of a case. And if the judge reads them wrong, it is the part that will get a conviction overturned on appeal absolutely the fastest. That witness was a complete waste of time for the defense. Um, so glad, so glad we're here. So glad we're here. I'm going to read them to you, and then you will get a copy of the instructions, okay? The instructions I'm giving you are very helpful for the um, counsel to uh, use in their closing it's arguments. It's 1030 okay? local time. Follow. It's a right, very so real possibility one, we have a verdict today. You have heard all the evidence. It is now my duty to tell you the law that you must follow in this case. Yep. Instruction number two. The law governing this case is contained in instructions that I'm about to give you. It is your duty to follow the law as contained in these instructions. You must consider these instructions as a whole. You must not pick out one instruction or parts of an instruction and disregard others. A copy of these instructions will be given to you when you begin your deliberations. Instruction number three, the law presumes the defendant to be innocent unless and until you are satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt of her guilt, his or her guilt. The burden is always on the state to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. It is not required that the state prove guilt beyond all possible doubt. The test is one of reasonable doubt. A reasonable doubt is a doubt based upon reason and common sense. The kind of doubt that would make a reasonable person hesitate to act 
in the graver and more important affairs of life. Instruction number four. You are the sole judges of the facts in this case. It is your duty to determine the facts from the evidence produced here in court. Were you waiting your for her to say the facts from the on fuckery? Speculation, you guess, might have been. Or conjecture. You might have been. Neither you sympathy be nor prejudice should influence your verdict. You are to apply the law as stated in these instructions to the facts as you find them. And in this way, decide the case. Every jury wishes they could do this. Instruction number five. Your verdict must represent the considered judgment of each juror. In order to return a verdict, it is necessary that each juror agrees. Your verdict must be unanimous. It is your duty to consult with one another and try to reach an agreement. However, you are not required to give up your individual judgment. Each of you must decide the case for yourself, but you must do so only after an impartial Closing consideration after of the evidence with your fellow jurors. In the course of your deliberations, do not hesitate to re-examine your own view and change your opinion if you are convinced it is erroneous. But do not surrender your honest conviction as to the weight or effect of evidence solely because of the opinion of your fellow jurors or for the purpose of reaching the uh, verdict. You are the judges, judges of the facts. Your sole interest is to ascertain the truth from the evidence in this case. Instruction number six, each crime charged in the information should be considered separately. Instruction number seven, you must not concern yourself with the consequences of your verdict. Instruction number eight, you must not draw any inference of guilt from the fact that the defendant did not testify in this case, nor should this fact be discussed by you or enter into your deliberations in any way. Instruction number nine, you alone are the judges of the credibility of the witnesses and the weight to be given to the testimony of each of them. This is a really important instruction, so I'm going to slow her back down to normal speed as we get to the crime instructions, because judging the credibility of a witness is very important. In determining the credit to be given any witness, you should take into account the witness's truthfulness or untruthfulness, ability and opportunity to observe, memory, manner while testifying, any interest, bias, or prejudice the witness may have, and the reasonableness of the witness's testimony considered in light of all of the evidence in the case. Instruction number 10. You should consider each opinion received in evidence in this case and give it such weight you think it deserves. If you should conclude that the reason given in support of the opinion, the reasons given in support of the opinion are not sound, or that for any other reason an opinion is not correct, you may disregard the opinion entirely. Instruction number 11. An expert witness is a witness who, by knowledge, skill, experience, training, or education, you may disregard it become entirely if the any witness subject. An expert witness may be permitted to state an opinion as to that subject. You should consider each expert opinion and the reasons stated for the opinion, giving them such weight as you think they deserve. You may reject an opinion entirely if you conclude that it is unsound. This is the busiest this courtroom has been. Number 12. For you to find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter as charged in count one, here's the important the instructions. The state must prove to your satisfaction These are the elements. beyond a reasonable doubt each of the following elements of the crime. This is important. One, Hannah Gutierrez endangered the safety of another by handling or using a firearm in a negligent. As you are listening to this, answer these questions for yourself. Answer yes or no on each of these elements to yourself. That's what this jury is going to have to do manner. Two, Hannah Gutierrez should have known of the danger involved by Hannah Gutierrez's actions. Action. Three, Hannah Gutierrez acted with a willful disregard for the safety of others. Four, Hannah Gutierrez's act caused the death of Helena Hutchins. Five, this happened in New Mexico on or about the 21st day of October 2021. Instruction 12a. For you to find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter in count one alternative, the state must prove to your satisfaction beyond a reasonable doubt each of the following elements of the crime. One, Hannah Gutierrez loaded live ammunition into a firearm intended to contain only inert ammunition and or Hannah Gutierrez failed to perform an adequate safety check of the ammunition she loaded into the firearm. Two, Hannah Gutierrez should have known of the danger involved by Hannah Gutierrez's action. Three, Hannah Gutierrez acted with a willful disregard for the safety of others. Four, Hannah Gutierrez's act caused the death of Helena Hutchins. Five, this happened in New Mexico on or about the 21st day of October, 2021. 
Instruction number 13. For you to define, for you to find the defendant guilty of neg negligent use of a deadly weapon as a lesser included offense charge. That's Irma, I love that so much. Thank you. One, the state must prove to your satisfaction beyond a reasonable doubt each of the following elements of the crime. One, the defendant endangered the safety of another by handling or using a firearm in a negligent manner. Two, this happened in New Mexico on or about the 21st day of October 2021. Was she negligent in loading it? Instruction number 13A. For you to find the defendant acted negligently in this case, you must find that the defendant acted with willful disregard of the rights or safety of this others like in any manner tree. which endangered this any person or property. And then this, and then this, and then this. Instruction 13B. In addition to the other elements of tampering with evidence, the state must prove to your satisfaction tampering. beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant acted intentionally when she committed the crime. A person acts intentionally when she purposely does an act which the law declares to be a crime. Whether the defendant acted intentionally may be inferred from all of the surrounding circumstances, such as the manner in which she acts, the means used, or her conduct. Instruction number 14. You have been instructed on the crimes of this. involuntary manslaughter and the lesser included offense of negligent use of a firearm as charged in count one. It is up to you, the jury, to choose the manner and order in which you deliberate on the crimes charged in that count. However, to return a verdict, you must follow the procedure described in the next instruction. Instruction number 15. To aid you in your deliberations and in returning your verdict, you will be provided both guilty and not guilty forms for each of the charges for each of the crimes charged in count one. Unless you unanimously agree on a verdict, you should not sign a verdict form for that crime. Although you may deliberate on the crimes charged in count one in any manner and order which you choose, you must return your verdicts for each offense in count one in the order they are instructed. Under this procedure, if you unanimously find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter, you should sign the guilty form for that offense and should not proceed to reach a verdict on the remaining offense in count one. If after reasonable deliberation, you do not reach a unanimous verdict on involuntary manslaughter, you should not sign a verdict form for that offense and should not proceed to reach a verdict on the remaining offense. You should only return a verdict on negligent use of a firearm if you unanimously find the defendant not guilty of involuntary manslaughter. They did put in a lesser. I wasn't sure if they were going to drop in the misdemeanor lesser included, but that's what the judge is saying. The lesser included is the misdemeanor negligent handling of a firearm. So I will get to your questions soon, but we're going to go through the jury instructions because closing arguments are going to start. I am going to hold on um, to your questions. Why do jury instructions come before closing? Because jury instructions are a central part of closing arguments. If you unanimously find the defendant not guilty of involuntary like manslaughter, you must sign the not guilty verdict form for involuntary manslaughter before returning a verdict on any other crime charged in count one. If you unanimously find the defendant guilty of negligent use of a firearm, you should sign the guilty verdict for that offense. If you do not reach a unanimous verdict on negligent use of a firearm, you should not sign a verdict form for that offense. Instruction number 16. In this case, as to the charge of involuntary manslaughter contained in count one, there are four possible verdicts. One, guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Two, not guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Three, guilty of negligent use of a firearm. Four, not guilty of negligent use of a firearm. You must consider each of these crimes. You should be sure that you fully understand the elements of each crime before you deliberate further. You have the discretion to choose the manner and order in which you deliberate on this count, but you must return a unanimous verdict of not guilty on involuntary manslaughter before entering a verdict on negligent use of a firearm. Because it's a lesser included. You will first decide whether the defendant is guilty of the crime of involuntary manslaughter. If you unanimously find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter, then that is the only form of verdict which is to be signed as to this count. 
if you unanimously find the defendant not guilty of involuntary manslaughter, then you should sign only the not guilty form as to involuntary manslaughter. If after reasonable deliberation, you do not reach a unanimous verdict on involuntary manslaughter, you should not sign a verdict form for that crime and you should not proceed to reach a verdict on the remaining crime. If you unanimously find the defendant not guilty of involuntary manslaughter, you will then go on to a consideration of the crime of negligent use of a firearm. If you unanimously find the defendant guilty of negligent use of a firearm, then that is the only form of verdict which should be signed. But if you unanimously find the defendant not guilty of the crime of negligent use of a firearm, then you should sign only the not guilty form. If after reasonable deliberation, you do not reach a unanimous verdict on negligent use of a firearm, you should not sign a verdict form for that crime. You may not find the defendant guilty of more than one of the foregoing crimes. If you have a reasonable doubt as to whether the defendant has committed any one of the crimes, you must determine that the defendant is not guilty of that crime. If you find the defendant not guilty of all of these crimes in count one, you must return a verdict of not guilty as for this count. Instruction number 17. For you to find the defendant guilty of tampering with evidence as charged in count two, the state must prove to your satisfaction beyond a reasonable this is the doubt evidence tampering each elements. of the following elements of the crime. One, the defendant Hannah Gutierrez had a baggie of cocaine by asking Rebecca Smith to take it outside of Hannah Gutierrez. The evidence on this is so thin. Gutierrez's hotel will hid a baggie of cocaine by asking Rebecca Smith to take it outside of Hannah Gutierrez's hotel room. Two, by doing so, the defendant intended to prevent Harry, the apprehension, prosecution, or conviction of Hannah Gutierrez for the crime of involuntary manslaughter. Three, this happened in New Mexico on or about the 21st day of October, 2021. Instruction number 18. A firearm means any weapon which will or is designed to or may readily be converted to expel a projectile by the actions of an explosion. The frame or receiver of a firearm, any firearm muffler or firearm silencer. Firearm includes any handgun, rifle, or shotgun. Instruction. The judge didn't say it was cocaine. The judge said the jury had to find it was a baggie of cocaine. The jury gets to decide if it is or is not a baggie of cocaine based on a woman saying it looks like a baggie of cocaine, but sure, it could be meth. Number 19. In addition to the other elements of the crime of involuntary manslaughter as set, in for as set forth in instruction number 12a, the state must prove to your satisfaction beyond a reasonable doubt, doubt that one, the death was a foreseeable result of Hannah Gutierrez placing a live round into a firearm intended this to contain only the inert info. ammunition and or Hannah Gutierrez's failure to perform an adequate safety check of the ammunition she loaded into the firearm. Two, the act of the defendant was a significant cause of the death of Helena Hutchins. The defendant's act was a significant cause of death if it was an act which, in a natural and continuous chain of events, these are definitions. This is why the defense was fighting with jury instructions over whether or not they could talk about the improper intubation. Was Hannah's action part of a natural and continuous change, or did the medical intervention intervention derail that natural and continuous chain? Uninterrupted by an outside events resulted in the death and without which the death would have not occurred. There may be more than one significant cause of death. If the acts of two or more persons that. significantly contribute to the cause of death, each act is a significant cause of death. This not only goes to medical intervention, but her loading the gun and Baldwin pulling the trigger, both are significant causes of death. Baldwin pulls the trigger with dummies in it, no, no death. Baldwin doesn't pull the trigger, no death. Hannah doesn't load it with a live ammunition, no death. So there can be multiple significant causes. She can be one of them. Instruction number 20. The state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant's act was a significant cause of the death of Helena Hutchins. An issue in this case is whether the negligence of a person other than the defendant may have contributed to the cause of death. 
such contributing negligence does not relieve the defendant of responsibility for an act that significantly contributed to the cause of death, so long as the death was a foreseeable result of the defendant's actions. Contributing negligence does not excuse the defendant's behavior. However, if you find the negligence of a person other than the defendant was the only significant cause of death or constitutes an intervening cause that breaks the foreseeable chain of events, then the defendant is not guilty of the offense of involuntary manslaughter. The important instructions. Instruction number 21. Now the lawyers will argue the case. What is said in, in the closing arguments is not evidence. It is an opportunity for the lawyers to discuss the evidence and the law as I have instructed you. The state has the right to argue first, the defense may then argue, and the state may then reply. Counsel? State, then rebuttal. State, then defense, then rebuttal. I'm gonna speed this back to regular speed. We're gonna have some technical difficulties, I'm sure. Better play some video. I'm gonna zoom, zoom till the state is ready. Is the court. Good morning, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen. May it please the court, counsel. She's gonna define willful in her closing, but a lot of you have questions on that. I'm not gonna explain it. I will explain it later. I explained it this morning. It's the state's job to do that. So I'm going to let the state argue and try to persuade you, the chat jury of guilt here. Um, I want to begin by thanking you all for your time. I know that this has been a, a long trial. And, it has been. Um, I also understand that as jurors, you find yourselves maybe a little frustrated. There's a lot of sitting around and waiting. Um, and uh, we appreciate your time. We appreciate the sacrifice same, same that you chat. make when you leave your jobs and your families and your other responsibilities to come and, and watch come this to with court, me on the internet uh, to participate in a very, very important part of our justice system. So on behalf of the state of New Mexico, uh, we thank you very much for your time. Thanks, chat. And as you can see You're on your screens, we end exactly where we began, in the pursuit of justice for Helena Hutchins. I want to start by just generally outlining Hannah Gutierrez failed to maintain firearm safety, making a fatal accident willful and foreseeable. And please keep in mind that omissions can also be willful. So if we fail to do something that we should do and that failure uh, results in someone's death, then that too, uh, can be willful. So I would ask that you keep that in mind as we move through uh, some of the evidence and testimony that you have heard. I know that you have heard a lot and I do not intend to keep you too long, uh, but I do have to be thorough. I do want to hit you need to make it uh, some high points. So you I do need appreciate to make it simple. your patience. Um, you need to make it simple. Here's what we saw. We need to have these videos. If you recall that were taken by production outfitters, they were taken on October 13th of 2021. What these demonstrate to you is that Ms. Gutierrez was unwilling to maintain proper firearm safety repeatedly. And it's really important because this is not a case where Hannah Gutierrez made one mistake and that one mistake was accidentally putting a live round into that gun. That's I, not what this case is I about. I think this is a good This point. case is about constant, never ending safety failures that resulted in the death of a human being and nearly killed another. That y'all gave Dave so a for. let's talk about all of the safety failures that we saw and the reason that these safety failures prior to october 21st are so critically important to the analysis is because they go to foreseeability they and foreseeability is a very important element in this case so as we can see here we have our um, stunt man 
with his double barrel shotgun. From watching those videos, what you understood is that Ms. Gutierrez did appear to, in fact, be present because at times we saw her and at times we heard her. So she wasn't off doing prop duties. She was right there and she never intervened. Gun pointed at a child. Gun pointed at Joel Souza directly at his back. Gun pointed up in the air in the direction. There's not a chance that this photo is clear to this jury. N not a not a chance. Maybe when they get the printout, but there's not a chance that's clear to the jury. That good lord. Of the stunt coordinator. Gun pointed again, apparently in the direction of Mr. Souza, the person on the far right. No, no, don't put your brain down on the screen. Gun pointed directly at Mr. Souza Brightness again. Up. The firearm in the left hand of the stuntman who is facing you. Firearm pointed directly at a minor child. The brightness is down so low it's impossible. Firearm to see pointed this. directly for us at the camera. Ms. Gutierrez holding that same firearm with the muzzle pointed at her own face. The jury hopefully can um, see those photos better, I'm sure. This I, was. I think the issue with the photos is the cameras at Court TV trying to grab them off of a backlit Elmo. So the jury's going to see this better. These are pretty clear. Unexpected. Ms. Gutierrez stood by and did nothing in between scenes when that stuntman who had certainly been sent the message that he could do whatever he wanted with those guns. No one was going to intervene. The person tasked with intervening was not going to do it. That was clear. He hands the firearm to the child and allows the child to manipulate the gun before then after a short period of time, perhaps thinking better of it and taking the gun back. And pointing it at who? This firearm, I actually don't think in this photo that the firearm is pointed at the child. I think the firearm is, based on the angle of the camera, probably more pointed at this person right here. Um, but she's there. We hear her. We see her. She does nothing. Absolutely nothing. This is some of the first evidence that we see where if something doesn't stop, if something doesn't change, she is moving in, in the direction of potentially a fatal incident. And that is exactly what happened. And I want you to recall Ms. Gutierrez's interview on November 9th when Ms. Gutierrez uh, spoke of the accidental discharge with the other stunt man. Um, Read it. Having a it. complete lack of understanding of her role in safety on this movie set. Read it. She's talking about Sarah Zachary. And she was like, well, yours just went off in there after you loaded it. And I said, yeah, well, I can't be responsible for every dickhead fucking stunt guy that gets a hold of the gun and doesn't understand the concept that it's hot. It's kind of your job to make sure they get it, though. Her entire job is to be responsible for exactly that. And when she took this job, she agreed to that responsibility. There is no exception in the law for your young. The exception in the law does not exist. The law treats everyone the same. If you take the must. responsibility, if you take on that responsibility, it's on you is her argument.
And they're going to argue it what wasn't was her one job. What was the point to the test? The defense is going to argue she had two jobs. They were making her do props. She can't be willful when they don't give her time. Testimony about the lever action rifle. Well, here's the point to the testimony about the lever action rifle. Oh, good. More negligence. Ma'am, have you been watching the stream? <laughs> We've been asking. Thanks so much for directly answering our question. <laughs> I feel so the seen. The testimony about the lever action rifle. Well, here's the point to the testimony about the lever action rifle. More negligence, more carelessness, more lack of attention to safety. She loaded a lever action rifle with dummy rounds that, by the way, according to the director, was completely unnecessary because yes, while it's true, this gun operates in a way where if a certain type of camera angle is hitting it, dummy rounds would be appropriate if the scene calls for loading or cycling. There wasn't a scene that called for that. So she just loaded a lever action rifle with dummy rounds and surprisingly put the wrong caliber round in the gun. Which goes to show- That is absolutely an example of someone who is care. not paying attention, not taking their job seriously. And that's why that evidence came in. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about some of the rounds that you've seen because it's critical to tracking the existence of the live rounds on this movie set. Because where did the and live rounds come from is a huge we question. We have spent a lot of time and effort no tracking shit. those rounds around that movie set. And we're gonna show you that and evidence around, right now. And around, and so around, the important thing to know around. is that the Seth Kenny dummies, which you are looking at right here, are patinaed. They are distinct. They have an antique coloring. They also have silver primers. Would that also be a patine? These rounds did not come on that movie set until October 12th of 2021 because Mr. Kenny didn't have them. And if you recall his testimony, he was in Texas. So he had to get back, clean them up, and provide them to Sarah Zachary. And that took place on October 12th. This is just simply the primer side of those rounds. You can see that they're dark in color on the primer side, and they do appear to have silver primers. She's distinguishing between the silver primer this is dummies a and the silver primer of the live 3840 rounds. 3840 dummies. If you recall Mr. Kinney's testimony, the 3840 dummies came from Billy Ray. And the important thing about this photograph is that none of those dummy rounds had silver primers. And silver primer is a very important piece of this puzzle. We've learned. This is those same rounds on their side. You can see that they are shiny brass. We also know that they have brass primers. We just saw that. Very shiny. Uh, based on Mr. Kenny's testimony, you know that they were 3840, that there was also some 4440 caliber rounds um, in that box. That's that so. Not working? That's so distracting. Well, oh, let's stop. There, the defense's oh, monitor was not okay. working. That was considerate of her, but that's it would be distracting to have somebody walking around the courtroom um, while you're giving your closing, for sure. Let's take a moment to talk about all this testimony that you've heard about whether or not the live rounds found at PDQ, which are photographed there on the left. I'm so glad she slowed down the for the live this. rounds found on the set of Rust. You this was the most confusing ass testimony scattered throughout this trial. I am so glad she has taken a breath. She has slowed down and is like, this is what we're doing. This will be very helpful. If the jury's convinced, the difference between the live rounds on the set 
and the live rounds at PDQ. You don't have to be a gun expert to look at those and see they simply do not match, even though you could look at those rounds and fundamentally understand that they are not the same. The police department, sorry, the sheriff's department and the FBI sent them to the FBI for testing so that we could actually have some experts confirm what we can see with our very own eyes. The defense needs to hammer how what long Seth Kinney had evidence. before PDQ was searched. If you want to see them in in real time. In real life. You IRL. have States Exhibit 79. You have States Exhibit 91. States Exhibit 79 is a disassembled live round from PDQ props. States Exhibit 79 is a disassembled live round from the set of rust. Watch them in look real at time. Them. You can see the projectiles are different. IRL. You can see that uh, it, perhaps the primers are even are, are even different. If you recall, uh, Ms. Popple indicated there were only 10 silver primered live rounds found at PDQ. The rest of them were brass. The other thing that you can just see with your eyes is the gunpowder in these is substantially different. Shoot, it has a different chemical composition. So any argument that could ever be made in this case, that Seth Kinney it's a very definitive statement. was the source of these live rounds, ma'am, is absolutely dishonest. Those are, that, those are some big words, counsel. I wonder if the state's argument is, hey, Seth Kenny had 10 live rounds with silver primers. If he was going to get rid of them, he would have gotten rid of all of them. But she's arguing that any argument that the live rounds on set came from Seth Kenny is dishonest. Wow. Now, I'm going to ask you to take a, take a walk in the weeds with me here, okay? No, let's not. This is a photograph of October 10th of 2021. You can see the color of the rounds at the top. That's good evidence. Those are brass primered rounds. The rounds in the bottom appear to be lighter. And I would suggest to you, based on the totality of the evidence that we're going to go through, that you are looking at live rounds. She's arguing that the Seth Kinney rounds with the silver primer got onto set October 12th, and this photo's from October 10th, and this photo has that foam core in it, and that is the box she was pulling from, and they are arguing that these are silver primered live rounds that Hannah brought onto set. That's her and argument. And keep in mind, anything that you see on the set of this movie that is a revolver ammunition, that is revolver ammunition prior to October 12th, Came from if Hannah. it has a silver primer, it's a live round because the silver primered dummies didn't come on set for two days after this photograph was taken. They think that is their proverbial smoking Here's gun. our comparison photo that Mr. Primo put together for us. And I'm if you answer need questions it, when you're when reviewing the evidence and doing your deliberations or engaging in your deliberations, I have included it. Ma'am, not everyone on the jury is gonna look at that and see silver. For you, um, but we're gonna do a comparison here in a moment. The set did not have any silver primer dummies until October 12th. Now, the importance of this photograph, 12th. still October 10th of 2021, there, are, there appears to be revolver ammunition in the background there at the top. Two of those have silver primers. The problem with that is the silver primer dummies weren't there yet. But the live rounds were. Remember, this is argument. The state is allowed to argue what they and believe this evidence up. shows. It's absolutely undeniable. Is it blurry? Yes. Can you clearly see the difference? Absolutely. All of these photos that you're looking Chat, at. You can be the finder of fact on that. Now, 
let's move to October 13th of 2021. I invite you to look at that photograph carefully and ask yourselves, One of these which of these is not, is like, not the other. like the others? Gee, Carrie. <laughs> it's the third one from the left. One of them's girthy. Look at the shape of that projectile and look at the color of the brass. So on October 13th, Mr. Kenny's dummies have arrived on set. They are the only dummy rounds with silver primers, but they are patinaed in color. So they are dark. So when you look at this round, it appears to be a spot on match for the live rounds, but unfortunately we can't see the primer in this photo. So we can't tell if this is a brass primered dummy. That's the reason that we watched thousands of videos. I mean, they weren't thousands. looked at thousands Counsel. of pictures because then we moved to the production outfitter videos from October 13th, Those the videos same were day. And we're looking at that same gun holster that was provided to Mr. Baldwin. And there you see it. The third one down has a silver primer. There you and see it, ladies and gentlemen. It is a live round. Does that stand out to you or not? You know that because it's not a Seth Kinney dummy. If it were, it wouldn't have that shiny brass color. So there. The Seth Kinney patina dummies with the brass primer is very helpful as she's going back and forth between the shiny brass and the patina brass. And that has not been tied together well in this trial until now. Here's your live round. We've seen it on October 10th. We've seen it on October 13th. And there's absolutely no way that the lighting is playing tricks on our eyes when we're looking at these enhanced photos because you see it frame after frame after frame. It does stand out in some of those photos. And now let's move to October 15th. Karen Kuhn arrives on set. I think she was probably there long before the 15th. She is taking photos. She took approximately, as she testified, 9,000 photos. Photographer. So on the 15th, there it is. There's your silver primer. It's just been moved to a different location in the holster because they're pulling dummy rounds from here, there, and everywhere and putting them in belts and putting them in guns and do, you know doing whatever they want to do. Well, but there it is. It's right there on October 15th. And if you think I'm stretching it. Ma'am, are you reading the chat? Let's have a look at what we've got here. Carrie, are you, does she have the chat on her laptop? What is happening? This is the gun belt that was assigned to actor Jensen Ackles because his gun belt was not a shoulder holster. We weren't able to find any photos or videos of it in the thousands and thousands and thousands that we reviewed because they're always covered by his coat. Excuse me, ma'am. We did not get close-ups of Jensen Eccles. I object to this closing. Bring the photos. Just there saying. is the evidence photo of the Baldwin holster on October 21st when it is taken into evidence. You have a Seth Kinney dummy at the top. You have what the FBI determined to be a live round in the second spot. And then you've got three brass primered dummies. October 17th, October 21st. So the video that Mamie Mitchell laid the foundation for, she said, she said that according to her notes, the filming was done on the 17th. 
Mr. Primo said that he believed, according to the camera, it was the 18th. Take whatever date, whatever date you want. Potato, potato. That's a match. Seth Kinney dummy at the top, live round next. You've got three brass primer dummies on the 21st, four brass primer dummies that's very helpful. On the 17th or 18th. But it is shockingly the same. And there is no question that this one right here is a live round. It was sent to the FBI and they confirmed it. Read the transcript. This is Ms. Gutierrez talking about um, her bringing these dummy rounds on set. I had a multitude of the ones with holes and the ones that you shake. So yeah, and I checked those all and I put them into two things. And then we start talking about boxes. Obviously when she says things, she's talking about boxes. They usually had JS on them. This is one my dad sent me and mine are usually beat up pretty bad. Like they're very dirty and gross. She's talking about the box and the styrofoam insert. The box and the styrofoam insert she's saying are dirty. Hers, the ones that she brings on set are dirty. They're not new and clean like some of the other ones. Detective Hancock asks her, this is the one that was or handed that you guys had said that you had pulled from. This is that moment in that interview where Ms. Gutierrez has already shown Hancock the photo from her dad and an hour or two later, Detective Hancock decides that now is the time to show her the photo of the box of dummies she was pulling from that day. Yeah, Hancock and waited. It won't surprise you to learn they're a spot on match. Hancock waited to spring that on her. You have. Not surprisingly. It was a good interview technique. The styrofoam insert from that box of dummies here in evidence. And the reason that we gave it to you so that you can actually look at it in real time and not look at a in photograph real life. is because it's dirty. It's kind of dirty and gross. It kind of fits exactly the way that she described it. But there is some care. I'm just going to say for me, kind of is not beyond a reasonable doubt, Carrie. I'm just, it kind of fits. No, it's your argument. Argue that it fits. It is your job to argue. Ladies and gentlemen, this is dirty and gross, just like she described it. Characteristics of this styrofoam insert that are going to become more important. Will the jury have the full transcripts of the video only if they ask for it, but they have the full Any videos. Any suggestion by the defense that somehow the box of Save it for dummy your rounds that Ms. Gutierrez said she was pulling from was swapped out with something different uh, is absolute nonsense. First of all, you know that because you can see the live rounds. If you don't think you can see them on the 10th and you don't think you can see them on the 13th and you don't think you can see them on the 15th, you know you're looking at one on the 17th and 18th. You know you are. So where's where does the sabotage theory go then? The 17th and 18th, the camera crew hadn't quit yet. Mr. Norvell wasn't on set poking around on the uh, on the prop cart. Mr. Halls hadn't had an opportunity to to spend any time with the gun. They move directly from that cart right into Lieutenant Benavides's patrol unit. They go from that patrol unit right into evidence at the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Department. And on November 9th of 2021, Hannah Gutierrez shows Detective Hancock, now Corporal Hancock, the box of dummies that she and her dad have and if you listen to Mr. Kenny's testimony, what you understand 
is that the ammunition from the previous set, that being the old way, Hannah brought leftover dummies from that movie onto the set of Rust, and those 45 long Colt dummy rounds were provided by Thel Reed. What you are looking at in this photo e and small and is this styrofoam insert. This is the styrofoam insert that had the live round in it. This is the styrofoam insert that came out of the box labeled 45 long Colt dummies with the JS in the middle. That Hannah told you she was pulling from. Now. In her interview. Let's put it together. Okay. Our original evidence photo up here from October 10th, you can see this distinct uh, sort of cut Notch. in the styrofoam on that insert that is sitting on her leg on the 10th. You can see very good use of circles to put together the photo that's been enhanced and it is a little blurry to the photo that was taken in evidence to what is in court. I like the way she's walking through this. See that the like it a lot hole in the styrofoam in the second to the right at the top is dirty. You can see a little bit of grime. You can see it right there. And you're going to take it into evidence and you can look at it Ruby, closer. Ruby, there were multiple live rounds. You're going to see that there's some damage to the there styrofoam were. separators. That was proven. Between these two holes. And what do you know? It's right there. The circles are very helpful. Real good demonstrative. There's a little bit of damage to the styrofoam separators down here. You can see it in the photo on the right. You can look for yourself. It is right here. And what do you know? That silver primered round from October 10th is sitting in the exact same position that it was found on October 21st when the Sheriff's Department collected this box, took it into evidence and photographed it. That is a really good demonstrative. Ladies and gentlemen, we call that circumstantial evidence, but that's a mountain of circumstantial evidence. Wow, we finally have a mountain of evidence. In one of the trials we've watched, the circles are very helpful to orient the jury to the way that the blown up photo is facing versus the way that the evidence photo is. And circling that silver primer is very helpful. The argument here is the silver primer live round was in the styrofoam tray on her lap on October 10th before Seth Kinney ever brought the silver primer dummies onto set. So that is not a silver primer dummy. That is a silver primer round that Hannah brought onto set. That is the argument. Prop assistant duties versus armor duties on October 21st of 2021. Let's focus on that day. And listen, I'm not here to tell you that Rust Productions did the right thing when they hired on a part-time armorer yes. and asked her to also spend her time doing props. No, production sucks. I think everybody who has testified has said that was a really bad idea. And that's probably part of the reason that they're being sued by a whole bunch of different people. And probably why Hannah shouldn't take the job and why no other armor wanted to take the job. But on October 21st, but she took the job. This was simply not the case. It was not the case on that day. She had three hours in the morning waiting for the camera crew to arrive. She had every opportunity to go through that box of dummies. Gee, that only had like, 30 rounds in it. How long did I like how she is arguing the camera crew walk off to her advantage? Does it take to pull the round out of the box, shake it? And if it doesn't shake, look to see if it has a hole in it, put it back in the box and do that to each and every one of them. How long does that exercise take? 10 minutes max? That's not hard. 
The other thing that is very important is Ms. Gutierrez didn't get pulled out of the church because she had to go focus on prop duties. She was standing right there. She left the gun in the church, contrary to all the industry standards uh, for armors on movie sets, for firearm safety on movie sets. And she went back out to her cart so that she could start doing other armor duties. Probably because she's Baldwin getting her was fanny pack filled up. Well, we've seen that. She's filling it with blanks. And we know they're. She was just pouring it in. About to do a turnaround. They're going to do this this uh quick this quick insert with baldwin and then they're going to do the shoot scene the, the the gunfire scene where they're using blanks and the law enforcement have come into the church and there's a shootout so she goes to get ready for it she just leaves the gun in there as you heard from many witnesses she would leave guns unattended all the time the fact that hannah has not rolled her unusual eyes at the prosecutor about October 21st is that caused her to be unable a good amount to of stay restraint. in the church to properly perform her duties. She leaves the gun. She goes back out because for some reason, with the three hours of, uh, of free time that she had in the morning, she didn't get her fanny pack filled up. She didn't get herself ready for that turnaround. So she leaves the gun. Everybody's heard armors don't leave the gun. It is not easy to sit in court while people talk about you like this, I would imagine. Now, and she Let's has to. Let's move over to our tampering with evidence charge. She has to bear it well, or the jury will not. How is the jury will hold getting it rid of her. a bag of cocaine tampering with evidence related to involuntary manslaughter? Yes, ma'am. We've got that question. We sure well, do, Carrie. On October twenty first, twenty twenty one. She's identified our issue properly. Let's let's see how we get to it. And the shooting occurs. The incident occurs. Gross um, negligence is Ms. not Gutierrez the standard here. Understands it is not gross negligence. That someone has been seriously injured. It's she does not yet know that that person is not going to live or has already died. She gets interviewed at the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office. I will say, surprisingly, two occasions. After this incident, she was very candid. Where a helicopter had to come in, ambulances had to come in. Um, Ms. Gutierrez, on two occasions after that incident, spoke about her concerns about her career. Wow. I mean, that gives you an idea that you are dealing with someone who is not particularly concerned about the health and safety of others. And her job okay, was to be concerned about the health and safety of others. But on that day, she's just thinking about herself. She's put a lady in the hospital, a man in the hospital. She asks to be escorted to the bathroom. Because she's Corporal afraid Hancock of her coworkers. Corporal agrees to do that. And we have her on video on the way there expressing dismay about how this will affect her career. True. Ouch. After the interview, Hannah goes back to her hotel. Rebecca Smith goes to Hannah's room. She's been summoned by some other folks to try to sort of sit and visit and give Hannah some support. So Rebecca Smith goes to her room and Rebecca Smith is the person that tells Hannah that Helena Hutchins has now died. And you have to understand, in the mind of Hannah Gutierrez, this investigation went from this big to this big. Because the difference between shooting someone and them living and shooting someone and them dying is a really, really big difference. Yeah, ma'am, we get so that. So she is told by Rebecca Smith, investigation just got giant and very, very serious. So after receiving that information, she says she offloads my coke. this bag of cocaine to Rebecca Smith. Rebecca Smith is a lady that's lived a life. She's used cocaine before, many years previous, but she's used cocaine. She knows what it looks like. She knows how it's packaged. And because she's a former addict, she tosses it in a trash can. 
when Mr. Bowles gets up here and says, I can't prove to you that it's cocaine, remember that when people destroy evidence to avoid prosecution. That's kind of the point. <laughs> you don't have the evidence that they destroyed. The point kind of is that you got can't rid of prove it. it. The, the point so is that you can't I prove it. I don't have to prove to you by some scientific. Uh, 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 I don't love the way she said, I don't have to prove to you, ma'am, they're the jury. You do have to prove to them. Um, drug okay. test. I don't have to send that to the lab and get it tested. You get to decide. It's gone. That's the point to the charge. It is a good argument. I don't know if y'all buy it. That's okay. You don't have to. I think that charge is a reach too. But um, the jury can decide now, whether she was getting rid of cocaine. The argument that that's the entire point of destroying me, evidence digress is strong. Let me digress a little bit and, and run through a couple of things with you. Let's What's run them all down, this Terry? testimony about this inertia puller? Sure. And how does that play into everything? You whack it on a table. Well, we learned a lot. As you heard from Mr. Haig, an inertia puller is a device designed for one task. Opening it disassembles biscuits. disassembles live rounds. Not opening biscuits. That's what it does. Ew. Somehow I think the- Ma'am, please don't talk to the jury like they're children. Defense got confused about what our potential theory was that we had a theory that Ms. Gutierrez was turning dummy rounds into live rounds. That was never our theory because that would require quite a bit of equipment. There's no question. But to do the reverse is a whole lot easier. So if you're out of dummy rounds or you're running low on dummy rounds and you've got some live rounds around, you could probably turn a dummy round, I'm sorry, you could turn a live round into a dummy round in five minutes. Because they didn't have enough dummies on set. Why does an armor on a movie set bill for an inertia puller? Well, obviously she had one. Now, let's talk about the OSHA investigation. Let's. OSHA doesn't find any wrongdoing with individual employees. That's not their job. Only employers. That's yeah. their job. They're just an agency that maintains workplace safety. Mr. Genoway confirmed when he was on the witness stand, it's true his memory was a little bad and Mr. Lewis had to refresh it for him, but he confirmed that Hannah's conduct on the set contributed to their findings that this was not a safe workplace. I don't think anyone disagrees. Please keep in mind that the OSHA investigation is not a criminal investigation. Critically and surprisingly, OSHA never interviewed Gabrielle Pickle. This is critically important because if, if they had interviewed her, they would have known the following things. Anna was granted 10 armor days out of the 12 filming days, not eight. That was right there in the cell phone records. The training days when Ms. Gutierrez is, is sending those messages saying, I want more training time, training days. She's not saying these actors, these adults need more training time. She specifically requested additional training time to train the child. And it was refused. Who was grabbing weapons on set, by the by? Fused. She wasn't because, wrong. Because, first of all, it's a major liability issue. He was holding weapons and on set anyway. second of all, the child was never going to fire a gun. He still had them. So when she asked for the additional training days, they were denied. That's not the reason Helena Hutchins is dead. Well, that's probably true. It wasn't an Keep unreasonable in mind, ask. Gabrielle though. Pickle uh, had a meeting with Hannah and offered her additional assistance so that she would be able to perform her duties effectively. She offered assistance uh, from some of the other folks there on set to try to give her some relief. And keep in mind that on a movie set, the armorer has autonomy 
with regard to gun safety. The, the, the OSHA finding that Look at the Rust jury. Productions failed to properly supervise her is surprisingly incorrect because the armorer has no supervisor when it comes to weapons and gun safety on the movie set. Mr. Halls is just there to be a second pair of eyes. I mean, that's it. Let's not downplay how how Mr. Halls failed. Now, why don't you rely I, on your expert armorer who was fucking great for that testimony? Not Dave Halls. Expert. I think there can be no question that Rust Productions was more than negligent when they hired Ms. Gutierrez. Bing. Because she was not anywhere close to being qualified for this also job. Also Bing. Bing. In fact, if you recall, Gabrielle Pickle, to her credit, tried to get Ms. Gutierrez to implement a check-in and check-out system because two people had complained that there was a shotgun left unattended. People on the set were complaining about her. They went to production and said, hey, they were concerned. She's not supposed to do that. You can't just leave real guns laying around. So Gabrielle Pickle goes to Hannah Gutierrez, asks for a check-in, check-out system. Hannah Gutierrez says no. Hannah Gutierrez says it's too difficult, it's too much trouble. She says, I've got this. Gabrielle Pickle didn't prevent her from being safe. Well, they also complained about In that instance, about she Dave did the Halls. opposite. She tried to improve firearm safety on the set, but keep in mind, the armor has autonomy. So Gabrielle Pickle is not Hannah Gutierrez's boss when it comes to firearm safety. Ms. Gutierrez gets to do what she wants. Now I can only imagine that after this chain of cases, all of that will change. I hope so. I hope after all the civil lawsuits, something so, changes. The defense has taken a shotgun approach to this case. Ma'am, really? Seth Kinney is to blame. Well, no evidence of that. Sarah Zachary is to blame. No evidence of that. Dave Halls is to blame. He shouldn't have taken the gun from her. Um, and he didn't do a good safety check. Well, well he's already she pled guilty. is the autonomous decision maker with regard to gun safety. It's not that Dave Halls shouldn't have taken the gun from her. It's partly it's that. It's that she shouldn't have given him the gun. It's that too. And then turned around and walked away. Uh, the defense. Alec Baldwin is to blame he did for acting like a prima donna on the movie set and bossing people around. This is Hollywood, for heaven's sakes. I would imagine that's relatively common. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that his conduct was right. I am the person who indicted him. <laughs> Alec Baldwin's <laughs> conduct and his lack of guns. I'm waiting for her to be like, I'm pretty sure Alec Baldwin's an asshole, but he's not the one on trial today. Come back in a couple of months. We'll see if we get there. Safety inside that church on that day is something that he's going to have to answer for. To me. Not with you and not today. That'll be with another jury on another day. July. Brian Norvell the gentleman who goes and gets the prop cart and wheels it over and then puts his hand over the crime scene tape and picks up that dummy round and shakes it. You heard Mr. Bowles ask some questions that, 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 that are intended to make people think that uh, Mr. Norvell either took something off the prop cart or, or put something on. planted something on the prop cart. Well, keep in mind, <clears throat> he doesn't have to plant live rounds because we've seen from the photographic evidence, those are there, they're floating around already. Um, so live rounds were on set. They were not planted by, by Brian Norvell, but this man is not a mystery to the state or the defense. They interviewed him. I made him come in and sit down for a one and a half hour Ooh. interview. I was just trying to move the, so that the defense could ask him. I was just trying to move the closed captioning because the 
uh, lawyer or legal assistant at defense table has been making all of the faces, and I didn't want the uh, closed captioning to cover the expressions on on her. Any questions they wanted, and they asked him none. Not a single question. So what that means is that this is just all smoke and mirrors and deflection. They don't want the truth. We know the truth. You have seen it throughout this trial. And I will remind you that during one of the heated objection exchanges between myself and Mr. Bowles, you heard Mr. Bowles cry out that he was looking for the truth. <laughs> Listen, I can bring a horse to water, but I cannot make him drink. Ma'am. If you want the truth, I'll bring the guy in. I'll make him available for you to talk to. Ask him some questions. Not a single one. The fact that she was able to do that without saying you can't handle the truth, Mr. It Bowles. It must have been that dis is Is showing incredible self-restraint. Disgruntled camera crew. You mean the people who believed that safety on set was being compromised to such a degree that they left? That decision may very well have saved their lives. Hannah has done an incredible so, job of uh, remaining the neutral $60,000 question in, in this face. case. Who brought the live rounds on set? She does look a little scared. You know the answer to that. I know the answer to that. I'm not telling you that Hannah Gutierrez intended to bring live rounds on set. But she negligently did I'm telling you that she it. was negligent. Yeah. She was careless. She was thoughtless. She was reckless. She brought them on set. And you know from the testimony you heard, Sarah Zachary never saw her shake a dummy round. Dave Halls never saw her shake a dummy round. She didn't shake those dummy rounds. For all we know, those dummy rounds were floating around the set of the old way. And Nicolas Cage is lucky to have walked away with his life. It's closing. Nicolas Cage would like to be excluded from this closing argument. So why does it matter that she brought live rounds on set? Because it's reckless and negligent. It goes to foreseeability. She had six, six live rounds on that movie set. The earliest date that I can track them for you is October 10th. We know that they were there from the 10th to the 21st. Six. And she failed to ferret them out for 12 days. Because she wasn't checking them. What that means is that she wasn't shaking any dummy rounds. She wasn't testing anything. None of that stuff that her lawyers want you to think was so difficult. It was no, none of it was happening. Closing argument is it the show. It didn't happen the entire time. It's the whole show. She didn't find any of them. It's the best part of the show. Closing argument is the moment. And... I don't know any lawyer that doesn't that does litigation that doesn't love closing. Closing is the and moment. folks, if she's not checking the dummy ammunition the during part. the pendency of the filming to make sure that those rounds that are designed to look like live rounds are in fact dummy rounds, this was a game of Russian roulette. Every time an actor had a gun with dummies. The chat has been saying that for 10 days. Sadly for Ms. Hutchins, her camera crew walked off set that morning and that required her to go into the church and operate the camera herself. And sadly, and that's Alec what Baldwin she was doing when the live round the that, that Ms. Gun. Gutierrez put in Mr. Baldwin's gun was expelled from that firearm and went all the way through her body. I mean, she could have no one told Ms. Gutierrez paused. to leave the church. No one called her out of the church. There wasn't a COVID protocol in place that prevented her from being in the church at that moment. You know from the production outfitter videos, she didn't care about her job. She let it all go. 
She cared about her job Mr. afterwards. Mr. Bowles is going to argue to you that if, if Mr. Halls had just called Ms. Gutierrez back into the church, she would have done an additional safety check and that live round would have been found, well, for heaven's sakes. We all know she that if she had been to. called back into the church for an additional safety check, nothing would have changed. Her safety checks didn't consist of pulling the dummy rounds out of the cylinder, shaking them in front of the actor and the assistant director, showing them that they're dummy rounds and putting them back in. No one ever saw her do that one single time, even though that's industry standard. And the reason it's industry standard is because Shit you like can't this tell never a happen. dummy round by simply spinning a cylinder and looking at the primers, unless they are dummy rounds without primers. And that's kind of an interesting fact. We know that six dummy rounds without primers were not loaded into that weapon because one of them turned out to be live and very clearly had a primer. Interestingly though, she had five dummy rounds without primers in her pocket in her pocket we saw it at the police all station. she had to do was put those in the gun make sure that the sixth one either rattles or has a hole in it and she's good to go because now and no when you dies. look when the cylinder gets spun you can see five of them without taking them out that they don't have primers they were in her pocket and she didn't use them Um, I am going to have another opportunity to speak with you. And when I speak with you, uh, last, it won't be as long, I promise. Um, It'll probably be more fiery. We'll talk about some of our jury instructions then, but I do want to address some of the testimony from the, from Dr. Gerald from OMI, uh, because Mr. Bowles is likely to make an argument that there was some sort of medical negligence. Uh, that contributed yep. to Ms. H to, to Ms. Hutchins' death. She knows he is. And I want to talk to you a little bit about Is Dr. That, Gerald's testimony. They argued that at sidebar. Here are the lethal injuries. The lethal injuries. Blood loss from from the wound. That was the primary lethal in injury. Her blood was leaking into her in, into her abdominal cavity and a lot of it. And you saw those photographs, you saw the photographs of her clothing. There was a lot of blood. So the first lethal injury that comes from the gunshot it is blood loss associated with it. And the second one, if you recall from Dr. Gerald, uh, the, the wound to the, to the lung was also a lethal wound. Keep in mind, that bullet went into her body, it went through her rib, it severed her spinal cord. I figured she was going to bring that up. It punctured her lung. It broke ribs. Did we bring it up broken ribs? It came out the back ribs? of her it shoulder. Broke ribs. It's how big of a slug a few it was hours how later, close she was. Ms. Awful. Gutierrez is telling Corporal Hancock that she's worried about her career. If you think that person, I'm going to pause real quick because the chat, uh, Marta asked a great question. Why is this important? Because Hannah has to be in the chain causing death and the defense is going to argue the medical intervention is what led to her death, not Hannah loading the gun. So that's why she's covering it now. Did she mention the ribs? Good. I was trying to open my recall. Would have done a satisfactory safety check if she had been called back to the church. I am here to tell you that I strongly disagree. I didn't know she was going to take a pause. I could have just said it then. Chat, I'm going to put up a poll after this. I don't poll guilt or innocence. I'm going to poll if you found the closing convincing the when she stops. Astonishing. I'll do the same for the defense. Lack of diligence with regard to gun safety is without question a significant cause of the death of Helena Hutchins. 
that's did what the jury Mr. Baldwin says. also contribute when he pointed the gun? Yes at people and pulled the hammer back and regardless of what he said to George Stephanopoulos pulled the trigger. Yes. Yes, he is. And again, we'll deal with that another time. I love that. She's just like, ladies and gentlemen, don't worry. I'm going I'm to get him later. Worry about her. I'll take care of him later. <laughs> of course, Baldwin entered the closing argument multiple times. You don't escape accountability when you load a live round into a prop gun, tell the crew that it has dummy rounds in it, hand it off to an actor and leave the room because he manipulated it. That's the whole point. That was the whole point to him having it. Of course, he was going to manipulate it. It's foreseeable. Everything is so completely foreseeable. Use her, wait, you, I'm sorry, I keep pausing. Use her statement from her interview now, please, just insert here, where she says things, safety things can always go wrong on set and I'm supposed to stop it. She knew it was foreseeable. She says it in her interview. Imagine I hand you a gun and I tell you that it's basically empty and I walk away when in fact, Use the interview. I put live ammunition in it. You think an accident might happen? You think that accident is foreseeable? And listen, let's remember some of the testimony from Mr. Carpenter. Control is how we enforce gun safety. We do it with control. When she loses control, which she did repeatedly, anything goes. Anything goes there. I am going to complete the majority of Don't tell us what you're going to do. Give us some more quotes the from Hannah. of my closing arguments. Quotes from Hannah. Quotes with from regard to the facts, the next portion will be with regard to the law. Quotes. When I come back after Mr. Bowles has had an opportunity to address you. Quotes from Hannah. Uh, we will be asking for justice today for Helena Hutchins. Thank you. Uh, may we approach? Well, it's about a bathroom break. We're going to take a bathroom break. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> please don't talk among yourselves or anyone else about the evidence. I'm putting up a poll for you. Thank you. A reminder for we'll the back at, um, 10 of. Okay. A reminder for the new law nerds in the chat. I do not poll as to guilt or innocence. That's the jury's job, and the jury can't consider that yet. We're not there yet. But I will ask you if you found this closing argument by this special prosecutor to be persuasive. Yes, no, or I want to hear from the defense. That poll's going up now for the 24,000 of you that are here in chat. Um, Hannah did a very good job of controlling her face during this closing, and it's not easy to do. We've seen a lot of criminal defendants not do it well. Um, yeah, Carrie might save the quotes for the rebuttal. Um, she may well. I'm going to get to some of the, once they leave, I'm going to zoom, zoom this, and I'm going to get to some of your questions, and we're going to catch up to real time because the court is taking a bathroom break. I'm gonna ask you all to take a minute and stretch. We've been in court a long time this morning. So take your stretch break, get some water. I'm gonna answer a few questions. We're gonna zoom, zoom. Um, wow, we're gonna zoom, zoom soon. Where's my, where's my mouse? I need to answer questions. All right. The Chugi Show Live said, what is taking so long? If they do call anyone, closing arguments won't be till this afternoon. I think they were arguing jury instructions and then getting getting the, the jury instructions back. Sarah said, I Googled the meaning of wanton on the work computer. Um, Sarah, there's multiple meanings and you're going to end up with the spicy meaning. <laughs> you're going to end up with the Sarah J. Mass meaning, not the legal meaning. Be careful. Danger. Danger. Wrong, wrong, wrong meaning of that word. All right, we're going to catch up to court on real time. They are not back yet. I'm going to leave it up. I'm going to leave it up so that nobody gets nervous and that, that we don't have 30,000 people telling me court's back. I will remind you all, A, do the youtube -y things, like, subscribe, that stuff. Um, if we gift memberships, which I probably will at the end of closing, 
we uh, you cannot get a membership to the channel unless you are subscribed you can't chat if you're not subscribed if you like legal commentary with the cursey words for live trials and pop culture things the law nerd app will keep you in the loop and it gives you control over how you set notifications it is free ios android we built it for you we fucking love it the members that have it fucking love it that app is our is our favorite so go ahead lawnerdapp.com now is the time for you to go download the app while we're all on a break let me answer some of your questions um why would anybody be here and not subscribe jody they're not sure yet and sometimes people just start watching because we're like number three or four or whatever on live trending and then don't think to do the youtube things because they're just so captivated i understand this trial is captivating Hurtado102 asked, do victim impact statements affect sentencing? Generally, the judge already has an idea of what they're going to do going in, but I think they are impactful on both the defendant and the court. Can they shift the court's perception? Sure. But a lot of times the court has an idea of what they're going to do going in. Elizabeth and Mary Mo. Thank you for the gifted memberships. We always love the Lawner community growing. Um, Triceratops, that's the cutest screen name. EDB, send me good spinal fusion wishes for my husband's surgery tomorrow. I'm sending you good spinal fusion wishes. What I will say, from my experience only, because I've only got the one spine and the, the one spinal fusion, from my experience, when I woke up from my spinal fusion, though I still had surgical pain, the nerve pain was gone and it was, a huge relief to me so all of the good vibes recovery was long but it put me on the path to end up here i talk about that a little bit in my ted talk <laughs> anon anon said carrie's voice is like a bad grocery cart there are definitely times where i feel like i'm being scolded by a substitute teacher there are times where it can be a bit condescending there are times where she makes excellent points roy thank you for the gifted memberships Christine D said, Carrie has the energy we wanted HGR to have on set. Uh, yeah, boss bitch who's not going to take any shit. That is the vibe you need to have as the armorer. Like, I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here so you don't fuck around with the guns. Thanks. Uh, Lugbers, welcome to the Law Nerds. Eve, good to see you. Question, why are live rounds even needed on set? Did defense answer that? Live rounds weren't needed. Live rounds were on set because somebody was reckless af live rounds should have never been on set they got mixed in it's the state's theory they got mixed in from another set live rounds never should have been on this movie set it is negligent and reckless that they were on this movie set it should have never happened and when we heard from the state's armorer expert who was great the defense didn't bring an armorer expert what do you think that leaves the jury with ladies and gentlemen of the chat lawn or debate what does that leave the jury with what does it leave you with? The defense did not call an armorer. They called the LARPer, who I'm sure is a nice man and knows everything about Russian weapons used during like the First World War. I'm sure it's incredible, but he's not an armorer. And it leaves me with the perception that they could not find an armorer who would support their side because of what Hannah did being so reckless, that they could not find an expert willing to testify on her behalf because of her behavior. That's what it leaves me with. And the state's armorer expert was amazing. And the state's armorer expert told a story, and I remember the story well because I was walking out of the airport in Las Vegas, listening to it in the chat with y'all. He was on a movie set and he was doing inventory. Another armorer had gotten ill. He came onto the set shut down filming with guns go film whatever the fuck you want you're not filming with guns shut down filming with guns and inventoried the entire set and found live rounds and stopped the set and went back and inventoried again that's what he did that's what she should have done and she didn't she took on the responsibility for the job she took on the you know the buck stops with me roll in this job and did not do her job. However, was she able to do her job because of production? We'll see what the jury thinks. 
Let's get back to some questions. Uh, it's going to be nice being familiar with the prosecutor in the Baldwin trial. We aren't used to seeing the same attorney twice. Danielle, it's going to be real nice because I want to see if she switches strategy. I want to see if her behavior in court this trial is because she can just roll over Mr. Bowles. I want to see if it's a totally different Carrie Morrissey in trial with Baldwin's team or not. Aaron said, I'm only 75% on live from Hannah. One month is a long time. Um, I, I Sure. Cheetah Duck said, question new to the case is Hannah, a gun expert. Hannah's the armorer on set. She should be a gun expert. Or is she a staff employee, the movie producer who just brings in and out props? She's not props. She's the armorer. The armorer expert explained her job is responsibility for all guns on set. Vicky, thank you for the gift of membership. Why are live rounds even needed on set? They weren't. Lynn, gift of five memberships. Thank you. Legal commentary is nice. Court casting is better. We do a little bit of both. Sometimes we explain the law. Sometimes we just scream at attorneys. <laughs> Color commentary is my calling in life. Will Baldwin's trial be streamed? Oh, yes. And we will be here. Is my, is my travel in July canceled? Yes. Is my trial schedule uh, cleared for Baldwin's trial? Yes. If they move this trial into like the fall, I am going to curse a lot. Court's still not back, by the way, at all. Kenzie KG said, I've been listening while working. An HDR witness had me stunned. What was that? Good closing, awful tone of voice. Yeah, I feel like I'm being yelled at a lot by this prosecutor. Thank you for the awesome coverage. As always, Emily Love from Kentucky. Yeah, it's raining here uh, too in uh, Nashville. I tried not to have a angry tone with the jury, mostly. I occasionally was fiery, particularly in cases of either homicide or egregious injury, just to get the point across. Sometimes you need solemnity. Danielle said, my husband says the prosecutor sounds like Jan from The Office, and now I can't unhear it. Those comments have been rolling around the chat for 10 days. I agree. Good close, much better than her direct. Agreed. Closing's the best. For me, as a lawyer, closing time was my favorite. When I took a case, I started thinking of my closing argument in my head when I started reading the police reports. So I think, I think she came across condescending too. I think righteous indignation is warranted. So, you know, the defense is getting ready for their closing argument now. But I, um, I, there were definitely times I would be frustrated with uh, the defendant's behavior. EDB, my brother worked with Baldwin on a set and he acted the same way. Rushing and demanding take after take. Are we shocked? Isn't chat? I need you to remind me. This is how you remind me. Chat, I need you to remind me. Wasn't it Baldwin that refused to get off his phone on a plane because he was playing words with friends? Like, I remember him screaming at his daughter, like that audio that leaked of him calling his daughter a selfish little pig when she was like 11 will never leave my mind. But wasn't he also the the actor that would not turn off his phone to play words with friends and was like screaming at the fucking flight crew? Like like it's their job is to tell you to put your phone in airplane mode, sir. Chat's like, yes, 100%. Okay. And cursed at the flight attendant. I I'm my mom was a flight attendant. I'm particularly uh I'm particularly sensitive to the difficult job that they have and the ridiculous way people treat flight crews. It is, it is not okay. They are there to keep you safe first. On my last flight, you guys, they made an announcement twice, and I don't know what happened, but they made, made an announcement twice as a reminder to not touch the flight crew. And I was like, what is going on in this? What What is someone, is someone like grabbing the flight attendant or like, why are you touching the flight crew? I had no idea what happened. It surprised me that they were announcing that over the PA. Ryan's Hex RN, gift of five memberships. Thank you. Simona said the root cause of all of this is the need to have super real looking bullets. The prop guy complained about being able to tell they are dummies. Oh, Seth Kinney definitely complained about like, <laughs> you know what I think of Seth Kinney. My, my, my impersonation of Seth Kinney was sometimes I'm watching TV and I can like hear them rattle on screen. Ugh these dummy rounds. Okay. Keep your hands to yourself. It was, I was so surprised. I was like, what are you doing touching the flight crew? They, they're, uh, 
No touchy. Like, don't touch people unless you ask. Defense, everything that guy said is bullshit. Thank you. <laughs> I think her condensation will work in Alec Baldwin's trial. It is my selfish dream, wish, and hope, and I think it might happen, that Alec Baldwin testify in this trial and we see Baldwin versus Morrissey because Baldwin, as we have seen in his uh, interviews, will like to mansplain to you. He is the expertiest expert that ever experted in acting and acting with weapons. And he is very method, and he is going to tell you all why it is not his fault. And the cross examination will be will be magical, because Baldwin is going to want to explain to the prosecutor why she is wrong, and she will play into it and annoy the piss out of him until he is an asshole on the stand. And I want to see it happen. His lawyers will prep him for that and tell him it's a bad idea. But his lawyers probably told him the interview with George Stephanopoulos was a bad idea too. Fiona said, thank you for distra this distraction tonight. Lost my beautiful cat to a snake bite nine hours ago. I, Fiona, I am so sorry. The way I have been gutted in my life by the loss of a pet. Um, it's 3.45 a.m. here and he would normally be asleep next to me while I watch. I'm a blubbering mess. Me too. The loss of a pawnard is a very specific and unique pain and loss. And I am sorry for your loss. Lots of hugs from the chat. I would try to summon one of my cats, but they're sitting watching the bird feeder out a window. Will you be covering Marco Marco Erica Girardi case? Bridget, if you have not seen The Housewife and the Hustler Part 2 on Hulu, I cover the Marco Marco case in The Housewife and the Hustler Part 2 on Hulu. And I will be doing a podcast on it. We are deep back in the Bravo sphere for the podcast tomorrow, covering um, the Rachel... Raquel versus Ariana Maddox, Tom Sandoval revenge porn lawsuit. That's tomorrow. Ah, look, we might be coming back to court. Seems like production management didn't question her unsafe habits because she came with credentials she didn't actually have due to dad. She said in her police interview, my dad's the industry. I didn't take classes with anyone else because my dad's basically the industry. That's what she said. Oh, defense closing is going to start now, I guess. My idea said I keep having, it was her job, but I'm stuck on the obviousness. She didn't know the job. She didn't know her power, responsibilities, or expectations. She wasn't qualified. Yeah, please court. And that might be production's awesome. fault. Ladies we'll and gentlemen see. of the jury, I, I want to start also, as I did when this began. By thanking you. Let's turn you up because, Mr. Bowles, I can normally hear you. Sincerely, thank you for your time. And, and right now you're very soft-spoken, sir. Uh, and all of your work on this case it has been hard. It's been a, a long case, and I, I want to thank you first. On behalf of Miss Gutierrez Reed, who thank you, Annie. This is extremely important for her. Of course, it is. This, this case, and this is her day in court, and it's extremely important that the government rule out. Every is he going to try to tell them not to come to a verdict in like ten minutes? Because it feels like he's saying, "Please give her due consideration." Every reasonable doubt that there is in this case because that is our standard in this country. Reasonable doubt is a concept, meaning if you have any reasonable doubt, if you have a reasonable doubt, we cannot convict people in this country. I don't know why I can't That's how it's set well. up. Because of that, the burden is on the prosecution, always stays in the prosecution, and so they have to rule out all of the reasonable doubts. In this case, and I'm going to talk about a lot of the evidence soon, but I just want to start with a summary. The prosecutor just presented to you a series of pictures. I'm going to end the poll uh, on the prosecution's the closing. I'll ask the same about the defenses in a minute. Uh, and they went through the pictures and they tried to show that there were silver primers. And this is going to be definitive I don't evidence. I know if they tried. They did. These live rounds had to be on set at a particular time. I think this Let me tell you why there's off. reasonable doubt, number one, that they will never be able to rule out in this case. Sarah Zachary threw away rounds. She unquestionably threw away rounds from the other guns after the shooting. Wrong guns. It's undisputed. Counsel. We have no idea what those look like. We will. 
counsel those weren't from Baldwin's gun. If you're going to try to fool this jury, you're just going to piss them off. Never have an idea what they look like, and that will never be able to be overcome. That one fact alone prevents that entire picture set up that was just shown to you from being accurate, from being real. Does it? Because we have no idea what those other round, whether they had silver primers, whether they were dummies, whether they were other types of, of dummies, what they look like. We have no idea. Fact two on the pictures. Seth Kenny told you he had gotten live rounds from Bell Reed that went to the 1883 set. He did say that. Those live rounds were three types. There were three types of bullets. He then brought three back looks. around three looks, three looks. I got three looks of the three types. Now, the ones that it. the state seized, the prosecutors made a point of saying these don't match the live rounds. However, we don't know what he had because they waited a month to go get him. It was over a month when they searched. Counsel, I'm going to need you to be more outraged about the fact that Seth Kinney, who provided everything to set, had over a month, like six weeks, to do whatever after knowing a woman was dead. Six weeks law enforcement waited. And then he comes in here and testifies, no prosecution. I'm going to need you to be more upset about this, counsel. And when Mr. Kenny brought in the rounds, he had been talking to the investigator about what was going on in the investigation. So we're never going to have an idea as to what Seth Kenny had and what he provided. More passion, he also told you more energy. Trial, he had no inventory system. C correct. He had no idea what was coming in and going out of his place. The place was a wreck. Yeah. Like a train had hit it. Sorry, I'm trying to move the closed There's captioning no so you guys can see them to, easily without them blocked by to chat. To really understand what they're putting in, what they're going out. And so he also said there were things that went onto the rest set that he hadn't inventoried, hadn't invoiced. He said that there were things that put on there that he didn't have invoiced. So here's the problem with that. Chat is we bang. do not know that Seth Kenny only had those patinaed rounds. That's reasonable doubt. That's coming right from the government's witnesses, from Mr. Kenny. That part is unreconcilable. There is a reasonable doubt that we'll never leave this case on those two points, on the pictures Chat, and the live doubt rounds. On that? Now, Ms. Morrissey calls it dishonest. Chat, do you have doubt on that? Raise a question about Mr. Kenny. And I submit it's not dishonest at all because they have the burden to investigate every possibility, uh, every aspect, as anybody in Ms. Gutierrez Reed's place would deserve and would want, because their life is on the line oh, that was as well, on felony charges, Sorry, and it's the government's duty to rule out all these other things. Far from dishonest, what it is, I'm the problem. is it's thoroughness, on the audio. competence, finding what happened with Seth Kenny, taking his fingerprints, taking his DNA, going through and searching earlier, doing that investigation and finding out if indeed there is another possibility that they ruled out right away and they never wanted to look into because they rushed to judgment on Ms. Gutierrez Reed from the very beginning. They singled her out on that set. She was the armor. They put her in a cop car, whether she asked or whether they put her in. She was the armor. Uh, She's in the cop car and she never leaves custody until after her statement. She was in charge. They of singled her out and they shot. rushed to judge him on her. And that's what you've seen ever since. I rushed to judge Ms. Morrissey says and a camera crew and she mocks things that we raise as possibilities on the idea that none of it can be possible except Ms. Gutierrez Reed is guilty. That is the only thing that can be possible because I say it. It's not how it works. Ms. Morrissey said, she indicted Mr. Baldwin. I indicted Mr. Baldwin. Actually, I think it's the state of New Mexico. <laughs> That's not an individual person. With you want to just you want to just piss at the prosecutor? Piss at the prosecutor about something else. She also sat there when Miss Zachary was on the stand, and Miss Zachary, I'll remind you, got an immunity agreement. Yeah. Miss Zachary was promised she would never be prosecuted. And Ms. Morrissey stands up and says, 
there's no evidence against Ms. Zachary, well, then why would she give him an immunity agreement? Great question. Why would she need immunity? Why would she need one? If there's nothing against Ms. Zachary. Because otherwise her lawyer wouldn't let her talk. <laughs> she's given an immunity agreement. And then she's told on redirect examination. Seth Kinney didn't get Ms. immunity, Morrison, though. Did he? Remember, if you don't tell the truth, I can prosecute you. I will prosecute you. So Miss Zachary doesn't tell the version of the truth that the government believes is true. We saw the threat in live court. Oh, you can't trust some of the witness testimony in this case. Interesting. And that will raise a reasonable doubt as well. I submit because of things like that, because the lead investigator admits that she practiced her answers and questions with the prosecutor. <laughs> The side eye, the side eye from this prosecutor while the defense is closing. First of all, it's got to be freezing in this courtroom because everybody's always bundled up in jackets. But um, the digs at the prosecution are hilarious and Carrie's response to them also kind of hilarious. Something you can consider. Are you hearing everything? Or are you hearing a one-sided version that fits the narrative that Miss Gutierrez Reed has to be guilty because we picked her out first it's got to be her. She's Can't the be Mr. Kenny. Can't be the, anything else, any other possibility. Sarah Zachary has nothing to do with it. Even though we know unquestionably she threw away rounds after a uh, shooting. That's undoubtedly going to be evidence, but but there's nothing on her, different, apparently. Different guns, though. Second. Which makes that argument boxes, tough. Different guns. The idea that the boxes match. We heard testimony that these rounds were loaded in and out of these boxes daily. Nobody knows what was in them on the 13th, the 16th, the 21st, because the rounds were put in, they were taken out, and they were put in different boxes. So the boxes really are, don't matter. There's there's reasonable doubt all over the place to the boxes because we don't know what was in them. Can you tell me where? Three or four days before. Can you tell me where the doubt them. is? Not just all over the place. Um, the boxes are interesting because the government wants to match up the two. They sure do. And they want to show the pictures that match. Yet all the ones from PDQ props have the same label, same font. They're from Joe Swanson. They so were different labels. Those boxes sir. Are, are similar to the ones on set. Sir, don't argue so that, things that, that can prove you're wrong about. Is is not conclusive as well. The other part, when the government shows you video and video of video on only on the 13th and says Miss Gutierrez Reed was lax on safety. Well, again, you're seeing videos from short snippets of time on one day, on an entire movie set, and then you're not seeing what Miss Gutierrez Reed may have done right after the clip. You're not seeing what might have happened right after that. Okay. The other thing that strongly rebuts all of the safety points Miss Morrissey is pointing out about Miss Gutierrez Reed. The hard thing for me with that counsel, though, is she was she was holding a shotgun barrel under her own chin, though. What she does do on camera is not good. Now, they try to downplay OSHA, but OSHA is a separate, independent state and federal agency. Good that did argument. A full investigation into the responsibility for safety failures on this set. But your last and witness you can evaluate said it was her the credibility job. in your minds of, of Mr. Montoya, who took the stand and how you thought he testified. Loved Mr. Whether Montoya. Whether you thought he was thorough and how he answered questions. Yep. He, Did his job. he interviewed quite a few people and he reviewed a lot of information. Their conclusion after that was done was that production was responsible. He said the root cause was production adopted a safety plan and it ended at the word adoption because they didn't do anything after that. They didn't respond to complaints that there were safety concerns. They didn't allow for more training and take the time to do that. They did not respond to the negligent discharges and deal with that. Mr. Halls talked to one of the guys briefly and that was all that happened. So you got to set that they're not allowing a time for inventory for the armor. They're not allowing time for you them to clean their weapons more. or deal with their weapons. This is management. You just heard Mr. Pesh state that the first assistant director is the primary person for safety on that set. Dave Halls have been doing this 30 years. 
Yeah, give him the smoke. Somebody doing it 30 years has a responsibility and duty to step in when there's safety things going on. And he's on several of those videos. He has a responsibility to step in and say, hey, we're going to stop this. We're going to slow this down. Agreed. We are going to have meetings. We're going to have additional safety training, and we're going to address this. Ms. Gutierrez, Reed, come over here. We're going to do this, and we're going to talk to people. And Dave Halls didn't she do She also fuck all. can come in and talk about that. And on those videos, they're both on the videos. But OSHA found, because of the lack of support, because she's a part-time armor. OSHA only charges employers, though. Because she's not full-time, because she's not, there's not two of her. As Mr. Carpenter said, two is one and one is none. Well, here we didn't even have one. We had a half. So she's trying to run around and do various things. She's a half a, a, a job on a set with over 20 guns. And they want to lay the complete blame on her in this case, as opposed to OSHA, who investigated as a, an official agency. Mention the plea made deal. an official determination that this was Mention the plea deal. and management. Mention the plea deal. Yep. Mention That's it. That's important. And they gave him a That's plea deal. That's an important deal finding because for a misdemeanor. they said all of this was caused safety wise by management. And As Mr. Sousa told you, the buck stops with production. The buck stops with production. As in any organization, it starts at the top. You don't go and take one of the lowest people on the call sheet after something bad happens. I don't think happens, the armor is the lowest person on the, the call sheet. The whole management team is just thrown safety aside in favor of money, in favor Fair. of speed, in favor of profit. Give them the smoke. You throw all of that aside because at the end, you've got a convenient fall person. You got a convenient scapegoat. And she may not be the armor on some days. She's a props person, but she's certainly the she's armor. She's the armor of the day of the when shooting. Everything goes bad. She was the armor of the day you know of the why? shooting, sir. Because despite OSHA's uh, findings that they were responsible, production, the guys that you saw come in, the producers, the big guys, they want to sail off into the sunset. Sir, the producers that the prosecution brought in looked like they were 31-year-old VC bros who might also talk to you about crypto. I don't know if that's going to work. And Just saying. Go on about their business, finish the movie, make the money, because they've got the convenient fall person sitting right here. And all that has to happen is everybody has to gang up. Everybody has to get their story have straight. their talks after this happens yep. and blame Hannah. So it has to happen. That's what happened in this case. You had a production company on a shoestring budget, an A-list actor that was really running the show. He was directing people in those clips, telling the camera person where to go, telling the armor where to go. And then you had a situation where at the end, they had somebody they could all blame. It didn't work out with OSHA because OSHA didn't buy it. Well, OSHA doesn't OSHA blame said it was the higher job. ups. So here we are in a criminal court where the government tries to pin all of it on Ms. Gutierrez Reed. And it's just not the truth. It's absolutely right. We do want the truth. We want the truth and all the facts that were found by. And the truth is, and then flame production again, sir. The truth is. Baldwin pulled the trigger. Dave Halls didn't do his job. She was put in a cop car. They were running around on their phones. They didn't even search Seth Kinney for six months later. And they want to tell you that it's all on her. Bring it. OSHA to be considered. We wanted all of the facts that you don't have in this courtroom to be considered because that's the only fair way to do it. They can't consider facts that aren't in the courtroom, sir. I'm going to back you right up. That's objectionable. I object. They can't consider facts that aren't in this courtroom, sir. So here we are in a criminal court where the government tries to pin all of it on Ms. Gutierrez Reed. And it's just not the truth. It's absolutely right. We do want the truth. We want the truth and all the facts that were found by OSHA to be considered. <coughs> We wanted all of the facts that you don't have in this courtroom to be considered. Objection! Because that's the only fair way to do it, to resolve. He cannot ask this jury to consider facts outside this courtroom. Of all reasonable doubt, 
and to rule it out. Hey, let that go. If you don't have all the evidence, you can't rule out all of that reason. All the evidence is what they've heard in court. I want to talk about foreseeability, and I want to play this. Shocked no one objected. I'm glad somebody's playing me a video. I'm shocked she didn't object. I object. I'm so glad we're using cut motherfucker again. I, I am I'm real glad. I wish the audio was a little bit better, but what happens is Joel Souza yells cut Baldwin shoots a blank again. And then Joel Souza says, motherfucker. You probably remember that. Um, yeah, I do. That was the scene where Mr. Baldwin runs up the hill. I remember and <laughs> cut is yelled. And right after cut is yelled, he shoots. That's, I submit reasonable doubt, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Sir, this is a different day. How is this reasonable doubt for your client? Because Mr. Baldwin went off script. He chose to fire after cut was called. And you're going to see where he does later do the same thing in this tragic shooting. Mamie Mitchell told you on the stand, the script supervisor, that it was not in the script for Mr. Baldwin to point the weapon. But for Baldwin? It was not in the script for him to point the weapon. And we have to be very careful with facts when we're considering a, cr a criminal case and the beyond the reasonable doubt standard. That's extremely important because Ms. Gutierrez Reed, nor anybody else, knew that Mr. Baldwin in that moment was going to point the weapon right at Helena and Ms. Hutchins and Mr. Souza. Yeah, he shouldn't have done that at do all. do what he did. He shouldn't have done that at all. That is the concept of foreseeability. Now, Ms. Morrissey gave you an example of if I hand somebody a, a firearm and it's loaded. Counsel just undercut his own argument, and here's why, in my opinion. He is arguing that Baldwin going off script is not foreseeable after he showed a video of Baldwin doing exactly that after Cut is yelled, still going rogue and firing and getting called a motherfucker by Joel Souza, who I think was the most pleasant and affable witness in this entire trial. So he has just undercut himself in the middle of his own closing by saying it's not foreseeable that Baldwin will do whatever the fuck he wants to do after showing me a video of Baldwin doing whatever the fuck he wants to do. That doesn't help. And then they go and do something with it. Uh, That's foreseeable. Somebody. But here, what we had, we she did not know Mr. Baldwin was going to do what he did. Even though before no one, first he of was all, firing her back after into cut the was church, called. That he was using the gun at that time. She That's had given fair. it to Halls to sit in in the church. Mr. Halls then gave it to Mr. Baldwin, and that is the conclusion of the lead investigator. That was what Baldwin said, and that is what Ms. Kuteris Reed said. So Halls hands it to him. No one calls her back in to let her know Baldwin is doing that blocking scene. It's foreseeable Baldwin happening. will be wild. The medic said she did not hear anybody call that out they didn't. first team over the channel. So that's not getting put out. So Ross Baldwin's Adiago doing that too. An, another audible like he did on this video that you just saw. It's, He's going off script. So it's foreseeable. That defeats any idea that that was foreseeable. It proves that Ms. it's foreseeable. If she it's doesn't know what's happening, she can't foresee it. That's a big part of the, inst the instruction. The other part I want to talk about okay. foreseeability and where this matters is live rounds. Now, live rounds in this type of situation has not happened in Hollywood. In the hundred years of Hollywood, this has not happened in a situation like we saw in this case. No one on that set foresaw, knew, or thought 
that live rounds were going to be on that set. No one. You did not hear one witness in this case. Uh, even Miss Morrissey said there was no evidence that Hannah knew about live rounds coming on or this this was done. There's no evidence of that. They're arguing. Nobody she thought live them. rounds were going to be on set. Mr. Souza um, told the doctors he couldn't believe it. He argued with them because it was inconceivable that live rounds would appear. Because your, of that, your client's own statement to police. You, when you read the jury argument. instructions, there's a concept in the involuntary manslaughter of an element of willful disregard of the rights of another. Reckless is that also word, in there. Willful, and I'm going to go over it soon, means purposeful. That you willfully do, do something, you purposefully do something. What's impossible for the government to prove in this case? Yeah, I think he's misstating the jury instruction as well. Uh, we went over this at the beginning of stream while we were waiting for court. Um, about Ladies and gentlemen, we went over what these standards are at the beginning of stream today. If you want to go back through it, we went through the code. I think he's misstating the law on this. We'll see what he starts with and if he goes back into what he was doing or if he um, moves on. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk about willful more in a moment when we get there, but it cannot be willful speed him up a little. if Hannah does not know there's live rounds and nobody did. So she did not do something willfully knowing that but was she reckless? Baldwin could foreseeably hurt somebody with this firearm because she didn't know it was live. And let me give you an example. Um, it's akin to uh, a nurse, let's say in a hospital. Who, Interesting analogy. The pharmacy mislabels uh, a drug. And let's say it comes to her and, and somebody's ordered it be administered to a patient. Isn't it their job to she check? She then administers it, not knowing that it's a fatal drug of some other type. The pharmacy's mislabeled it. The patient passes. Sir, in this case, though, your client is the one labeling and checking and administering. Mm, it's not analogous. It's the same situation as we have here. No, where it's not. The government would be saying the nurse committed involuntary manslaughter. No, that's not true because she did not know what happened. It's like a long time ago um, when the Tylenol yeah, Hannah's the pharmacy and the nurse in that analogy. Cyanide, way back in the 80s or somewhere around there. The there was no prosecution of the pharmacies that didn't know about this. They were tainted by it. It's the same type of situation we have here with the nurse. Ms. Gutierrez Reed. The Chad, are these situations the same? You let me know. And to all our all our lovely nurses in the chat, he's not personally attacking you. He's representing his client. But yes, we're now to the Tylenol murders. But um, you guys let me know if these are analogous to you or not, because you are a 24,000 person jury. Not know there were live rounds, and she was entitled to rely on production buying dummies and the boxes labeled dummies. She brought She's her own boxes. On that. She and brought that her own boxes. Is reasonable. So she, she can't rely on what they buy. She's supposed to inventory and check. Oh my God. Okay. You cannot foresee a live round. Now, I want to talk next about they Ms. Were her boxes. statements. They were her boxes. They were her you boxes. saw her first statement. She didn't have a, an attorney. She did waive her rights and answer her question. She had not been advised at that time. Ms. Hutchins had passed. And she came in a second time and answered all questions. The reason why I say that is she was cooperative. She was trying to assist in what this investigation uh, what they were investigating. Now, Corporal she did assist in this investigation. I think she was the strongest witness against herself. Oh, Hancock. He's at 1.25 for a Corporal minute. Hancock never up. fully investigated the source of the live rounds. And she told you that she focused on people on the set. So again, in ruling out reasonable doubt and where those live rounds came from, we have not done that in this case because there was never a full investigation as to the source of the live Into rounds. Seth Let me give you an example. The state never called Joe Swanson. And it's kind of remarkable because Joe Swanson was the original source of where these came from. They were He's reloads. also the JS and all the boxes. Sir, they were hand loads. They were like obviously hand loads, though. JS would like to so be excluded from this The idea closing. that the person where it originated, you wouldn't call that person and get some more information is, is interesting. Is B A N A N A S? But more than that, it leaves a huge hole in the origin of the live rounds. Let me tell you what else it is. Tell me. Seth Kinney's fingerprints and DNA were never taken. His fingerprints are on file. Seth Kinney talked to Corporal Hancock 40 times or more. 
They supplied information back and forth. And he starts making you wonder about what's going on and why I'm, I'm called dishonest for raising the possibility that maybe Mr. Kenny was the source. That's a fair question. Because he's pretty tight with law enforcement in this case, obviously. <laughs> they don't do a prop search warrant until six days after the incident. Huh. And that was Corporal Hancock and the rest of the sheriffs. They don't search Mr. Kenny's business until over a month after. They never asked the FBI to check live rounds for fingerprints or DNA. And so we will not know if Mr. Kenny's fingerprint. The dirty pause face on the detective in the PowerPoint in the closing is so incredibly petty. I'm not mad at it. This is the defense closing, but it is, it is petty. Or anybody else's would have ever appeared on Bulls those live rounds on set. is a swoop fan and has gone to evidence. Petty University. Bryce Ziegler, I want to tell you a little bit, remind you a little bit about his testimony, and that's Mr. Ziegler. I do like the use of the court feeds to get pictures of the witnesses to remind the jury. I think it's a good use of the fact that there are court feeds here. Um, he talked about Baldwin's revolver being single, single action. You have to cock it, and then uh, every time you want to shoot it, he testified about breaking that firearm. They actually destroyed the firearm. He beat it uh, with a hammer. testing that was approved by the sheriff by hitting that with a hammer. He talked about that you can't determine a live round from a picture. And that's the other point I think is important to consider when considering the picture analysis. Now, the Latin print examiner, the uh, examined various things, but she did not examine anything of uh, Seth Kenny wise. There's no analysis on the cartridges from the prop cart and found eight FBI employee prints. Mr. Gillette on the the powder testing only tested 11 rounds from Seth Kenny. Again, we know that he brought back 125 <laughs> from the group that went to 1883. And I also want to remind you about 1883. Some of those were Starline brass rounds and some of those he said had silver primers. And Starline so brass doesn't serve. when we get to the set, the live rounds are Starline rounds. brass and they have silver primers. It's a continuous chain that could have been traced from Del Reed all the way to Seth Kenny all the way back to the set but they did not do that thorough investigation. And that's reasonable doubt they have not ruled out. The dummies, again, I submit, this is another area of reasonable doubt. <clears throat> Witnesses testified this set contained a dangerous mix of dummies. They were dangerous because it was impossible for the armor and prop master to hear and rattle. I wonder if when they said the set contained a dangerous mix of dummies, they were actually talking about production. I have no love lost for Dave Halls and the job he did or did not do on this set. I'm, I would just submit that to you, chat. All of the dummies, uh, especially under pressure, rushing noise on the set. You saw there was a lot of wind that day on the lapel. There's people running around. There's, I think at one point, somebody said 200 people. There's all kinds of things going on. Um, and despite that, Mr. Haig uh, indicated in a quiet office, he could not hear one of the dummies when it's rattled. That's dangerous because when you're trying to do it quickly, when there's a lot of noise, it may be a dummy. So um, it was too loud for her to hear, hear them rattle. rattle. Seth Kenny again mentioned in this case that he always rattle tested his routes and he made sure they're dummies. He told you all that. Well, the problem, the, even the box that they say was Seth Kenny's and the rounds that came out of it, there was one round. If you remember, that was gunked and it didn't shake. That round had to be sent to the FBI to be broken apart and to be checked to see if it was live. So if he truly is that thorough and shaking, he missed that round. And so did your client. Now the producers, you just left they had oversight of the budget there. team. They didn't know where the funds were set aside for the armor. The dirty they pause. They were on location for filming, the, and they were the dirty pause. Oh. <laughs> it's, I don't know who did these, but it is it is absolutely petty, and it's kind of funny. Find the statutory maximum by OSHA for managerial safety violations. Again, he walked back what he said in opening. Do you remember an opening when he said this OSHA fine was the largest in the state's history? And then yesterday when the witness was like, nah, that's not true. It's just the statutory maximum. They, uh, they walked that back and fixed it in closing, didn't they? OSHA found that the management team are the ones responsible. And yet we're here with Ms. Gutierrez Reed, the person on trial for the felony offenses. Sherilyn Schaefer was the medic on set. You recall she did not have a chest seals. Um, she, sir, I am trying to listen with an open mind. 
If you start coming for the medic because she didn't have hospital grade equipment on a set, you are going to lose me. And I am curious if anyone on that jury has a medical background. Don't, she's not the one that deserves the smoke. Go back to Dave Halls and Seth Kenny. Go back to production. Smoke them all day long. Leave this medic alone. I think was doing the best she could with the equipment that she had, but she didn't have the um, complete equipment to deal with a gunshot wound. Because she's not she a hospital. also indicated she never heard anyone call out use of the gun before the fatal shooting. Mamie Mitchell, I touched on this earlier. Most important thing Ms. Mitchell said was that it was not in the script for Baldwin to point the firearm. That goes directly to the element when you read the jury instructions and you all go back in to deliberate. Uh, that goes to foreseeability and whether or not anybody can foresee the moments Mr. Baldwin pointing the gun, using it as a, a pointer. He's up on the hill shooting after cut and then he's shooting, uh, pointing the Him up on the hill, waving it around, shooting after cut and getting called a motherfucker happened days before this happened, making it for, you're gonna get self-owned with that argument, making it foreseeable. Gun when he's not supposed to in scenes. Look, Alec David Baldwin's Halls, not doing what he should do. Um, David Halls was the first assistant director, uh, as you remember, and he was in charge of overall safety. Now, he got a misdemeanor, uh, six months unsupervised probation, uh -huh. even though he was in charge of overall set safety. Uh huh. He, he never did. raised any concerns. And in fact, I think he said Hannah did a great job as armor. He did. He indicated he did not hand the gun to Baldwin, but the sheriff contradicted this. So did Hannah and so did Mr. Baldwin. Uh, and that was essentially Mr. Hall's testimony. Sarah Zachary, no I remind smoke? you. No more smoke? She threw away rounds on set. No more smoke shooting, for Halls? Took items off the prop cart. She worked for Seth Kenny and she texted and called him right after the shooting. Not the emoji. Not the emoji. They talked about this emoji and whether this was a shut your mouth emoji or whether it was the oop emoji. This is clearly the OMGT emoji. The shut your mouth emoji is the one with the freaking zipper. I can't believe he put the emoji in the PowerPoint and I'm kind of living for it. For those of you that remember the testimony about this emoji, um, I'm sure you're also screaming. She, <laughs> one of her texts, she indicated she had said she was talking to Alec Baldwin and trying to keep her facts straight. She mentioned that she had loaded firearms she on did set. Say that. She picked up ammunition from Kenny at PDQ. I'll remind you in the testimony. I mean, at least use Canva to do the background remover so you don't have the white box around the emoji, maybe. Testimony that Sarah Zachary and Hannah Gutierrez Reed went Our to friends. Kenny's place before production started, and he had given them ammunition, leathers, and firearms. So, again, we don't know exactly what Mr. Kenny may have supplied to this set because it's not inventory, it's not all that invoiced. Fair. She still also reminds you about it. Sarah Zachary when you're considering her credibility and her testimony. She had the text where she wanted Hannah to go to jail. And she's given complete immunity. She did say she wanted Hannah to go to jail. Seth Kenny, again, I, I mentioned this. He supplied the leathers, guns, and ammo before arrest. I bet began. some of you in the he chat no want Hannah to go to jail. And I, we attached some pictures to the right. That There's a lot going on on this PowerPoint slide. I'm not mad at it. It is a whoever whoever spent the time to find that thumbnail face of Seth Kenny is doing their job and understood the assignment. Um, I'm here for the smoke for Seth Kinney. I've got questions. I've still got questions too. The prosecution doesn't, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sold. You can look at in the, the jury room about his place. It was an absolute mess. There was stored lime, live ammo in the bathroom. And one of the things I think was important to remind you of is he actually called Joe Swanson and had a conversation with him. And after he gets off the call, his first words are shit, shit, shit. And so that's something as an investigator, you would think after he does that, maybe I should call Joe Swanson and see what's happening. See what that means. That reasonable doubt has not been ruled out. I went over this um, on the 1883 set and he brought 125 uh, rounds back. They are shady YouTube thumbnail pause Mr. faces. Mr. Carpenter, I want to remind you, he was a state's expert armor. He was great. One of the most important points he said was two is one and one is nine. And here we didn't have uh, a properly staffed armor. He said a uh, lot of other things, sir. Component to the set. He also said he found live rounds on a movie set and shut the entire fucking set down because that is the job of the armor. He said that too. Luke Haig, he said the live rounds on set were reloads. Um, he could not hear the dummy rattle in the quiet office. And he said Mr. Bowman violated basic safety rules. Yes. 
Karen Kuhn, you may remember, was the photographer. She said the armor was checking guns before when she was present. And she also made a comment about Mr. Baldwin that on the day she was taking questions, I believe she said on the 21st, he told her to get out of his personal space and said something in a, a manner that kind of goes along with how he was on the set. Um, Mr. Souza was kind about it. He said he had a strong personality, but you can see it in the videos. You can see how Mr. Baldwin was acting. Rebecca Smith, I want to talk about the tampering. She said that, that she hadn't used cocaine in 31 years. She saw a baggie inside a baggie for approximately five seconds. She didn't know if it was cocaine or... I think he should hammer the reasonable doubt on this and hammer the state stretching and trying to uh, bull over Hannah to taint the rest of their case. Like, this is such a reach. Everything's a reach. I think he should focus on this and the state's reaching on this quite a bit. I hope he meth does. or something else. Well, she admitted at the end she was guessing. Wait, he's talking about meth again. God damn it, counsel. It could have been meth is not a good argument for you. It was still in your client's pocket, sir. Are you, how long have you worked as a criminal defense attorney? Because you've never gone to the jail and asked to see the physical evidence. She would have known if it was meth. Anyway. But you can see it in the videos and you can see how Mr. Baldwin was acting. Not the meth again. Rebecca Smith, I want to talk about the tampering. She said that, that she hadn't used cocaine in 31 years. She saw a baggie inside a baggie for approximately five seconds. She didn't know if it was cocaine or meth or something else. But she admitted at the end she was guessing. And we also know that the substance in the baggie was never tested. And so there, the only evidence you have of narcotics in this case is a guess. Now, Ms. Morrissey in her closing indicated that, well, of course we don't have the evidence. The whole thing is thrown in a way. Well, you have to prove first that it was evidence. So in a normal tampering case, when let's say a firearm's thrown away and we know a firearm was used and somebody throws a firearm away, we know that was a firearm. So we know that would be evidence in a case involving a shooting. Here, we have an unknown substance. Again, evidence they have of to rule what? out all of the reasonable doubt by that. It's not enough to say it's probably something under a criminal standard. It's probably cocaine in that. Get back to arguing what the fuck is it evidence of, counsel. That bag, because Ms. Smith says it is. If it even happened. You moved away from the point. We don't even know this happened. The government hasn't established that except through her testimony. We don't know if there was a bag. We don't know if the, the jury instructions. The jury instructions very clearly say the testimony of one witness is enough. But sir, sir, the point, you were at the point and you moved away from it. Can you get back to the point what is it evidence of with regard to the involuntary manslaughter what what is it evidence of this actually was passed and that's their burden it let's say it did happen that you you believe it did happen it's not enough to say what was probably in that bag they have the burden to rule it out beyond a reasonable doubt that it couldn't have been any not evidence of anything involved with the involuntary manslaughter she Maybe she had something in her room to give to a friend later and she wanted to get rid of it until the police came. It has nothing to do with the involuntary manslaughter. Why aren't we arguing that? Anything else. And she's already calling it in her testimony, potentially. You also argued that Sarah Zachary throwing things away was, was tampering with evidence. And now you're arguing that your client throwing things away isn't tampering with evidence. I need you to get back to the fact that this isn't evidence of anything with the involuntary manslaughter because you never, you never finished that point multiple substances, cocaine, Sir. methamphetamine, or possibly something else. So she's not even certain about what it is. It being meth doesn't help your client. They have the burden to rule it out beyond a reasonable doubt that it couldn't have been anything else. And she's already calling it in her testimony, potentially multiple substances, cocaine, methamphetamine, or possibly something else. So Sir. she's not even certain about what it is without a, a, a test. Without something presumptive to tell you on a test, Sir, that's not there's no way fault. of telling that's what was worse. in that bag. And it's not enough in a criminal case. Sir, take Over it sure back. We talked about in detail. And I just want to remind you the root cause they found. They it has to be tampering with evidence related to the involuntary manslaughter. And you have not made that point clear to the jury. Make it clear to the jury that it has nothing to do with the involuntary manslaughter. Who cares if they tested it or didn't test it if it's not evidence of anything to do with the manslaughter? Why, sir, why? It's the obvious argument. Attributed all the responsibility for safety issues to management. Mr. Elliott, uh, he was defense expert investigator. 
got an extensive law enforcement experience if you recall an AP where's the where's the fire spicy pepper emoji on the bottom of this one because he got roasted on cross pd and military one of his big points was mr baldwin was not segregated at the beginning even though he was the known shooter hannah was segregated right away again they zeroed in on her uh in the the rush to have her identified they zeroed in on her because she, she was responsible there was for the so guns and the she's not identified and segregated and the problem with that is they can get their stories together and they can uh, change their stories they can have their memories altered we know this happened in this case because after the incident mr baldwin is talking to sarah zachary uh, she's he's texting and talking to her seth kenny's talking to sarah zachary mr halls is talking to baldwin after and so and your client talking to her dad all the and information we're talking about but we do know they're coordinating they're talking so put the those in, evidence. in that group call uh, a witness was, was hannah and i was talking and to folks again this was the idea we've got to circle the wagons and we've got to pick out the person that's going to take the fall for everything that's happened here. That's Hannah. Because she that's was in charge got. of the guns? Is that why? Why is she taking the fall, sir? Law enforcement failed to follow up on the origin of the live rounds, and their delayed search warrants caused problems with missing evidence. I think that's a fair argument. PJ Pesh testified this, this morning. Um, he had said, like everybody else, he's never seen in 35 years. I'm sorry, chat. I, I, I have to pause. Chat. We seem to be missing a slide <laughs> because there was a witness in between these two witnesses that isn't being discussed at all. What? Why are we missing a witness? Chat? What? Why are we missing a witness? <laughs> he just completely ignored their weapons expert from yesterday afternoon. What? Mr. Bowles, at what time yesterday did you pull that slide out of your closing argument? Was it when he um, pointed a barrel towards the judge when he got excoriated on cross-examination for doing that? Or was it earlier than that? What it was the judge, when the judge scolded him for being like, see, weapon in court before he had uh, demonstrated it was safe. How, what, at what point did you pull him out of the PowerPoint presentation? I'm curious. An armor split duties with props. It's not possible for one person to keep track of so many firearms. And he indicated it's important to give the armor adequate time and resources, which OSHA said as well. So she was funny. not given that to do her job. Are you shocked? I'm not shocked. I wanna to talk to you about the law that the judge instructed you on, and, and that is the law. What the judge uh, told you about is what has, we, we have to follow in terms of evaluating this. The law presumes the defendant to be innocent. The burden is always on the state to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. A reasonable doubt is a doubt based upon reason and common sense. The kind of doubt that would make a reasonable person hesitate to act in the graver and more important affairs of life. A doubt based on reason and common sense. So what the government has to do is rule out every reasonable doubt you may have based on reason and common sense. Or in this country, we don't convict people. That's the standard. And again, I go back to where I started at the beginning. If they didn't rule out the reasonable doubt on Miss Zachary throwing away the rounds, that is always going to be there. Because their theory based on you can identify these pictures and we know exactly man. what was on the set and what remained on the set. And what We will never know that because some of them were thrown away and we didn't get all of Seth Kinney's rounds. We're never going to. They recovered the round from Joel Souza's shoulder though. I know that. Other areas of reasonable doubt. I've gone over the top two, top three. The prop cart was tampered with. Uh, we know that right after the incident, another individual moved it. Now, Lieutenant Benavides said he had eyes on uh, the entire time. He did say that. But if you saw that video, you can make up your mind what you believe. Um, ladies and gentlemen, his camera appeared to be pointed right into the vehicle. And the individual getting the cart was way off in the other direction. He said he had his head turned. But you all can decide uh, what you think about that. You're client did verify in her police interview that the rounds taken off the cart and then put into the police car and then showed to her in her interview were in fact the ones she was using to load the gun but sure but sure but sure the prop cart there was unquestionably items taken from it we don't know exactly what those are that is another area of reasonable doubt that the government has not ruled out oh look at us you've had witnesses say we're throughout the trial you can't tell live ammo from a picture and the reason is that the FBI said it has to be disassembled and you have to open it up because there's powder in it. If there's not powder in it, then it's not live. Well, some of them had holes. OSHA stated the root cause of all safety failures was management. 
oh, my ruled this to be an accident, not a homicide. You heard evidence about the esophageal intubation was ineffective to provide oxygen to Helena. This also was a situation in this case where multiple lawsuits have been filed and you can evaluate their testimony. Those people who have filed lawsuits with care and caution because they've got an interest potentially in what's happening in this case by being involved in lawsuits. Most of them aren't suing your client though. Involuntary manslaughter. Uh, you're going to have that instruction when you go back. That is the um, charge that the, the, her honor has read to you. She's given you the law on this. I want to focus you on a couple key points. Yeah, it's a real confusing. The government has the burden to show each of these elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Yeah, it's a multi-part uh, the instruction. The elements are the numbered items. What that means is if you all have reasonable doubts on any of these elements. Lawyers, future lawyers, anyone who presents PowerPoint multiple slides one slide for each point there is too much text everyone's eyes are going to glaze over one slide for each point hannah cannot be convicted and i want to focus you in on element three that hannah acted with a willful disregard again you go back to willful disregard the nurse example and the idea that if somebody doesn't know i mean that could be the same thing with nurse on trial for involuntary manslaughter but if she doesn't know the drug was mislabeled, you cannot hold her criminally accountable for something like that. It's, it's the same analogy. thing in this case, because no one knew there were live rounds. The prosecutor is going to stand up and say, Hannah's the pharmacy. She mislabeled the drugs and she administered them. You are teeing up a very, very bad comeuppance. So she did not. How can you not see that's what they're going to do? Anything that happened that day. In loading the, the firearm, this was a nor another day everybody thought on set. Okay. Loading the firearms, running to different things, doing the duties. Nobody's calling her back in for the blocking scene. Mr. Baldwin's doing something on his own. Nobody in the wildest dreams thought there was a live round. And because of that, there never the next element been. is that Hannah Gutierrez Reed that caused the death. I submit to you that what caused uh, her to pass was Mr. Baldwin going off script and pointing the weapon. Now, he didn't know uh, there was a live round in there either. He didn't know. Again, he's in the same position that nobody knew there was ever going to be a live round on that set. But the only the only ultimate act is this pointing of that weapon. Miss Gutierrez wasn't in the church. She didn't point that weapon. She didn't pull it. Nobody called her back in. And because of that, those two elements I submit to you have not been proven on involuntary manslaughter. And what do you guys think? Be. The government has to resolve all your reasonable doubts about that or they don't you cannot uh, we cannot convict mental state and willful disregard uh, and that is going to be in your in your instructions for you to find the defendant acted negligently in this case you must find that the, the defendant acted with willful disregard and and so again that's the terminology is willful disregard there's a further definition of that in the code. Though. You're also going to be instructed, the court instructed you, Her Honor, on negligent use of a firearm. And that is a, a lesser included offense of the involuntary manslaughter. Uh, so when you go back and deliberate, you will have uh, this in front of you as well. I wonder if he's going to tell them that this is the charge that Dave Hall's pled to or remind them that this is the charge Dave Hall's pled to, to play on the equity of the situation. Like this is what Dave Hall's pled to. So if you think that Dave Hall's and Hannah are equally responsible, you should convict her of only this misdemeanor lesser included. So I, I wonder if he's going to point it out that specifically. Whether Miss Gutierrez Reed endangered the safety of another by handling or using a firearm in a negligent manner. And again, the language is acted with willful disregard. That's what has to be proven under that charge <clears throat> for her for you to resolve all of your reasonable doubts. I guess that's a no then. Tampering with evidence. I think this is a, a real stretch and it's a, it is a real stretch. And, and you talk about guessing this one, they have to prove the defendant hit a bag of cocaine. Well, the only witness they have to it said it was either cocaine or meth or something else. So just, sorry, I was trying to move just that. by the testimony alone, the beginning of that, you can't, there's no way of knowing it was a bag of cocaine. It's just impossible. There has to be reasonable doubt on that by the government's own witness. Their only witness. No law enforcement testing. There's nobody else. This, this is absolutely unproven in this case. One witness, if believed, can be enough. Emily, you thank don't even you have to get to element two because element one is not even close to having, having been proved beyond a reasonable doubt. Proximate cause, it's a legal term, but it's something the government has to prove as well. 
And this is where you get into the government the has to was prove a everything, sir. We know. Of Hannah Gutierrez Act. The act was a significant cause of the death. Also, Chad, I see you. All, all of you, I see you when you're like, he's just suggesting his client casually uses meth. How is that better? It's, it's not better. It's not better. It's not better. It's not. And the language I want to focus you in on in a natural and continuous chain of events uninterrupted by an outside event. What these mean, and legal, these are the legal terminology, what it means is that what Hannah Gutierrez did had to be a foreseeable result, but again, that caused her death. But again, without her knowing that there was a live round, that's impossible to meet. It was her job to know it was a live round, sir. And that's what the, the prosecution is going to stand up and say. So I need you to bring something stronger than she could have never known there was a live round because it's her job to sort that out. I, I, I think there's stronger arguments. That's standard. She did not have that knowledge. And there's no witness that came in here in this courtroom in two weeks to say she had that knowledge. Without it, nothing she did. She has that willful disregard because she just doesn't know. Disagree. Now, was there an outside event as well? There was an outside event. There's she two just doesn't events. know is not going to cut Whoever it. Put the live on set and then Mr. Baldwin in the end going off script and doing what he did. Those are outside events outside of Miss Gutierrez Reed's control that she didn't know was going to happen. That breaks any idea, uh, and there's reasonable doubt that she had anything to do ultimately with Helena Hutchins' death. Ms. Gutierrez Reed was not a significant cause as a result of her death because of the reasons I've mentioned to you. Chat, do you agree or disagree that Hannah Gutierrez, the armor, was not a significant cause of Ms. Hutchins' death? Agree, disagree. Put it in the chat. Another instruction her, her honor gave you is that negligence of a third person, again, I'm going to highlight the language. If it breaks the foreseeable chain of events, um, again, the foreseeable chain of events on that set is you have dummy rounds, you have blank rounds, and then you have um, an orderly progression with how those are being used. Here we had a completely unforeseeable live round, uh, six live rounds that were on set, nobody could foresee. And then we have Mr. Baldwin's action in the end. Those were both unforeseeable to Ms. Gutierrez Reed. I think it's foreseeable that live rounds could end up on set whenever there are guns. And that is why there is an armor and it is their job to check everything. I think like the job function is because it's foreseeable. And I think she says that in her police interview when she says things can go wrong. And then she says, and it's my responsibility. And I think the prosecution is going to use that statement in their rebuttal because he says it's not foreseeable when his client says in her own words, it is in fact foreseeable and it's literally why her job exists. So the judge instructed you on, you all are the sole judge of the facts. Yes. You all are deciding the facts, ladies and gentlemen, and your verdict should not be based on speculation, guess, or conjecture. It goes back to the tampering charge. Um, it goes back to some of the other aspects the government has told you in this country, we can't decide and convict people on guesses. And that's a lot of what they've asked you to do in several areas to guess, to assume, to speculate. Let's it's not, not guess. sufficient to convict people in this country to guess. It's not. Every time I've had a really, really strong case and I won almost every single trial I did, but in every trial where I had really, really strong cases, do you know what the defense argued the most in their closing? Burden and reasonable doubt. Because there is nothing else to argue but the burden. He has facts to work with. He does have facts to work with and he just keeps hammering on burden because he doesn't see some of the arguments he needs to make and he's just not making them. And that's what they brought you and they've asked you to do on the tampering and other aspects of their charges. And that's not sufficient. Ladies and gentlemen, burden, Hannah is not guilty burden, on all the burden. counts because of the law that her honor has given you. When you apply that law and you apply the standard of beyond a reasonable doubt, she could not anticipate what Baldwin would do. It was not in the script. It was not foreseeable. Management was responsible for safety failures and not Hannah. There's zero evidence of cocaine. There's no testing. And again, I go back to the idea that Hannah is a scapegoat for all the management failures. They do hope she gets convicted. So they're all exonerated. They can move forward. They can finish that movie like Mr. Sousa said they did and make their money. But as he also This is the strongest point of his closing so far. Told you the buck always stops with production. And it's their responsibility in any organization 
It goes from the top down. And that's where the responsibility lies in this case. That's what OSHA said. And that's also the truth. And the truth is important because justice for Helena does not mean injustice for Hannah. It's a good argument. Does not mean injustice for Hannah. It does not mean they get to steamroll her and they get to come in and spin their version of facts and they get to call it truth. Because that's not truth. Truth is bringing you, ladies and gentlemen, everything they can. Justice is bringing you everything they can. Justice is not mocking theories that could come true. That might have been the case. Justice is not laughing in court during some of our exchanges. And you can evaluate that as to their credibility, whether that was professional, whether she didn't take court seriously, does she take the investigation seriously? Uh, oh, I submit she did not. The court's got some side. And so they can't come in here with a straight face and mock us and criticize us and tell you they have given you enough to convict her behind a reasonable doubt. Just got because they haven't. <laughs> More side eye. That, ju th that just got real personal. Are you done with your closing? They're going to take a break, I imagine. He, I think he was attacking both the prosecutor and the lead detective. I don't think that's going to go very well um, based on some of his his arguments. The one thing I would have liked to have seen him argue more is whether or not she could have done her job. Not that it was unforeseeable that there was a bullet, that it was foreseeable that there was a bullet, but she actually can't be willfully not doing her job because of all the production failures. And he did not take that route at all. But that's his call and his strategy. I guess we're getting right into rebuttal. So I'm going to zoom, zoom till we get to the state's rebuttal. And because the state talks fast, I will probably slow her down if we need that, to. I agree. Hannah didn't know there was a live round on set. I agree. Because she didn't check it. All right, you guys, I'm going to swoop just real quick because we're getting to rebuttal. They're not going to go to lunch. They are going to work through and get this jury deliberating. Let's rebut. If Hannah knew there was a live round on set, we would have loaded her. it into a prop we would have gun charged her with murder. and it was used to kill Helena Hutchins, she wouldn't be charged with involuntary manslaughter. She'd be charged with second degree murder. Yep. Facts. She'd be charged with first degree depraved mind murder. This is an involuntary manslaughter charge. Because she was reckless. Because she didn't know there were live rounds on set. And the reason she didn't know was through her own negligence, her own recklessness, her own willful disregard for the safety of other people. Mr. Bowles, do you see what you did? You wound her up. You wound her up and let her go. I'll explain depraved mind murder after this. You, This is what he teed up. She is bringing the heat that he teed up. This is because of him. That willful disregard, that lack of care for the safety of other people that you have seen throughout this trial, it is shocking. For Mr. Bowles to come up to this podium and say it wasn't foreseeable that Alec Baldwin was gonna go off script and pull the hammer and pull the trigger. Yep. He showed you a video of Alec Baldwin going off script. Yep. Alec Baldwin went off script. Hannah Gutierrez knew it. Yep. She was there. Hannah Gutierrez knew that Baldwin was loose. She knew it. She didn't do anything about it, even though it was her job. Joel Souza called it him a motherfucker. It was her job. It is her job to say to an A-list actor, if in fact that's what you want to call him, <laughs> Um, hey, you can't behave that way with those firearms. And the shame that for is her job. That is what they pay her for. That is the job that she applied for. That is the job that she accepted. I have her sped up so much. It feels like she, it feels like an auto-tuned, uh, defense argument at this point. The Baldwin shade. Good Lord. I was not expecting the Baldwin shade. Foreseeability. You want to talk about off script? I told you that video was going to bite him square in the ass the second he made that argument. I said, I said, this is going to bite him in the ass. Chomp, chomp. Just remember those videos of the stuntman. That's not within the script. She was there. 
She watched it. She knew these people would go off script. You know she didn't check the rounds. If she checked the rounds, they wouldn't have been floating around that movie set the entire time, undetected. And there's the smoke. Give you everything we've got. You have absolutely everything we have. This law enforcement team and this team of prosecutors have reviewed thousands and thousands and thousands of photos and thousands of videos. We have interviewed count And the defense has them too. Countless people, many of whom you didn't even hear from. We can't stay here forever. Thank God. You have absolutely everything you need. One of the amazingly shocking things about this case to me has always been Live rounds and it's set. to Detective Hancock's credit. A defense attorney with his own agenda, no question, comes to her and says, Smoke. it's Seth Kinney, it's Seth Kinney, it's Seth Kinney. That's his job. Okay, let's make that clear. That's Mr. Bowles' job. He gets Hannah's dad to say, it's Seth Kinney, it's Seth Kinney, it's Seth Kinney. Rather than ignore them, she gets a search warrant. She took his speculative agenda presented it to a judge, got a search warrant, and searched that man's property. And oh my heavens, what did they find? They found exactly what Pizza boxes. Bill Reed said they would find. Pizza boxes. They found live ammunition with semi wad cutter projectiles. You have everything you have, you, you, you have everything we have, you have everything you will ever need to convict her. This is 100% foreseeable. I'm Hannah Gutierrez is not a scapegoat. I'm putting up a poll about the defense's closing argument, asking you if the defense's argument introduced doubt to you. I will ask if the prosecution closed in on that doubt, but I got captivated and forgot to put up the poll. Sorry. Hannah Gutierrez is not being treated as a scapegoat. Mr. Halls was charged criminally. That plea deal sucks and we all hate it. To his credit, he took an early plea and he got the benefit of that. And it sucks and we hate it. Mr. Baldwin has now been indicted. Twice. Everyone with criminal culpability has been criminally charged in this case. She's not being scapegoated. She is being treated like everyone else. She is not being given a break because she's a woman. She is not being given a break because she's young. Because that- She's being treated like everyone else in the chain. That's not how the law works. Let me just review my notes real quick. And as I promised you, I am going to try to. I definitely think there. that Sarah Zachary and Please keep Seth in mind, Kinney Mr. Bowles comes up wanted the attention on Hannah. It doesn't change that Hannah's job was the armorer. To the podium and says Sarah Zachary threw rounds away. She did. Obviously she did. She admitted it. She told law enforcement that she did it. And rather than try to prosecute her for tampering with evidence, for panicking and throwing some rounds away, she agreed to come in and testify, and her agreement is that she must testify truthfully. And she testified truthfully. You want to know why we don't have an inertia puller in evidence? He, he kind of could have objected to vouching for the witness. I don't like that. The deal was that she came in and testified truthfully. You can evaluate if she did that. It, it's, it, it's bordering on vouching. I don't like it. Why we don't have a box of dummies that Ms. Gutierrez said she brought on set? She said she brought two boxes. We've only got one. You want to know why? Yeah. Because she went to the prop truck on October 23rd, got access to it, took a bunch of gun belts, and a couple of boxes. That's not in evidence. That's not in evidence at all. That's not in evidence, Carrie. Uh huh? You're confused that he's objecting over that? Of course he's fucking objecting over that. We heard evidence that she had access to the prop truck, but there has been no evidence about what she took out of the prop truck. All right, let's catch up to real time. The judge does not look pleased. Where were we? Is she going to admonish the jury? Maybe not. That's not, that's not okay at all. You can't get lost in the sauce. Where were we? We were with you stating things that aren't in evidence is where we were. That's not a mistrial, y'all. She's mad though. She took stuff out of the prop truck. That's all you can say. She took gun belts. You heard from Sarah Zachary that the- I think she won her objection.
I didn't hear Sarah Zachary say that. Those were gun belts that she brought from another movie set that were already loaded with dummy rounds. Who knows what was in them? I don't remember Sarah Zachary saying that at all. Not grounds for appeal. So she won. I won she won it. Sarah Zachary better have said that. I don't remember Sarah Zachary saying that. I want to she might have. I just make don't sure remember. That we it. understand what reasonable doubt means. Reasonable doubt means the doubt must be reasonable. It has to be an evidence. It is not a reasonable doubt to or the cast court would have suspicion on Brian Norvell. The jury. I didn't think it that is was not a reasonable doubt to cast suspicion on Seth Kinney. All investigative leads were exhausted. And the defense expert told you that he simply didn't do anything wrong. You want to talk about scapegoating? That's the guy that got scapegoated. Ma'am. The doubt must be reasonable. And I don't have to prove this case beyond all possible doubt. If that is what the law required, my heavens, we live in a world of infinite possibilities. The government would never be able to prove a case beyond all possible doubt. We'd have to have a video of absolutely everything that took place. There is some video it's here. It's not the standard. Her it doesn't have things. to be the standard. Can we go back so to her words? when you're back there and you're talking about doubt, make sure it's a reasonable one under this set of circumstances. I need you to talk about the things she said in her police interview, please. Also, I don't remember you know, Mr. Sarah Bull Zachary says to testifying you, these to These production that. outfitters were just from one day. That's right. All that happened in one day. Imagine what- Fucking wild, right? Look at this. He said they're all one day. Yep, all those, all those violations of gun safety in one day. Fucking wild. You know, Mr. Bulls says to you, these production outfitters were just from one day. That's right. All that happened in one day. Imagine what all the other days were like. That was one day. How bad. Yeah, I don't remember it, but the court allowed it. I'll go I'll go looking through Sarah Zachary's testimony. When giving commentary, there's times I miss Mr. Balls is right. The crew didn't believe there were live rounds on set. They believed that she was going to do her job. They believed that she did her job. That part. This isn't Seth Kenny's responsibility to inventory rounds, although he did it. That wasn't his responsibility. I mean, he's sending rounds to set. He should inventory what he's sending to set. <sighs> Rust Productions didn't provide all of the dummy rounds to the set of this movie. You know from her own statements she brought two boxes on herself. Yes. We're not living in an alternate reality. We... Objection. Assumes facts not in evidence. This trial does in fact seem to be an alternate reality. All right. Just saying. Over the last 10 days, this trial has been- Let's go through these. I'll go through them relatively quickly. Wild. I need you to go through her words. I need you to end this closing When you all go back into the jury deliberation room, you will have your own copy. Uh, so you certainly will have a copy to reference. It's so um, much easier when they do. These are some of the instructions that are important to us. Jury Your verdict are should not be a lot uh, based on sympathy or prejudice. Sympathy or prejudice, huh? It's not showing on screen. Oh, it's not showing on screen. Oh, I see. I'm glad somebody told you. I would like Thank to see them. So it can't be based on sympathy or prejudice. And for any of you who are feeling sympathetic, because she is young and she is maybe inexperienced. Although by her own statement to Detective Hancock, she would tell you she wasn't. She took the job. You all are on this jury because during voir dire, you agreed to follow the law. And I will ask you to do it right now. If you had said during voir dire, I can't follow the law, I feel too sympathetic, you wouldn't be here. I have and empathy for Hannah, law, I truly do. You can probably excuse yourselves. What? What? that ma'am telling the jury to get the fuck out is maybe not the tack to take but okay you must not concern yourselves with the consequences of your verdict that is the law that is the law that you agreed to follow that is the law that you are required to follow
I think she sounds more aggressive because I have her at one point. Two five. Has endangered the safety of another by hand by handling or using a firearm in a negligent manner. There can be absolutely no doubt that happened. Hannah Gutierrez should have known of the danger involved by her actions. Yes, yeah, she knew. This was completely foreseeable. She was trained in firearms. She knows what we all know. Guns can kill you. You got to be really careful. I really wish at this point she was using Hannah's words from her police interview where she said there can be safety incidents on set and it is my job to make sure that those things don't happen. That statement in Hannah's interview proves that she knows. Her act caused the death of Helena Hutchins. Twelve A is the alternative theory, and so let me explain to you that twelve and twelve yeah, A make this are clear. alternatives. You must find either. You must make a decision about guilt or innocence unanimously to the count, not to the alternatives. So six of you can say I think she's guilty of twelve, but not twelve A. Another six of you can say we think she's guilty of twelve A, but not twelve. Done. Fine. You're done. Hannah Gutierrez loaded live ammunition into a firearm. Yes, That's she certainly true. did. She told the police she did. She failed to perform an adequate safety check of the ammunition. Of course, you know that. She didn't do it just once. She did it numerous times. She acted with willful disregard for the safety of others without question. So you are being presented with what's called a lesser included offense. And I will remind you the instructions that the judge read you at the beginning. Um, your first job is to see if you can agree on involuntary manslaughter. If you find her guilty of involuntary manslaughter on either alternative, you do not move on to this misdemeanor. It's done. If you find her not guilty, of involuntary manslaughter, then Alice Beck, I will just say if a male prosecutor made the statement to the jury that they could basically GFO, I would absolutely call it out as being too aggressive. It, it is, that was too aggressive. Absolutely, absolutely too aggressive. You get to move for on me. to the misdemeanor. She has had a very strong close. Parts of it, I raised my eyebrows at, just like I did for the defense. I do feel like I'm being yelled at by this prosecutor quite a lot. This is what we call a general criminal intent instruction. And I, I feel like we've got a Goldilocks type of a situation here with closing arguments. Like there are times that Carrie is way too much and there are times that Bowles is way not enough. We need something in the middle. We have not found our just right. It's just, there's a lot here. I want to just make sure that you understand this instruction only applies to the tampering with evidence. It does not apply to the involuntary manslaughter because she is charged with negligent homicide, not intentional. That's the involuntary part. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Um, Very importantly, court in the U S are the proximate polite. cause jury instructions. These jury instructions are what allows you to find Ms. Gutierrez guilty, even though Mr. Baldwin may have also been a significant cause of the death of Helena Hutchins. There could be two. So let's go through it. They, the death was a foreseeable result. They, that Gutierrez might be. Placing a live round into a firearm. Of course it was. The act of the defendant was a significant cause of the death of Helena Hutchins. The defendant's act was a significant cause of death if it was an act which, in a natural and continuous chain of events, uninterrupted by an outside event, resulted in the death and without which the death would not have occurred. She brought a bunch of live rounds on set, accidentally but negligently. She loaded one of them into a prop gun, and this was after they were loaded into Jensen Ackles' gun belt and Alec Baldwin's holster. And that's true. She 
told Dave Halls this is a cold gun. He told the crew it's a cold gun. At that point, everyone certainly assumed that there wasn't a live round. She knew Baldwin would go off script. She didn't have prop duties to tend to. She walked out. And even if she had been there, it wouldn't have made a difference because you have seen the incredible lack of control that she exercised as the only person on the movie set in charge of firearms. There is no intervening event. If you think the intervening event is that Baldwin manipulated the gun, don't yell at the jury. That was, that's the whole purpose of the prop. He's going to manipulate it. You saw a bunch of other actors do it. Very importantly, there may be more than one significant cause of death. If the acts that. of two or more persons significantly tr contribute to the cause of death, each act is a significant cause of death. That's an important instruction. If you think Baldwin's act was a significant cause of death, that's okay. You can still convict her. That felt flippant. She's allowed to be mad. It just feels like she's mad 20. at the jury. Maybe it's me, but it feels like she's yelling at the jury. Which might if be all the, neglig the negligence of a person other than the defendant was the only significant cause of death or constitutes an intervening cause that breaks the foreseeable chain of events, the defendant is not guilty. Well, that's not this case. She brought the live rounds on set. She put a live round in a prop gun. That's the reason that Ms. Hutchins is dead. One of at least two reasons. Because this prosecutor doesn't want those statements used against her when she goes to prosecute Baldwin and Baldwin's attorneys are like, you said Anna was the only cause. One of the significant causes. Good clarity. I will again, thank you very much for your time and for your attention. I Where are Hannah's words from the police interview and why are we not bringing them up? I know that this has been hard work for you folks. Um, I will ask you to find Ms. Gutierrez not gonna use guilty it then. of involuntary manslaughter <clears throat> and tampering with evidence. And I will ask you to bring some justice to Helena Hutchins. Thank you. Notice that she spent almost zero time in rebuttal on the tampering with evidence charge. Almost zero. I am shocked that she did not end her closing reminding the jury that Hannah told them in her own words that this was her job. Shocked. I'm shocked right, that thank you. she didn't use that. Instruction number 22. I'm These are the final jury instructions. I'm going to leave them sped up. I'll ask you to retire this to the jury. This jury is going to, to deliberate right now. You will be provided a copy of the jury instructions and the exhibits introduced as evidence will be made available to you. Prior to beginning your deliberations, they're you going to go back to deliberate. To as four person. It is one twenty over your local time and will speak for the jury here in court. Forms of verdict have been prepared for your use. You will take these forms to the jury room when you have reached a unanimous agreement as to your verdict. A four person will sign the forms which express your verdict. You will then return all forms of verdict, these instructions and any exhibits to the Miguelina, court. let's end the poll. I want to put there up another are 12 one. 12 that deliberate. There are four alternates on this jury given the long uh, length of this jury. Uh, keeping with the privacy, I'm going to pass this instruction. Um, down with uh, the help of Ryan, you're going to look at this is one of your names and you are one of the alternates. What I'm going to ask um, the bailiffs to do is to first take the alternates out so they can get their belongings. And I'm going to ask you to meet me down at the end of the hallway to ex explain. Uh, I hate to tell alternates they're alternates because they've been paying so close to the evidence. Um, and so uh, just to talk, talk with you and then um, and thank you. And then right along um, on your right on your clip will be um, the jurors themselves, okay? And the jurors will go into, into the room. So I'll need the aid of both of them. But first, let me pass this piece of paper over to you. Look down here. There's four names. See if one of them is yours and you're an alternate. She's just passing a paper. I'm glad she's not reading it out. Normally, they read out the jury numbers. I'm going to put up a new poll asking you if you think this jury will come back with a verdict today. I'm putting up a poll. Um... It's at the bottom. It's not unreasonable to me, but I want to know what you think. I'm going to zoom, zoom while they watch the disappointed faces, discover if they are alternates or not.
Really? We're still waiting for the drawers to get out. So, oh. All right, so, oh. Follow the, um, the ultimate follow, Brian. I'll meet you down at the end of the hallway after you get your belongings, and then you'll follow with it through. I'm putting us back at regular speed. Ladies and gentlemen of the chat, Lawnard friends, we're going to be on jury watch in just a second. If you don't want to miss when I go live with a verdict, you're going to need the free Lawnard app. We will let you know the second we are getting ready to go live. Before I go live, it will be the first place we notify that we are going live for a verdict. I want to see what the judge has to say to how close the, she wants the lawyers to stay. They are rising for the jury to leave the courtroom. But, um, we're in recess. All right, we're in recess. I'll be back in, but um, we're in recess. You can get going with your exhibits and things like that. The court did not say how close she would like the attorneys to stay. She did not say how much time she will give to read a verdict um, and did not really let us know. So they are gonna start getting their exhibits ready to go back for the jury. And we will be on Verdict Watch. So go ahead and download the Law Nerd app. You're not gonna wanna miss the verdict being read in this case. Do you remember as we were getting ready to log off for the evening in the Murdoch trial and a verdict came in? I remember that too. So you don't wanna miss when this jury comes back. Let's see if anything else happened at the end of uh the end of court there nope just everybody leaving all right L law nerds of the chat law nerds of the chat it is time we are on verdict watch i'm going to do a quick summary of today Mikalina. at some point me thinking out loud at some point we need a little like bumper to put up in our stream yard up here that we are on verdict watch we need to do that so then we don't have to just pin a comment so then the chat will know we we should do that at some point <laughs> before our next trial all right law nerds of the chat we are going to do a quick summary um I am going to uh, get us going to lunch after that. We're going to answer some questions, do a quick summary, and then get us out of here to lunch. If you want to know when I go live for this verdict, you are going to need the Law Nerd app. What's the shortest amount of time a verdict is taken? I mean, I had a case where it took like seven minutes. So no, it, 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 could, be, it could be 15 minutes. It could be four hours. This jury might want to actually eat lunch before they start talking about this. Um, it could be days. We don't know. And because we don't know, you are going to need to know when we know. So do the likey, subscribey things. YouTube will notify you. I'll notify you. Um, 40 odds to freedom. 40 ounces to freedom. I bet that's what that meant. Question, how can Dave Halls be the only person to testify that Hannah Gutierrez was in the church at the time of the incident? He didn't. And the only one to hand AB the gun, I'm so confused. Um, he testified that Hannah handed Baldwin the gun and then left, but was not in the church at the time of the incident. That's what he said. So I don't know. Dorky Dane said, vote for Hope for the Stroke Hero Awards. I'm going to share that out on social and I'll share the links on social. And then we'll grab the link and put it in the description too, because my friend and yours, Rick Hogue is up for the Stroke Hero Awards. Um, and there was a lot more information about that on his YouTube channel, but I will link those things. Carrie said, family law paralegal celebrating one year as a member. Congratulations. And thank you for the work we do. Teresa said, what exactly were Hannah's duties that day? Was she the armorer that day? The day of the incident, she was the armorer that day. Donna said, EDB, no matter the outcome of this trial and others, do you think that there will be a civil suit against Hannah and others on behalf of the Hudgens family? There is. I've covered it on the channel. You know what? Let me um, chat. Beg my indulgence. Let's stretch for a minute. I'm going to pull up the lawsuit i don't remember if the family is suing gutierrez or just baldwin and production so i'm going to pull up that lawsuit real quick we can all take a stretch while i pull it up because i'm going to go look i want to have the exact answer for you and we're in verdict watch so like 
We have a minute, don't we? Stretch. Stand up if you can. It's hydrate. We're all going to need to go to the bathroom soon. I sure will. Um, let's see. The amount of files I have on this case are substantial because there are so many rust cases. Um, that's not the right one. All right. Hutchins family. There, this is what I have in my folder and I don't have them all. I have the two criminal cases, the script supervisor lawsuit, the lawsuit between Hannah Gutierrez and Seth Kinney that has since settled, the Baldwin defamation suit that I haven't circled back on that kind of happened around this time, the Sherilyn Schaefer lawsuit, the Hutchins family lawsuit, the OSHA report, the Sergsfentnoy lawsuit, and, and the other wrongful death lawsuit. There is a wrongful death lawsuit from Helena's husband, and then there is her family mother sister's wrongful death suit. So I'm going to pull up the Hutchins family lawsuit. And this is um, the Hutchins family against here. Let me just pull that up on screen real quick so I can answer your questions. Um, let me move this. Emily, do you have to rearrange which screen is being shared? Yeah, we do. Are we going to do that smoother than these prosecutors in court? Hopefully, hopefully we are. Hopefully we will. Let's see how it goes. Um, where's that lawsuit? There we are. Come here, lawsuit. Let's put you on screen so I don't misread anything. Eh. Emily, you spoke too soon, girl. You in danger now. Where is the screen share? Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's so fun to get to fumble with technology in front of, you know, I don't know, 24,000 people. It's just my favorite thing ever. Being a live streamer is literally my favorite. All right. I'm not being sarcastic. And then that was actually uh, very truthful. Let's see. I'm trying to make that in big in. Oh, I have my not normal setup going because we were watching trial. This is Helena's family versus rust movie productions, Baldwin, El Dorado pictures, Ryan Smith, Langley Cheney, Thomasville pictures. Anjul, Brittany House Pictures, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, she's in there. Sarah Zachary, Seth Kinney, PDQ, Dave Halls, Nathan Klingler, Ryan uh, Winterstein, I think he was one of the production guys. Short Porch Pictures, Matthew Di Piano, Del Piano, Calvary Media, Gabrielle Pickle, Third Shift Media, Catherine Waters, Chris Sharp, Jennifer Lamb, Emily uh, Salveson, Streamline Global, and Unknown Does. So this is. Uh, this is Helena Hutchins' parents and sister suing everyone that we just listed for battery, IIED negligence, and loss of consortium. Not the wrongful death. Her husband and her minor child are suing for that wrongful death. Hopefully that clarifies is Hannah being sued. I yeeted myself. Hannah's being sued in other lawsuits with regard to this case as well. This is not the only one she's being sued in. She is being sued in several of these, but there are multiple lawsuits. Baldwin is being sued in a bunch of them. Baldwin has taken production to mediation to argue that production should cover all his civil lawsuits because he's a producer. The amount of civil lawsuits is substantial, is substantial uh, in this case. Um... Little Dark Wishes, thank you very much. Donna, I hope that answered your question probably more thoroughly than anyone needed me to, but we did it. Um, let's see. You're allowed to tweet from the courtroom. I, I mean, I'm not, but the media was allowed to in this case. What's the difference between misdemeanor and a felony? Paula, generally the significance of the crime or the harm of the crime and the sentencing and how it reflects on your record. Being convicted of a misdemeanor is easier to expunge down the road. You don't lose voting rights. Being convicted of a felony has a lot more restrictions, a lot more potential implications on your life and future employment, and the sentencing is higher. Emily, please talk about yesterday's witness who pointed the gun at the judge. Um, I lost my mind adequately, I think, and, and saw a few, very, very few comments on the video, like, Emily, you're being dramatic. I'm like, I'm not dramatic. This shit should never happen in a courtroom. It was ridiculous. I don't have really much more to say other than that never should have happened. 
And there's a reason the defense left that dude out of their closing fucking entirely. Like there's a reason the defense mentioned that guy literally zero in their closing. Good, good choice, Bowles. Solid, solid decision uh, on that. I'm going to make sure that I've got court in the background just in case anything happens. Hey, Emily, have you ever tried Five Daughters Bakery in Nashville? Yes. And I go to the one in Franklin at the factory because I love the factory. Heather's budgeting says I'm questioning if production would have even stopped if Hannah had said to. I don't know if they would have. Honestly, I don't know if they would have. Um, I have a friend in George. What if it's a hung jury? What a hung jury means, and we're not even close. We would go days and days, and we would generally see questions that indicate the jury's having problems. Um, but if there is a hung jury, the prosecutor will decide to do a trial or not again. The prosecutor will decide to offer a plea deal or not, or choose not to prosecute entirely, which is unlikely here. It will depend on the split. If it's a hung jury that's like 11 to one for guilt, different decision than if it's like 11 to one not guilt. The split becomes very important. Wearing my Law Nerd lip gloss and sipping from my tumbler. Cheers, Leslie. I love these tumblers. I have been pacing my Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> then discount Custer pulled out a revolver and I stress demolished the rest of the box. There goes blood pressure and diet. Um, discount Custer stressed me out as well. I was very stressed yesterday. I was very, very, very stressed yesterday. Thank you for being the best professor ever, Juliana. Thank you. The, the you know, Lawnard University up in here um, uses cursey words in place of legal jargon so that we can all understand. We have our own dictionary. Anna said, if you would have asked me five years ago, if one day for fun, I would listen to a purple haired lady read statutes while building a new chicken coop, I would have laughed. Life is interesting and I love it. Anna, if you had asked me five years ago if I was going to be a purple-haired YouTuber, I would have said no, probably not. Probably not where we're headed. And yet today we've been like number two on live trending and have beaten all the legacy media coverage of this trial because you've proved again, law nerds, that this is the number one place for live trial coverage. Because it is. I mean, because it is. Um, one half chaotic elf said legal secretary for a DA here. My attorney and I love you. Are you losing your minds over this case? I've lost my mind. I need to know why Bullion left the defense. I need to know too. We're not going to know because they're, because uh, that's attorney client privilege information. I'm so, I'm so mad that we're not going to know, but we're not going to know unless she like sues him or something. And then maybe we'll find out. Tchaikovsky actually wrote Cannon Fire into the score of the 1812 Overture. I wouldn't personally call that LARPing. <laughs> That's fair. Next time, Rhapsody in Blue, because I appreciate it, will you please start this sentence with, well, actually, Tchaikovsky wrote Cannon Fire into the score of 1812, so it's not LARPing. It's actual. <laughs> please, please. Please, my son well actually is me about so much. I'm here for it. Um, I love the well actually. Uh, got the orange Foreo. Thanks, EDB. You're welcome, Aaron. I'm thrilled, and I think you will love it. The app is so helpful. It's Brie. Anyone else have a new ADHD fixation? <laughs> I am now obsessed with plants and have several new plant babies. My significant other is thrilled, I'm sure. Spicy brain is happy. I did go through a bonsai tree period, um, but I don't have any new fixations at the moment because I haven't had time to play Suica, and I need to catch up on watching Vanderpump Rules and Housewives. Um, so, um, the AD JD, the, eh, sorry, my brain just stopped. The Amber Heard JD trial brought my partner and I together. Our two year anniversary is coming up. Thank you for setting us up. I mean, you're welcome. Congratulations. And I need to know more about how the trial brought you two together. Did you meet in the chat? I, I need to know all of the thing. Um, L Lambert in the chat said, EDB, I'm, re I'm receiving a server error when attempting to make an account over on the app. We, we might have overclocked the servers. Um, I know that my team is in the chat and they will be reaching out immediately. Sometimes the law nerds do overclock the servers because there are so many of us and we are so powerful. So if, if you are running into trouble, I would try it again um, and we'll go from there. So, and Octo can let you know in the chat. I'm sure he's working on it. Just got my I Have Questions hoodie, and it's my birthday. Great day. Yay. Um, 
This was from earlier today. Could the defense be making a deal? No, they were arguing over jury instructions. After hearing all the witnesses, do you think this will help or hurt Baldwin? Rebecca, I think I'm going to do a whole chat. Let me know what you think. I think I'm going to do a whole uh, podcast episode about what came up in this trial that is helpful for Baldwin and harmful for Baldwin, in my opinion. I think that that will be helpful for everyone. So I think I'll just, I think I'll just go through all of it because I'd like more time. I think that at the, <clears throat> I think that as an actor, one of the things that stuck out to me the most this trial was the professional armor who I liked quite a lot. Um, saying that if the actor checks the weapon, that the armor needs to check it again. So I think I'm going to do a whole breakdown of it. We have an interview that I'm very excited to bring you coming up. We have two parts of Bravo lawsuits, and that will give me some time to distill and reflect on the trial and then do an entire breakdown for you um, of what I think we have to come in the Baldwin trial and what we learned from this trial. So that'll probably be three weeks out. If others are also found to be negligent in their duties leading up to the incident, will that help Hannah Gutierrez in her sentencing? I don't know. Her police interviews are pretty callous. Um, so I'm not sure if it will help. But I think the judge is aware that others are responsible here. It's not just her. But I also imagine the judge is going to be like, yeah, 24 hours an attorney. And I was in charge of people's lives. I, I had responsibilities. I don't know. I don't know. Parrish does not have a lot of directing credits. Uh, does have a lot of directing credits on his IMDb. Very impressive. I'm surprised they didn't use him more. But they didn't bring in an armor, and they didn't ask him about an armor, being an armorer, which was very telling. Small said maybe Thel Reed opted not to testify for the sake of his own reputation. It also, I think, I think whatever he said, a jury's going to discount and be like, yeah, but that's your kid. Like, I wanted to see it, but I think the jury would discount it easily. Emily, I feel like Thel may still testify. Do you think there's a chance of that still happening? I'm behind on chats. Um, he is part of the Munitions Guild, not Musicians Guild. <laughs> a musician, not music. I didn't know there was a, a Munitions Guild. Um, PJ Pesk from Dust Till Dawn. Uh, three, 100 years ago in Mexico. Good to see the, the uh, how far behind I am in the chat. Brandy Rose said, with as slow as this guy talks, we will never get to closing arguments today. We definitely did, and we're done, and now we're on jury watch. The term cut motherfucker is used in restaurants to tell that person to get the fuck out. <laughs> Chef Nation, I'm not surprised. Um, it was interesting seeing Joel Souza testify and then seeing his frustration with Baldwin, but Baldwin being um, rogue or off script on the set is not going to help him. For all of you asking in the chat, I do not put up a guilty, not guilty poll. Um, it is it is a personal preference. I have not, but I do pull pull how long the jury might take. So you're welcome to go vote in that poll. Um, and I will poll in a minute which side you found more persuasive in their closing. It doesn't mean that you think guilt or not guilt, but which attorney and which argument you found more persuasive. Um, <laughs> Banjo Bones Mama said, I just wanted to say hello. Hello. Is it just me? I'm wondering why he's doing this and who is on the witness stand. It's weird. Today and yesterday. Abby said they're roasting the first AD, but he's technically been held accountable. Not sure how this helps them. They are roasting the first AD and they want it. They want to remind the jury that it was also his job. And the prosecutor's like, yeah, it's his job. And he took responsibility for it. And now we're on to Hannah who didn't. Uh, Jamie with all the questions. Jamie, with all the questions, with the question, why haven't defense entered Hannah's emails where she complained of safety issues? I don't know. They have them. They had the witnesses. They had Gabrielle Pickle on the stand. They could have introduced them with Gabrielle Pickle. Um, mm, they can't introduce their client's own statement. Hold. They can't introduce their client's own statement because it's not the statement of a party opponent. So the prosecution would have had to have entered them or they would have had to call Hannah. My brain stopped at the end of the day. So that's why. 
Um, they could have asked Gabrielle Pickle about it and tried to get it in through completeness. I think the prosecution probably would have fought them on that, but you never know. So that's why. The prosecution would have had to done it, had to have done it, and they should have done it with Gabrielle Pickle or tried. Another creator said Bowles is normally a real estate attorney. Is that true? I don't know. I didn't, I don't dig into these attorneys. I let it play out on the field. Um, so I watch it play out. And Miguelina, will you let Warren know that the chat is indicating that the app is the app is struggling under the the uh the interest of the law nerds? Thank you. So that's where we're at. Um, let's see. Is defense new here? Bad call. So uh, yeah, oh, what I was saying is I don't dig into the attorneys. Um and I don't I don't look up their histories, their backgrounds, their social medias, anything like that. I want to literally give the commentary about what I see playing out in front of me. Um, later, if people help add context, that's fine. But uh, there was more there was more fire to be brought that was not brought. Thank you for keeping me company after emergency gallbladder surgery. Yikes, Tammy, and we're here. Don't laugh too hard. Watching from the hospital, not understanding the purpose of this witness at all. Mm -hmm. Baby Gator said it was her responsibility to make sure a live bullet didn't end up in a gun. I don't care about issues on the set or what other people did or didn't do. Fair. Um, recovering from surgery and able to attend live. Law nerds, all of you recover well. Jamie, with all the questions, why hasn't the defense entered Hannah's emails? We got to that answer. Um, and Runkle was in the chat supporting my brain that is buffering in that they would have had to introduce Hannah for that. Right, because it's not a statement of a party opponent and the state's not going to help with that. Um, but they did ask Gabrielle Pickle about whether or not she, um, about whether or not she had those concerns raised to her and she said no. So they could have impeached her with, you said she never brought it to you. Does this email rec refresh your recollection that she said that to you? They didn't impeach her with the emails, which probably would have been the appropriate way to do it. And they didn't when Gabrielle Pickle said those things were not raised to her. So it should have been impeachment there. And I think they could have used them that way. They couldn't have read them in, but they could have used them to refresh. Aaron said, this witness needed to be before OSHA. Ideally, anyone can stop, but anyone who works in safety heavy fields knows bad management quashes that often. And that's fair. Tinsley, good to see you. I will be honest. Hannah Gutierrez reads attorney is infuriating. I feel like he has done more harm than help. And oh, hey, my friend. Hey, friend. Um, there were things I would have liked to have seen him argue more, especially how much the state was reaching on that tampering charge. The state kind of dropped it in their rebuttal. They were like, eh, they're gonna let the verdict, they're gonna let the jury split the baby. Like if the if the jury feels bad for Hannah, they might say, yeah, I mean, she did she did cause the death of a woman. But this tampering with evidence is just too much. And they might convict on one and not the other. So um, if only the defense prepped as well as the lady beside Hannah. I, I don't, I don't know, maybe, uh, but I don't know. Swiss Army nerd said, Emily, I need a nap. Can you play a really loud alarm sound if a verdict comes in? <laughs> Set your app notification to a really large, uh, really loud alarm sound. Stacey Matthews asked, what are the charges for Baldwin? Involuntary manslaughter on two theories. So if you watch my podcast where I cover involuntary manslaughter, um, that's what, that's where it is. And if you guys are having trouble accessing the app, search it in your app store for your iOS device. Octo in the chat said that that would help. Um, Oh, I thought jury instructions would be after closing arguments. Nicole, it depends on the judge. I actually prefer they go before because then the jury hears them twice. Not since Duffy heard have I seen a defense attorney destroy their entire argument themselves. This is truly a bold strategy. Well, we'll see how it works out for them, but showing the video of Baldwin and arguing that it was not foreseeable that Baldwin would wild out was a cell phone. Wait, the Real Housewives of New Jersey trailer dropped? You guys, we gotta go, bye. No, I'm kidding, I'm gonna finish answering your super chats and questions, uh, and then I'm gonna go watch it. I really, I got to spend some time with Dolores Catania at BravoCon, and she is just the loveliest human. Do you think Bowles will be found as an effective counsel? No, I don't. I saw this question a lot, Ashley, from, from you and others in chat. Will she go to jail today if she's found guilty? It really depends on the judge 
but she's been out on her own recognizance, I would be surprised if she was remanded immediately. I think they would give her time for remand. She could be remanded immediately, but I would be surprised. It's going to really depend on the judge, the jurisdiction. Um, I would be surprised. Chris said, defense, your case, New Mexico State, presents a silver platter. Here, tee it up. Argue this. Isn't it usually closing than jury instructions? Depends on the judge, depends on the jurisdiction, depends on the lawyers. A lot of judges um, would ask us what our preference was. I prefer they read it first. Does arrogance fall under willful disregard? Well, it's reckless because I believe she acted with arrogance for sure. Do, does that feel like recklessness to you is the question because that's what the juries will the jury will have to ask himself. Does it have to be unanimous? The verdict has to be unanimous, but not the theory. And the state, I think, explained that pretty well. These are confusing jury instructions because they have multiple parts. Um, do we have evidence of drug use by Hannah Gutierrez Reed? Other than her text messages where she was talking about smoking weed and wanting her stuff back? No, not really. Uh, and Chad, I'm trying to get to all the super chats because we had so many today. Thank you. It's incredibly generous. Um, I see the question in the chat from Drea. Who decides her sentence, judge or jury? Judge. Um, I like to think I could have defended her better. Janice, maybe. <laughs> um, this is the first trial I've lost all interest in the longer it went on, but stayed for the Emily. Well, thank you. I think we have a good preview of what's going to happen in the Baldwin trial. Defense dropped the ball in this case. We'll see. Why do I always feel like I'm cr feel like crying at this point? It's kind of stressful. Brandy said, EDB, I think it would have been appropriate for them to play the Price is Right losing horn sound after that last witness. I heard it. I, I heard the wah wah in my head. If production had done their job correctly, they should have fired her before someone got shot. Shelly, it's a good argument. It's going to come up in the civil cases. Question If Gutierrez is found guilty, will she be remanded in custody right away? I just answer that depends. Am I the only one who feels like neither the defense nor prosecution made their cases solid either way with their witnesses? This one feels so weird. This is not a cut, cut and dry case. This is a hard case. Hey, EDB, going through a rough time. Thank you for helping me get through it. Love you, law nerds. Matthew, the law nerds are always here in this community to chat and to distract and for some laughs. Question, can defense, can defense object during this? You can object during closing. It's rare, it has to be bad. And I really, I will have to go back and watch what Sarah Zachary said about Hannah taking gun belts out of the prop truck. I remember Hannah being allowed into the prop truck. I do not remember testimony about what Hannah took from the prop truck. Um, so wait, did I miss Hannah Gutierrez's dad as a witness? They didn't call him. No, you didn't miss it. Chelsea said, why isn't the jury told at the beginning of the trial <clears throat> what they are going to have to determine? So they are listening for proof specific to those instructions. They are not given the jury instructions at the beginning. Why? I don't know. Did you explain deprived mind murder? No, but I'm going to hold on to that because we'll go through the New Mexico statute if we have time. It, it's, no, we're not. Emily, overruled, overruled. <laughs> overruled, we'll just do it right now. Different states call premeditated murder different things. So like your first degree intentional premeditated murder are often in jurisdictions, depending on when the law was written, called depraved mind murder. The depraved mind being, hey, I'm going to murder. So it is the intentional, volitional, first degree homicide. Premeditated homicide is sometimes in some jurisdictions called depraved mind because they're like, you have to be depraved to murder people. And I'm like, you wrote this in a time before you had to go to Costco on a weekend when sometimes people are just like, oh my God, I'm being facetious. Um, Elias said, I love the app. I always get notifications. Thank you. You're welcome. As an FA, thank you, Emily. Don't effing touch us. KK, thanks. Also, they should bring in the FA as a character witness. Oh my God, I would die. They did not, but we will see. Alan said the fact that live rounds are on set is unforeseen. Let me start that again. Alan said, the fact that live rounds on set is unforeseeable just reinforces the armor's duty to religiously check for those live rounds, defense arguing against itself. I agree, and I wish the prosecution had brought up Hannah saying these things can happen on set 
it is my job to stop them from happening on set. I really, 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 really wish they had done that. I'm really, really frustrated that they didn't. But also, it's much easier to sit in my office and talk about it. I haven't been in trial for 10 days. So, easier. Just Sarah said, one thing this trial has proven to me beyond a reasonable doubt is that the Wild West is alive and well in the courtrooms of New Mexico. They're just built different, I guess. I mean, South Carolina was a wild courtroom too. I'm, we've had some wild ones. Des said, the first day of trial was a job interview for the job I am starting today. Des, doesn't it make it feel like this trial lasted forever? And congratulations. I hope the new job is awesome. How long do closing arguments last? As long as they do, but not longer than they should. These weren't that bad. How long did these last? Chat. I have no sense of time. An hour? An hour and a half for all the closings? Uh, Brianna, Brina, Brina Bumpen said, I don't like the possession charge. The whole charge and evidence is hearsay. It's one witness. It's circumstantial. It's not hearsay because the witness testified to it. It is circumstantial. I have no idea what idea was even entertained. Fair. Um, N7, Cubone, love your Cubone. As a forklift mechanic, the omissions equal willful hits home. If I omit a part of my service and an accident happens because of what I omit, then it's on me. And this is where the jury's individual experiences come into play in court because they all come to court with their own experience, their own life experience. So some of them that have jobs where somebody can get hurt are going to sit there and be like, yeah, fair. Why did Baldwin aim and pull the trigger at the director though? He said she told him to. It wasn't in the script. We're going to hear a lot about that in Baldwin's trial. This case was bananas. IMDb says the guy studied with Thel Reed for 15 years. The last witness. Interesting. Can she change her plea to guilty at this point? A court might not allow it. But yes, I have had defendants plea in the middle of trial. Um, I've seen people plea after the jury goes back. I've seen people try to negotiate sentencing and, and get a, a, a sentencing negotiation after a jury's come back. Court's fluid. Um, Sarah said, my husband who doesn't watch court knows about the bonkers gun expert from yesterday. Uh, the Boy Scout LARPer. Yeah. Kendra Starr says, as someone who worked on film sets in my early 20s, it's unfortunately not surprising to me that there was naivete of the seriousness of the job from Hannah Gutierrez. She was absolutely reckless and irresponsible. P.S. Love you. EDB. Thank you. Kendra, you're welcome. And thank you. She failed to take the time to inventory the rounds to ensure that the rounds were safe. She didn't have that many to check. No evidence that uh, she tried. No evidence that she tried. And she had hours this day because the camera crew walked off. She had hours on set that day. Hours. Just my opinion, but those primers appear to be dimpled, dead. They might be. The silver primer in the pick of four rounds looked dimpled to me. A number of you said that. Um, I must have terrible eyes, but the angle and lighting, I'm having a hard time seeing the difference. Fair enough, and some of the jurors might too. But even if they came from Seth, that doesn't negate that she was still negligent. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. Sharon, thank you for the gift of membership. LOL, I just figured out her fidgeting with the reader glasses. She has been M trying to read the law in her chat. She, yeah, she is keeping it on the, keeping it on the side, keeping it on the side. Um, let's see. Six bullets, just six to check. Yep. Um, Runkle, good to see you in the chat, friend, especially when I can get the prosecution to agree that one charge is done, but there might be another charge that is stronger. Uh, I hate, I really do hate that, uh, that tampering charge. It's dumb. Not all dimple primers are dead. She still has to check them. Agreed. Ag agreed, agreed, agreed. I'm going to keep answering some questions. Uh, did she just diss Mr. Reed? I don't remember when that was from. I hope the defense actually do their job and zealously advocate. The end, the end was strong. There were points I would have made stronger. But if the jury is inclined to feel empathetic and like she's being scapegoated, especially with how much Sarah Zachary was talking to Baldwin and talking to um, talking to Seth Kinney, it feels that way. And it can feel that way. But that all happened after she loaded the gun, and that's where I get stuck. Because that all happened after she loaded the gun. And her own testimony is that she loaded the gun. 
That is what Hannah told the police. She loaded the Baldwin gun. She unloaded the Baldwin gun. And you can't get around that no matter what else anybody did. They can all suck too. Problem, Hannah is not the person who destroyed it. Rebecca was. The handing it off is what is considered the tampering or what the prosecution's considering tampering. Um, Cumulus Cloud, thank you. I see your super chat. Um, Abigail said, I spend my days making recommendations for patient care, but have absolutely no power to actually change anything. I think Hannah was set up to fail and could have done better, but I'm not sure I get to reckless gross negligence. Abigail, completely fair. And this is what jurors are going to do. The conversation that we're having, they should be back there having a conversation. Aaron said, question, if the tampering charge wasn't there, do you think that it could still have been presented against her character and impair judgment? I don't think so. I think it's too far afield because it's so speculative. Um, question, have you seen jurors base their perception of the lawyers arguing these cases? To be honest, the prosecutor really put me off. Oh, you can absolutely see jurors shut down when they don't want to hear what an attorney has to say. You can see their face just be like you again. You can see when what the jury is hearing is like, wah, 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 wah. Sometimes there's, there's testimony from witnesses and the jury's just sitting there like this with like their head against the wall. Like, are we done yet? You can definitely tell. You can definitely tell. And yes, when jurors are put off by an attorney, they will sometimes just shut out what that lawyer is saying. And lawyers have to be mindful of that. The way you present in court matters because jurors are sitting there judging you for 10 days. And if your face starts to annoy them or your voice starts to annoy them, it's a problem. Can Alec, can Alec's defense use her closing to downplay his role? I think that's why she was so careful. The little man behind, behind Hannah gave a, a look of good point on disposal of the drugs. Well, the prosecutor did say, look, the purpose of tampering with evidence is so nobody knows what it is. It makes a fair point. Like Hannah's behavior is circumstantial with the tampering charge. I don't like the tampering charge, but Hannah, the evidence about the tampering charge is circumstantial. And the argument the prosecutor is making is, and didn't make, but why would you hand it off to somebody if you weren't worried about it? Why would you be texting them to get it back if you weren't worried about it? The behavior lends credibility to the circumstance that this was something she didn't want to toss, was important enough to her that she wanted to get it back, and that she didn't want to, it to be on her if police came and searched her room. Her competence did not match her confidence. Yeah, and that can be a deadly combination, as we saw in this case. I always find that the most effective lawyers are the ones who are not super confident, but are super competent. And there are plenty of lawyers like that who are like, I don't know if I'm doing a good job. It's like, you are one of the best lawyers I've ever seen. Stop doubting yourself. Question, does every lawyer desperately want to scream you can't handle the truth in court at least once? I mean, lawyers in the chat can answer, I can't speak for all lawyers, but I think I have wanted to say in court, um, lines from legally blonde more than um than you can't handle the truth though it is tempting it is tempting dominique said m i just wanted to thank you i had to give a victim impact statement yesterday dominique i'm sorry that must have been hard i hope you felt powerful and all i've learned from this channel and the law nerd community got me through it thank you so much good for you it is not easy to do um and I'm glad that you were able to do it. And I hope you felt more comfortable in court because of how much court we've watched. I really hope if covering live trials and me yelling at lawyers about their job helps humanize court. Lawyers aren't perfect. Jurors aren't perfect. Judges aren't perfect. This is There is a very human component to our court system. And if you are a human that has to engage with our court system, remember they are all also human. You are allowed to ask questions. You are allowed to stand your ground. We are all just humans trying to do a job. Owling, thank you for the super chat. Why didn't they argue that it could have been the powder from inside the live ammo? 
probably because the witness said it was white and it was very clearly not gunpowder, which would be darker. Um, Judy, you got this. Good to see you in the chat. Well done, Madam Prosecutor. It was, she was good at closing. The closing was good. She, I, I, I suspect this prosecutor, because she is a special prosecutor, probably is more of a defense attorney, um, because cross was good, closing was good. So we'll see. And when I take a break for lunch, which will be soon, I will absolutely be looking for that plea agreement somewhere. And we will be keeping an eye on verdict watch. Don't you worry. And if the defense close is going to harp on improper intubation as a possible cause of death, why didn't they bring up their own medical expert to say that? Chelsea, that's an excellent point. Not trial related, but what are some of your favorite books? We'll do that in a members only chat. In a members only, we'll go through the books. Though right now I am in the middle of a Sarah J. Mass series, not Akatar. I've done that. I yeah, we're we're now reading Throne of Glass. Uh, Carrie gives me James Spader sister vibes. Her face looks like him. We've seen that a lot in the chat. I flew last weekend and Delta made the same announcement, which was also new to me. Also, Alec threw a telephone at a hotel clerk once. I didn't know that. He definitely seems to handle his um, emotions big. I almost got ended by a safety person being incompetent and sloppy while I was working on a reactor. That's terrifying. Reminds me so much of this case. I have had uncomfortable moments in court where the bailiffs weren't doing their job. I'm I'm particularly sensitive to, like, if your job is to keep people safe, I need you to keep me safe. I need Ponder merchandise. I promise you we're working on it. Did you ever watch trials and wonder how you would approach it as a prosecutor? Yes, I do. It's hard because I don't have all the information. Like when I was prosecuting cases, I had all the information that was going to come in, all the information that wasn't going to come in. I knew how the um, witnesses were going to be sometimes, but it's easier it's easier to kind of hindsight it because then we've seen all the evidence that's come come in. But yes, definitely. Um, definitely, I think about it. To the people who can't hear court audio might be right or left only. I don't know about that. I'm actually surprised the defense didn't address Hannah's fear of losing her job had she set up to Baldwin. I was too. I absolutely was. I absolutely was. Um, this trial has been the easiest. In my opinion, this trial has been the easiest to decide of all the trials we've covered. A lot of bad lawyering from both sides, such a circus. Brooks, Brooks and Shabusiness were pretty easy to me. Truthfully, of the criminal cases we've tried. Oh, you've made all eight of Octo's tentacles happy, chat. So many new people in the app. You've you've made Octo, you've made Octo and happy, a happy octopus. Um, for sure. Kelsey Nicole, I can prosecute you if you want. Yeah, but you have to say it like the prosecutor. I, Emily, note to self. I mean, I can prosecute you if you want. Like, I'm going after Baldwin next week. I mean, we can circle back. T tentacles, I'm sorry. I'm not being a good representative of the octopus. My brain is very tired. My brain is very tired. I do need a little, like, here, hold on. We're going to do this. Um, verdict. Watch. Get the law nerd. I'm going to put an overlay. I'm going to make an overlay when we take a break. For now, we're doing this. StreamYard gives me too many options, and I just want to play with them, um, which is why I use StreamYard to stream, because it gives me too many options, and I just want to play with them. She would have been in a better position if they had rested after the state did. Almost everyone they brought for the defense pretty much screwed them. I think OSHA was. I think OSHA had to come in, especially since the prosecution really wanted to keep it out. I think OSHA had to come in. I think OSHA was good evidence for the defense. They probably should have stopped there. They probably should have stopped with OSHA. I'm on the fence in this. To me, it's razor thin, reasonable doubt. And, and there's a possibility this jury takes some time because I think there is room to argue, uh, uh, especially about the OSHA stuff. There's going to be some jurors in there going, who loaded the gun though? Who loaded the gun though? And that's what's hard about this case. Um, It doesn't matter what Seth provided to set ultimately at the end it was Hannah's responsibility to do all the safety checks yes why do Bowles and Morrissey's give me the energy of two people who broke up and are first to work forced to work together there there really is some like headbutting tension for sure the way I see it Hannah was irresponsible but the law is on her side fair enough um oh I didn't even pull that one up I just read it I'm sorry fair enough even if different guns what if they were live 
that's fair. It would have shown that she's more negligent, I guess. Close is make me more sus of the defense's take. Um, Ice Cream Sunday said, as with yesterday, this is just more proof that others should have been prosecuted alongside Hannah Gutierrez. Yes, it doesn't absolve Hannah Gutierrez. She still loaded the gun. Prosecute everybody. Jasmine said, I don't like um, the well she should have quit response. People have bills and families to so easily quit. Jasmine, I understand that. And I think jurors will be empathetic to that too. Was she in a position to walk off set? But the other expert said that that's literally the job. And that's hard. Tinsley, good to see you. He's doing pretty good so far. I liked some of Bowles' closing. There's stuff I wish he would have done. What clip has someone telling Hannah where to go? I don't know. I don't. Chat might know. I don't know what that's referring to. Teresa said it all comes down to live round was in the gun. In my humble opinion, without that, no death. Agreed. Uh, Kathleen, it doesn't fucking matter if she had checked the gun, which is her job. Uh, if she had checked the gun, which is her job, none of this would have happened. Yep. Um, I've always alleged Hannah Gutierrez wore an unwashed garment to set that day, something with pocket rounds, state solidified with five primerless pocket rounds. Um, and those rounds came out at the police station. It could ar be argued Baldwin didn't hear cut, though, for that one scene. It could be. I don't know if he has something in his ear or not. Defense is doing their job because I'm confused. And that is part of the job. Does he know Hannah is his client? Off topic, Emily Rick is up for an award about his stroke story. You can vote for him on the link on his YouTube page. Yes, and I will be putting it in the uh, I will be putting it in the description down below. He's incorrect in this. Uh, this is from Elliot JN. He's incorrect in this. Yarmer said. He'd had the same scenario and shut it down and checked everything. Yes, and didn't walk off set. Um, he is convincing me his client did not do her job. That's not what the defense attorney wants you to take away. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Um, EDB, no clip, which is the point. There's nothing about Hannah being told to leave. Oh, moon goddess, thank you. Yeah, there's nothing that showed Hannah was told to leave the church. Question, wasn't gun supposed to be checked again when handed off to AB for safety? Yes, it was. Dave Hall's or Hannah, somebody was. Could jury nullification come into play? I don't know if nullification per se. I think what we'll get from this jury, if anything, is they'll split it and be like, either, either they will downplay it and give her the misdemeanor negligent use of a firearm charge. Um, they will split it and give her the involuntary manslaughter and not the um, tampering charge, or they'll just all in or all out. So there's a couple ways this jury can go, but there's room for the jury to not convict her of everything and for those verdicts to make sense. Uh, Becky R said, former Tennessee nurse, uh, Redonda, of, I think it's Vaught, found guilty in woman's death after accidentally injecting her with wrong judge drug. Yes, she was, uh, because there were all the safety checks, I believe was the, the underlying cause of that. I did not follow that case closely. Sean said, oh my God, when my folks were in the Air Force, they knew a nurse who went to prison for involuntary because she gave the prescribed dose and didn't catch the doctor's error. His example defeats the argument. To anyone who's well-versed in medical, yes. To the jury, it just seemed, I don't know, we'll see. If there's medical personnel on the jury, it's not going to work. My client was so bad at her job that she had no idea what was going on and therefore not guilty. It really was. She couldn't have foreseen live rounds on set, y'all. Guns, live rounds are possible. That's like why you check them all. And she said it in her police interview. That's why you check them all. I just wish the prosecution had circled back around and used those interview words. Ah. Anna, thanks for your coverage and interpreting all this for us to understand. P.S. Did you get my email Friday night regarding the Rachel lawsuit? Um, I'm sure my team got lawsuit emails. I have been traveling. I am covering the Rachel Vanderpump Rules lawsuit in the podcast that'll be out tomorrow. Possible she can get an overturn because he's bad. I don't see IAC here, which is the question. If she's convicted, there will be an appeal. This record's an appellate disaster. This record's an appellate disaster. Half the time, there are objections and no rulings. This record will be kind of messy for an appeal. Illustrations are a wonderful thing when they make sense, not when the illustration is so painfully different from the situation at hand. Lori said you get what you pay for. I will only disagree in 
saying that when you have public defenders, you are generally not paying for them. And I have found that the most, most of the public defenders I have worked with, and this is true of DAs too, have been some of the best attorneys I have worked with. These are their courts. These are their juries. This is what they do day in and day out. This is their job. And it's not just their job. It is their passion. So I have found that a lot of public defenders choose defense because they are passionate about making sure, A, the government doesn't overstep, and B, people are represented zealously. So would Hannah have done better with a public defender? Maybe in this case. Someone who knows who knows this. Hannah's lawyer was privately retained and I think is doing it pro bono. That's what I've heard. I think a public defense, a public defender might have approached this case differently. So um, that's my only quip with criminal cases with you get what you pay for, because I think public defenders got unfairly maligned um, truthfully. This should be on the film industry for not ensuring qualified individuals are handling weapons. I think we will see that change. The safety officer should be watching the use and distribution. I agree with you. And he was prosecuted for a misdemeanor. You know I don't like it. You guys are like, Emily, keep reading. I'm, tr I'm trying. Angela said, Farm D here. If pharmacy mislabels a clear IV, med nurse would not know. You can visually hear and see the difference in rounds. Not the same. Very good point. Have we all forgotten that Kenny said he was short of ammo and it was a struggle to get enough for rust? No. Because he said all of his stuff was going to the other, uh, the other set of um, uh, Yellowstone eighteen eighty whatever. My brain has stopped. <laughs> Runkle, I mean, both you and Natalie Lawyer Chick um, up here on the YouTube's are public defenders who who do incredible work, and I think would have defended this case differently. That's the video I want Runkle to make. My client is Hannah Gutierrez. What I would have done differently. Um, do they always make burn books in closing? Oh my God, Ashley, this is the most accurate statement ever. The defense's PowerPoint was totally a burn book. It's like, oh my God, don't trust her. It totally was. Also, yes, I want Runkle to make that video. Sorry, Runkle, to give you work to do. I know you have other work to do, but, you know, the defense of Hannah Gutierrez Reed, what I would have done differently, lawyer reacts or whatever. I can see it. John said, I sit it guilty, but I feel other people should be in her spot too. Yep. Is it okay to render not guilty because I don't believe justice is being served by letting her take the fall? That would be jury nullification, John. And... It happens. The jury nullification would be like, I think she's guilty, but like, fuck everybody. It's not fair to just convict her. Like, I think there's enough evidence to convict her, but like, fuck this shit. I think they will split the verdicts before they would do that. And I think they would also um, come back on the lesser included misdemeanor before they would do that. But we'll see. Owling Dog Design said, I am a nurse. I am responsible for pharmacy errors and physician errors. If I give the wrong medication, the buck stops with me. Uh, as a DA, I was responsible for law enforcement errors. If they didn't turn over evidence that I didn't know about, the buck stopped with me. I wish I had found you long ago when I was deposed. Vintage Willow, we are all here now. Thank you so much, Cumulus Cloud. Um, Anne said, yesterday I announced to my friends and family that I have entered hospice. Anne, I'm sorry to hear it. Thanks, CDB and Lawnards, for the support. Anne, we, we want you to be in our chat forevermore. I, I am thankful that you shared that with us. I am sorry that that is where the journey is at. And please, please know that there are lots here um, to love and to chat and to support you because we are here. There was a pawnered mug at some point, Gen V, and I will get there again. Do you think Hannah will testify against Baldwin? Loretta, I'm going to wait for the verdict before I tell you what I think. Um... Rickle said, I was busy for a brief moment. I missed the defense's whole case, po possibly. Lonards, I love seeing all the love in the chat. Thank you. And I hope you're seeing all the love in the chat uh, as well. Michael's like, why did the defense pick on me? Nurses are the band-aids of the world. 2.5 years, wow. We love you, EDB. Love you too. Catching Kane Brown and Pink from South Carolina yesterday. 
Um, Cumulus Cloud said the fact that Carrie was ranting about three free hours shows she never cleaned multiple guns at once. There wasn't enough time. Um, Samantha said, why didn't the protection production use her removal of ammunition and gun belts when they accused Hannah of tampering with evidence? I don't know. I don't know. Dark side EDB, do you use an Elgato stream deck? Yes, I use the small one mostly for controlling my lights. Everything else I do by hand uh, because it's easier for me in StreamYard to change like the screen layouts by hand. But you can connect those StreamYard screen layouts to an Elgato as well. I mean, it does everything. But yes, I have the little the little stream deck. <clears throat> do we think Baldwin is watching EDP? No, not at all. Um. I ran a care home for developed disabled uh, clients. I recently caught a mistake by the pharmacy made with one of the medications, right label, wrong pills. And that that can happen. My kid caught it with his ADHD meds. Don't get me started on ADHD med shortages. But with my, uh, with my kid's ADHD meds, he caught it before I did because we opened it. He's like, these are usually white. Why are they yellow? And I was like, why are they yellow? And we called up the pharmacy and they had switched manufacturers. And it was not it was not great for us so we switched things but he caught it he was like why is this not the way it should be uh the law nerd stove said the trial i was clerking this week each closing submission took a day each law nerd so that must have been a long trial if they're taking a day for closing question who is the burly guy in the gallery trying to distract the jury by picking his nose i have no idea no idea no idea um, have you ever been in a courtroom where after every objection you had to approach the bench because the lawyers were acting like children? No, no, but they used to, at the beginning, the lawyers were allowed to make objections and then the lawyers snarked at each other on day four or five and got into a fucking pissing match in front of the jury. And then the judge was like, I let you have coffee and now you're fucking around like children. So now you must approach. You're not allowed to speak. And that's why Kyla said, I can't say I learned in this trial since I was taught this by the yin yang twins, but I was reminded to shake it like a salt shaker. Well, there we go. The yin yang twins. Perfect. Ashley said, question. Do you think the jury will put weight to the laughing prosecutor comment when they watched um, Bull's joke in an interview after Helena had died? This is also a fantastic question, Ashley. Because they did see Bull sitting there on his phone while his clients making all these admissions. I don't know. And I don't know if he was talking about the prosecutor or the lead detective or both. Um, but they're, when you start pointing the fingers like that in court after your freaking weapons expert pointed the barrel of the gun at the judge when they were manipulating it, it's not going to go well. Um, Felicity said prosecution is wrong. This is an alternate reality where expert witness totes guns like Yosemite Sam or Elmer Fudd. Uh, like Queen said, if Hannah had done her job, there wouldn't be any live ammo on set. She would have found them at some point and pulled them out. Um, Princess Claudia, thank you for your for that. Um, Tommy said Brandon Lee died from a projectile getting stuck in the barrel and the blank was fired with the powder of the primer causing the projectile to eject and kill him. Guns have to be thoroughly checked, even if blanks are used. Tommy, and she seemed very cognizant of that when she talked about how often she checked the barrel. Here's what's terrifying to me, chat. Let me know what you think. Was Hannah looking down the barrel of this weapon while it was loaded with what she thought were dummy rounds while there was a live round in this weapon? Like, I think Hannah put her own safety at issue in this case more than once because she was saying, they were saying she was checking the barrel without unloading the gun. I mean, that's fucking terrifying all the way around with what we know about this case now. So, uh, let's see if she is found guilty. What is the possible sentence? It depends if she's found guilty of both charges, but up to 18 months on the invol. Um, Wedge, good to see you. As I've stated earlier, you would think that after the Brandon Lee incident, movie productions would have learned a thing or two about gun safety. It seems that the takeaway from Hannah was check the barrel more. What is the name brand of your earbuds? The, the in-ears I wear in court are Shures. They are on my Amazon store. That's linked below. I'm not sure exactly what model, but they are linked. I am going to get custom molds though, but they are 
They are the Shore in-ears. Um, I think that was a suggestion from Nick Ricada. I think that's that's who suggested these to me. They're great. So uh, I can't stream in over-ear headphones. It squishes. It squishes my glasses. <laughs> and when I do television appearances, you can't see them. So they're perfect for me. And they don't run on battery, so they don't run out. But with long streaming days, they do get a little uncomfortable. So I'm going to go get custom molds made because I live in Nashville, and that's a real easy thing to do around here. Um, I agree. Carol's with the kid actors. Parents must feel ill after this. Agreed. Um, so, yeah, that's what I use. I need to go get custom molds. Anyone else here? Scotty doesn't know every time. Yes. Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. Don't tell Scotty. If you don't know what I'm referencing, oh, I need I need you to just Google it. Madeline said, I am thinking, um, did she know exactly what how to do her job? She thought she was. Well, here's the thing. She she said in her text to Thel, her father, and to Seth Kinney, you guys didn't tell me this. You guys blow. Like, I, I think there might be some truth in that. The problem is she is ultimately responsible. It's just like if I go to court and my supervisor, this, this was happening at the LADA's office not that long ago. Um, but if you're the DA in court and your supervisor tells you to do something that contravenes the law, your license is the one on the hook, not your supervisor. It's your job to tell your supervisor, no, go do it yourself. And I know plenty of DAs who have looked at their supervisor and said, if you want that to happen, you go to court and do it. And go ahead and try to fire me. Go ahead, I'll sue you for retaliation. Mount up. Because at the end of the day, when you walk into court, it is your license. And there are DAs that are 24, 25, 26 years old. You have to know when to put your foot down. It's not easy. I put my foot down at the DA's office um, with my health when I was pregnant and had a supervisor tell me, you know, if you do this, you're never going to get promoted, right? It's like, ma'am, I would like to not die during this pregnancy. So, um, yeah, I'm well, I'm well aware. I'm well aware. Uh, but you have to put your foot down when you have to. And sometimes industries suck and they're hard. That's not unique to the movie industry. That is, that is a lot of industry. Emily, could you be a special prosecutor? No. Not anymore. You can't pay me to be at court at 8.30 in the morning. I want to curse about trial on the internet. There is not enough money in the world to not do this. It's way more stressful. Question, did she say you guys blow in reference to? I missed that detail along the way. Um, I'm trying to remember what witnesses came in with. I'm not remembering exactly what. This came in with, no, I do remember. This came in with Seth Kinney. Seth and Hannah were texting about her asking for reimbursement for the things she brought on to set. And she was saying in a group text with Seth and her dad, you guys didn't even tell me that. And Seth Kinney made the wild and kind of appalling, like, uh, you're a naughty child, I'll let daddy handle this one. I think in a group text referring to Thel, but ew, it gave me the ick. And she said, whatever you guys blow. Like she was trying to say, you guys haven't told me this. I need to know these things. And then they made fun of her and she said, you guys blow. And I agree, they do blow. Uh, or at least it seems that they do. Uh, what color do you use on your lips? It depends on the day, but we have Lawnard lip glosses that I think are in my bag from traveling still. So today I have been wearing Lawless Velvet. Um, most days I wear Facts and Objection from the collab. It's linked uh, in the in the description. Matt B said, I have to say the defense buried Hannah. Um, she had a job she failed at it when her counsel says she couldn't have foreseen live ammo on set, literally her job. Agree. A snake named Michi said, I have a bad migraine right now. Good distraction. Thank you for covering. I hope my yelling is not hard on your migraine and you are getting to sit in the dark. Um, I enjoy your case coverage. Couldn't watch a trial without it. Will you scream at Alex's trial? Yes. I will be here court casting Alec Baldwin's trial. 
Um, Dad gave me these bullets, so I didn't check them, possibly. The gun being passed to Dave is why I couldn't say guilty on a felony. He was the one in between and should have checked. I could do guilty on the misdemeanor. Southern heathen, it's a very fair point, and the jury, the jury might be there too. Is there a place to make suggestions to improve the Law Nerd app, like maybe a PDF gallery of what documents you can find from public filings for the trials that you are covering for easy access? Um, generally help at, we will ask the members in the member spaces for recommendations when we're ready to expand the app. Um, we want to just make sure it doesn't crash, which, you know, the Law Nerds can, can crash a website like nobody else, but it's where you need to go to stay in touch with trial coverage. But yes, we will be expanding the app down the road. The plea deals given in this, I think, are injustice. I didn't like it either. I think they were focused on, I think they're focused on Baldwin though. Are there any cases online where we can watch you in action as a prosecutor? No. No, blessedly, I was not in any cases that were streamed or recorded. It would be very, very stressful. And I can't and often don't give enough credit to the lawyers about how stressful that is. Um, so Shannon said, just started working for my local DA as an advocate. Love the bits of knowledge I have from this stream. They have come in handy. Shannon, I love that. You do very important work. Thank you for the important work you do. The DA advocates in the uh, Waukesha case, the Daryl Brooks case, every single victim almost that gave an impact statement thanked the advocates at the DA's office. It was really incredibly touching to see. That was a huge case with so many victims because of that parade route. And if you want to watch the victim impact statements, A, they're heartbreaking, but you will see what an impact victim advocate work in the DA's office has because all of those victims thanked the person that they were liaising with because it's not, the lawyers don't always have the capacity to do that. And they thanked the dog. They did. Pepper, Pepper the dog was fantastic. I think all DA's offices need a dog for sure. I'll say it again, walking gets you on the witness stand, staying gets you in the seat at the defense table. Fair point. Scott Family Adventures, Scott Family sent you a box of self-care, but ADHD with the card on the counter. We hope you enjoy. Scott Family, thank you. I will find it when I get to the PO box. I appreciate it. What happened to Mr. Reed? I don't know. He was probably in court for closing. It feels like the prosecution handled this case with the same care as the Russ crew handled their jobs on set. It was interesting. Um, three years, I'm showing more commitment to EDB than to my ex. I mean, hopefully we get along better, Marty. Jamie said, I disliked the prosecutor so much during trial, but then liked her much better during the close. I felt like she truly believes in what she's doing. I think she absolutely believes uh, that Hannah is, is responsible here. If Hannah is found guilty, does that hurt her for all those other lawsuits? I think she's hurt in the other lawsuits either way. Um, but the civil liability will be apportioned. The criminal liability won't. And when you look at apportioning civil liability, it's like, is, is production more at fault? And if any of those go to jury trial, which they probably won't, production could be assigned more at fault. Imagine you're the civil jury and you get to decide what percentage people are at fault. You can hold Hannah at fault and Baldwin at fault and production at fault and Dave Hall's at fault. You can hold them all at fault and give different apportions to it that might feel more comfortable for a lot of you, but here you don't get to do it. First live trial is a member following since Depp v. Heard. Welcome. And all the members who love being members because you don't get timed out by slow mode. It's helpful when there's 20,000 of us here. I loved and am fascinated by law. Thank you for sharing all the things I need to know. You're welcome. I'm happy to do it. If Hannah Gutierrez blames dad for the live bullet, can't they'll read be charged? I mean, she didn't in any of those of those interviews, but at the end of the day, Ray, and I hate saying at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, she saw to check it. Even if somebody sabotaged the set, I'm not saying this happened. We get, no, two, two speculation jingles. Even if somebody sabotaged the set, even if somebody mixed, you know, peanut butter all in her chocolate, even if that happened, it is still her job to check it. And she should have shaken them to find out 
that they weren't real. So even if somebody else dropped live rounds on set, she still should have caught it if she had done her job properly. I thought she'd play the interview admitting several things. I thought so too, Kay Next, I was kind of disappointed, truly, that we didn't get to. It might have been a tech decision. Like fucking around with the tech would have been too time consuming. So they used the transcript. I just wish she would have used that part of the transcript. Does the jury know the time attached to sentence? No, they don't, BT. I think it's years and not just 18 months. It could sway them. They are instructed multiple times in the jury instructions to not consider the sentencing and consider guilt or innocent. Is the answer no on verdicts? Is that a not guilty? Uh, yes, generally it would be. If they're looking at if they're looking at the elements and they go yes on this element, yes on that element, no on this element, then you would get to NG because it's no. Thanks all. It's been a wild ride. It has been. Will you watch the James Crumbly trial? No, um, not covering it. As a juror, I want Hannah Gutierrez, <clears throat> excuse me, to go free because I'm angry at the prosecutor. She reminds me of my father. That would be a hard thing for jurors if they are triggered by the prosecutor. It's giving, don't fuck it up, jurors. Yeah, it felt like she was yelling at them. Her tone betrays she feels the jury might have quit. I also had her at 1.25, so it's kind of hard to read into tone when I've sped her up. Lanny says, how many of us have been set up for failure by our bosses? Defense should have leaned into that. I agree with you. Defense should have absolutely leaned into that. And I think they could have more. Uh, Sean C. Kate said, being young, what are the chances that those above her like Alec Baldwin refused to listen to her when she tried to say something about unsafe issues? 100%. And that's what OSHA came in and said. But then the prosecution brought in the people she would have complained to about safety issues, and all of them said she didn't. So that's tough. SJR said Hannah's guilt is shared. Had Baldwin followed the golden rule and not pointed his weapon at a human being, we would not be here. Agreed. And that's what he's going to be tried for, the negligent use of a firearm. Um, the Big Kapowski said, same, second longest relationship is with the law nerds. It's a, it's a good place to be. We got you. Brandy said, I'm 47 minutes behind in trying to catch up in case the verdict comes in so I can watch live. You'll get there. You'll get there. They're going to eat lunch. I'm going to take a break to eat lunch in just a minute. Um, do you think the the judge is partial to the prosecution? There's been moments where it seemed that way, but I can't hear the sidebars, so I don't know what the defense is arguing. There's definitely times she shut down the prosecutor. Can Hannah get court-appointed lawyers for her appeal? Yes, she can and should or should get appellate counsel appointed if she's convicted. Um, not gonna lie, she's eating right now. That was about the, I saw that come in. That was about the uh, the prosecution's um, closing. Chat, it's hard for me to say goodbye to 20,000 of you without asking if you've subscribed and done the youtube -y things um, and downloaded the app. I don't, Hoag is in the chat. It's to the jury. I was just about to wrap. And then I see my friends. I'm just about to wrap, Hogue. And if you don't have the Lawnard app, get the Lawnard app so I can let you know when the verdict comes in. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We will be on Verdict Watch. I am going to go eat lunch. If it looks like we're getting rumblings about a verdict, I will be back to stream. You continue to make this the number one place to watch trial coverage. Um, I am not just going to keep the, the stream open and roll the court feed because this makes replay crew much easier. Love you. But I will be back for a verdict when we have one. I also have some things to record for the podcast for tomorrow. So the team's got some work to do. I've got some work to do. I want to make sure you have a podcast for tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Miguelina. I will. I'll do a summary. I forgot to do a summary. Perfect. Um, I'm going to take a break. It's been like five hours. I definitely have to pee. Let's do a summary of today, law nerds. And then, uh, and then let's, uh, I'm going to roll the verdict watch bumper again for fun, Miguelina, so we can put it in our summary. Law nerds of the jury, we are on verdict watch on day 10 of the state versus Hannah Gutierrez. The defense called a director witness for their first and last witness of today. They did not call Hannah's father, Thel Reed, and the witness did not add a ton, but
but on cross-examination seemed to undo what OSHA testified to because on cross-examination, the director admitted that at the end of the day, it's the armorer's responsibility. The armorer is the boss when it comes to the guns on set, not production, not the director, not the first AD. The armorer is responsible for the weapons on set. And then we got into closing arguments. The state brought quite a lot of exhibits into closing arguments, photos of where the silver primers were. And the state really leaned into the fact that the dummy rounds that came from Seth Kinney arrived on set with Sarah Zachary October 12th. And those dummy rounds did have silver primers in them, but they were antiqued. They were patinaed. They were darker. They were not shiny brass. And the bullets or the rounds that we see with shiny brass and silver primer primers in Jensen Eccles' gun belt, in Alec Baldwin's bandolier, and ultimately in Alec Baldwin's gun that shot and killed Helena were not brought onto set by Seth Kinney. And she said they were in the same box that Hannah brought onto set, arguing again that Hannah is the one who brought the live rounds on set. And the prosecution showed the um, enhanced photo of that styrofoam insert with all the rounds in it on her lap from October 10th, two days before Seth Kinney's dummies are on set showing the silver primed round that is not patinaed and tying that all together to show that the prosecution believes that Hannah brought the live rounds onto set and failed to do her job by finding them in all of her safety checks and ended up loading them into the weapon that killed Helena Hutchins. In their closing argument, the defense argued production, production, Baldwin, Sarah Zachary, Seth Kinney, Dave Halls. They didn't do their job. But where I thought the defense stepped in it in closing is they played that video of Alec Baldwin shooting like, you know, this on camera. And then Joel Souza yells, cut, Baldwin fires another blank. And Joel Souza goes, motherfucker. And then the defense used that video to argue that it was not foreseeable to Hannah that Baldwin would go off script and point the gun at the church at Helena Hutchins. I think it proves the exact opposite point that Baldwin pointing a weapon somewhere was foreseeable, that live rounds showing up on set were foreseeable, and it was Hannah's job to check them. However, the jury instructions on involuntary manslaughter are multi-stepped and complex. It's going to take the jury time to walk through them. We also learned in jury instruction that there is a lesser included charge. They are allowing the jury to decide between the involuntary manslaughter and the misdemeanor negligent handling of a firearm. So if the jury feels empathetic for Hannah, even though they're not supposed to let empathy sway their opinion, but they are human, if they feel that production didn't allow her to do her job well, they could use that lesser included crime. And then we saw the prosecution and defense arguing over the tampering with evidence charge. The prosecution never really argued how the tampering with evidence was evidence of the involuntary manslaughter. The defense brought it up in closing. The prosecution didn't even touch it or try to explain it in their rebuttal and seemed to let it go. I think in this case, Though the defense is arguing Hannah Gutierrez Reed is the sacrificial lamb of production, I think the sacrificial lamb of this charging document is the tampering with evidence charge. And that the prosecutor's like, yeah, if you guys want to throw her a bone, just give her that one. Don't convict her on that one. What the prosecution wants is that involuntary manslaughter charge. And we will see if they get it. The jury is out. And we will be back when the jury is back. Make sure you have the Lawnard app because it could be hours, it could be days. All right, law nerds, let's finish it up. Jury, we want to hold off to get pizza. Oh, the jury definitely ordered lunch on the court's time. They've been sitting there for 10 days. They want to chat. I just don't know how long the court will run through um, to allow the jury to come back. I don't know if they'll work late into the day. But if they do, the law nerd app will keep you in the loop. And with that, I'm going to rest my voice. I'm going to get some food. We're going to get some work done on Team Baker. And we will be back whenever we have a jury. 
in the app. When the jury goes home for the day, I will let you know so you're not on high alert. I will let you know when the jury goes home for the day if they don't come back with a verdict today. Law nerds, thank you for being here. Get the app. Do I sound like a broken record? Get the app, get the app, get the app. Because you don't want to miss the verdict in this case. I'll see you soon. You can stay up to date with everything I'm covering and fast notifications on our free iOS and Android app at lawnerdapp.com or search the app store for Lawnerd. You can also follow me around social media. And don't forget to check out my podcast, The Emily Show, with quick bits dropping every Monday, summarizing everything I do here on the live streams on Tuesday and Thursday for when you just have time for the quick bits. Thanks for being a Lawnerd. Nerd.